a gente costuma cuidar dessa parte tática aí do time. Dentro do time também a gente tem um suporte que é o Nade, e pra mim é um dos melhores atualmente no cenário. Tanto em skill individual, quanto em ser um cara que ajuda no clima do time e tudo mais. Pô, o Casey, que ano passado foi o melhor jogador de R6 do Brasil. Uma skill bruta absurda, é, pra mim o melhor jogador do mundo há tempos. E o 9-2, cara, que é tipo a peça que tem que ter em qualquer time, que é o cara brincalhão, o cara que deixa o time num clima suave. Bota teu cabelo, sua criança! E pra mim também o melhor sup 2 que tem no mundo atualmente. É, ele faz o, a função dele ali como ninguém faz no mundo. Rapaziada, a gente já ganhou dois mesmo, acabamos de ganhar um aqui em Atlanta. Mas a gente quer a marreta, a gente vai em busca dela. Porque não tá bom, a gente quer mais. A gente é um time que trabalha muito e eu acho que isso é posto em prática nos campeonatos e tem dado resultado. E bom, é isso. A WC, isso é a WCTM. Jaime Pereira Ramos Jr., mais conhecido como Cyber dentro do jogo Rainbow Six. Jogo pela FaZe Clan. O Major Suécia, eu quebrei meu, quebrei o recorde né, de kills que teve em campeonato de Major. No próximo campeonato que a gente jogou, que foi o Major Berlin, a gente, eu quebrei de novamente meu recorde, mas não fui campeão. O estilo de jogo é muito agressivo, então eu sou um jogador que Pensa em muitas possibilidades ao momento. Tem o Vita King, né, que é o nosso IGL. Ele é um jogador que é, direciona a gente onde ele precisa. Forest, you cannot... Essa parte assim ele faz muito bem, então acho que ele meio que nasceu para essa parte de fazer essa parte de IGL assim. Tem um Souls, né, que tá há muito tempo comigo, é um jogador que é muito calmo. Ele consegue pensar muito sobre o jogo também, ele consegue trazer muitos rounds importantes pra gente, que a gente tá perdendo. Ele é um jogador muito habilidoso nessa parte. O KDS é uma pessoa que fica, fica parado, não faz muita coisa assim fora do, do comum. KDS is looking for him and the opening kill is for FaZe. Acho que essa parte sim é uma parte mais forte dele, assim, de ser um jogador também que pensa bastante dentro do jogo e sabe a hora de executar alguma coisa. O Range é um jogador que é muito bom também, ele tem uma parte de skill muito boa também, acho que todo jogador acho que é muito bom em questão de skill. Handy from above is able to deny, and that means there is no chance to clutch this. Ele consegue fazer bastante round que a gente tá perdendo ali de uma forma é, drástica. Acho que o Civitation, todos os jogadores querem ganhar, né? Acho que cada um quer se provar ali dentro do, do campeonato. E eu acho que todos os jogadores pensam assim que é o maior campeonato assim, para si, né? Que é, é, o, é o troféu mais antigo que tem no jogo, então acho que é o que todo mundo quer ganhar. O time, esse é o time que eu não, que eu tenho que é mais unido dentro de jogo e fora. É um time muito agressivo quando precisa. Sabe que o nosso estilo de jogo é totalmente diferente do que eles jogam com. Então acho que a galera assim, tem um pouco de medo de jogar contra a gente nessa parte.
Let's go. Can't wait, I need right now. Right now. Just watch how I move. Just watch how I move. Move. Hated it, love it. I came in, I pack up the room. I pack up the room. I spend all my time in the lab. Right like I'm getting big time in a half. Right now. We finally made it. I know that they hate it. We carry this right out of the bag. Right now. The timing is right now. Right now. Right now. Just watch how I move. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Just watch how I move. Can't wait, I need right now. Just watch how I move. Just watch how I move. Hate it, I love it. I came in, I pack up the room. Keep your eyes on the clock. You might miss on your chances to rise if you blink out a vision your way to the top. The chamber alert, attracting the things you deserve. Just know I do this on the regular. The hustle keep calling me up on my cellular. 5 a.m. stuck, hot and arrested. I'm sleeping, that's why I'm still all the way up. I cannot be top, block, head on the clock. Marathon running and making no stops. I came from nothing, my days on a block. This just is why I just gotta do it. Right now, right now, just watch how I move. Right now, right now, right now, just watch how I move. Can't wait, I need right now. Just watch how I move. Thanks to each and every one of you who supports, follows, and cheers us on. みんなの応援がとても力になっていて、レインボーシックスシージコミュニティにとても感謝しています。La connexion que nous partageons va au-delà du jeu. Peu importe d'où vous venez, que vous nous soutenez depuis des jours ou des années. การสนับสนุนยังไม่หยุดหย่อนของคุณกระตุ้นให้เราทำดีที่สุดในทุกนัด ومع أن نشكل عائلة في رينبو سيكس سيجي متناغمة بتصبح ذكرى في قلوبنا. приглашаем всех на Six Invitational 2024. И не забудьте посмотреть это прекрасное и невероятное событие вместе с нами. Хангсан Рейнбу Сикс Сижеру, он не дешевый Хангсан Нира. Яровундере, он не Рейнбу Сикс Сижеру, сеге чегое кемуру мандрис Сикс Нира. Жунтус, сомза мелер комунидаж до мунду. Мунто обригадо, галена. Thank you for the support. Шокран адямаком. Ариято узаймас. Thank you. Спасибо огромное. Мунто обригадо комунидаж. Merci beaucoup. I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve. But my run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression is all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. 'Cause I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve. But my run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression is all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Why you be all in my line about? Nothing. Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Don't hang with a who lying for nothing. I see that we different. You riding, I double. I don't do discussions. I'm bragging about hundreds. Don't go to your places. I know that they sunken. Don't call me your brother. I barely can trust you. I talk to a shorty. She bagging the bugging. And I'ma need all of my dollars on corporate. So hand me the money. I divvy the pie. I'ma give all of my people a portion to build them a fortune. I'm flipping the ride. I can't be mixy when iffy the vibe. And 40 on 50 is really the time. Why is you all on my phone like you want me? Like you wasn't pushing the kids to the side. I'ma run through the money. The pressure be calling. Left on my Blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Gino, hello. Hey, what the size of kids? Gino, boy, what up, boy? Dilamei, dilamei, dilamei. Zito, pensa. Oh, oh, oh! 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 Ben ça mata. Ha 
segunda opção. É. No, I'm gonna okay. fucking miss. I already know. Fabian. Bingo. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, that was close. That was actually good. Holy shit. The little boy from Glasgow. <laughs> Time. Holy shit. Six. Six. No, man. I just got a dumb question. Me, yeah. With the converse. Yeah. The crooks. Canadian. Right, right, right. I don't know, right, man. Right.
We are here in Sao Paulo, Brazil at the Six Invitational 2024 Boatashi Brazil! Alô, ginásio do Ibirapuera! Estamos chegando com a grande final do Six Invitational! Que gratidão imensa tê-los aqui conosco! Eu estou com Ian Chambers, meu companheiro da transmissão internacional, que vai estar conosco aqui. Can I teach you something? I love learning Portuguese. Teach me. Yeah, we're all together, right? Because it's Brazil against Brazil. It's all gonna teach how to say, Tamo junto, mano! Tamo junto, mano! <laughs> we are all together, and that is because the grand final of this Invitational is later on this evening. Brazil versus Brazil. Blood versus blood, brother versus brother. Who will raise the hammer when it is all said and done? Will it be W. Sechi Emmy? Ou será Faze Now, what's really cool is, no matter what, we are making history here at the Ginásio do Ibirapuela in Sao Paulo because for the first time ever in eSports, a Brazilian team will raise a world championship on home soil. E é verdade, pela primeira vez um time brasileiro vai levantar a marreta e vai ser campeão mundial em casa. Aliás, que delícia! A última vez que a gente teve essa oportunidade de disputar um campeonato mundial em casa, tomamos 7 a 1 da Alemanha. I'm just saying, last time we played home in the World Cup 2014, Germany beat us for 7-1. Let's not talk about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Today's a party day, it's a happy day for us. Yes, and we are starting with the most beautiful moment, possibly, of my career. Now, Siege has been around for a long time now. And there has been a man who has been part of it from the very beginning. It is time to reveal our MVP for 2024. This commendation is so special. It wouldn't be Siege without him. It's Milos. I had my first ever event not far away from where we stand here. I saw the devs, I saw the players, I saw my fellow casters. Everybody was having fun in a way that I really wanted to be a part of it. And I met the woman that later became my wife, thanks to Rainbow Six. And I say this game changed my life. It really did in more ways than you can believe. My name is Hassan Finch, better known as Milos. I'm a host, commentator, analyst, caster. In general, I'm just a huge fan of esports and a lover of Rainbow Six. I come from Lebanon. When I was born, computers were still a rarity, but my uncle had his own computer. I was hooked from the first moment, and like, I can't even imagine what my life would have been like without video games, really. We played strategy games, Warcraft, Age of Empires. I really enjoyed it, but I really also enjoyed talking about it. I had watched, at that point, the earliest days of a YouTuber by the name of Dasker who was playing these massive games of Battlefield 3 and he would commentate over it and stream it and do these videos and I thought, I want to do more of that. Video comes out, hey, we actually need commentators for a tournament. All you need is a headset, come on in and we'll find a way. And at the end of it, the person that's in charge of this broadcast project says to me like, hey, there's something there. And I'll never forget it, because that day it made me think, damn, I can, I can actually do this. Later on, 2016, I go to Paris Games Week, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege comes out around that time. 
The game, when it's played by professionals, looks absolutely sick. I'm just standing there and watching the, the action. I go back home and I'm thinking, damn, I need to find a way to cast this. This is really sick. I asked Vitalia and Berigini, the Brazilian casters, do you think there's a way for me to come in here and cast? Like, absolutely, we need people to cast our region. I start casting the game. I have no clue what's going on because it's different when you're actually observing it, but you very quickly learn. And that's where it started. In early January, I get the call from ESL asking, hey, Six Invitational is coming up in February. Uh, we need someone to cast the B stream. I couldn't believe it. I was being paid to come in and talk about a game that I love most and about the best players in the world. Pengu at the end of the event comes up to me and says, hey, welcome to the family. And he takes off his jersey that he got the entire team to sign Penta and gave it to me. That was a moment I never even imagined. There was no doubt for anybody since the very early days that Milos was gonna be around for a very long time. He's a hard worker who's super passionate and when you do something for free because you love doing it and you're good at doing it as well, you only have one way to go and that's really upwards. During the Gamescom finals in 2017, I was asked, would you like to join the talent team in Katowice? We got it done and I was here in January 2018 with Kixen and Taro and Emzo. Finally, we're kicking off a full pro league season together you know, we, we got to grow together for almost half a decade. It was just the four of us. That was it, we were the Poland crew. We basically became a family. We lived far away from home. This was our new home. We had to look out for one another anyways, and we got through it. Because the main thing for us was, how can we make the show better? Through 2018, we saw that this game was just, it was taking off. With every event, it kept growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Then we get to SI 2020, which to me is the apogee. This is the zeitgeist of Rainbow Six, at least my career within Rainbow Six, because I still feel those flashing lights. After that SI, we're so excited, we're so happy, everything's going well. And then, well, COVID happened. Out of it, I felt like I emerged from some sort of cocoon. And when things started really looking up that we're getting out of it and we're planning events, I didn't believe it, I still can't in so many ways. But Kix was, was no longer here. Just being here in the city, it's like something's, something's missing. We finally have the shot after almost two years of no live events of going to a venue. And we get to Montreal and it's full of thousands of sea churns. To be that conduit in the middle of that arena, if I may be egotistical for a moment, fucking cool moment. It felt like we were really back. Six Invitational in Brazil. If you told me about this six years prior, we would have an SI in Brazil, I tell you, that's insane. And to be there again in the middle of it all, to tell you, you here in the arena, and all those watching at home, they've given me a life I could have never imagined. His voice, face, just his entire personality is synonymous with so much Siege history. He is the face of our talent scene, he's the host of all the big events, he's the voice to all the intros. If you hear a Siege event and you hear his voice, you know it's a real event worth tuning into. Milos really is like one of the OGs of the whole scene. Been watching him forever. Rainbow Six feels like home when Milos is around. You are always fighting to find a home. My home is in front of the camera, in the middle of an arena, talking about the thing I love the most. Yo!
for 2024 MVP Comedy Milos! Façam barulho! Milos, o MVP 2024. Esse cara ajudou a construir a nossa comunidade. That's yours. Congratulations. Well deserved. Milos, you have been a part of the tapestry that is Siege. You have been a part of the fabric from the very beginning. Try and put into words what this moment means to you. It's a culmination of 12 years of career, eight years in Rainbow Six. I built my career casting Brazil, way before Brazil was even allowed to play competitively. And Brazil is my home in Siege, and I'm so happy that I get to be at S High in Sao Paulo to say thank you to all of you. Ele disse que tem 12 anos de carreira, oito construídas dentro do Rainbow Six e começou narrando aqui no Brasil. Então ele se sente parte do Brasil antes mesmo de vir para cá. Thank you, man. Gave me goosebumps. Milos, you've been a part of so many huge moments in Siege. You've made so many amazing friends and colleagues along the way. If you could pick the best moment of your career so far, what would it be? I think it's jumping around from one country to the next with Kixen and Taro. I love all of my colleagues, but as you saw even in the video, we built a family together when we were all away from home. And Parker is my brother, the brother I never thought I was missing all the way in Canada. I have my own, of course, Ahmed, I love him to death. But Kix and Entero are two brothers that will never leave my side. And Emzo was there through the entire time. Spending time with them is my favorite thing in this whole world. And I wish I could get it back for a moment with Kix, but he's always in my heart. Bom, ele disse que é, o momento mais especial da vida dele foi pular de país em país com os irmãos dele, o Entero e o Kickstar. Ele gostaria muito que o Kix estivesse aqui com ele hoje, mas o Kix está dentro da alma dele e segue junto com ele. Milos, you are literally the man on the mic when it comes to Siege. I don't even know why I'm interviewing re you right now. I'm going to give you the microphone and you can say whatever you want to say to your adoring fans at home and here in Brazil. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Brazil. You know, I'm used to talking about others. Our job on that stage is to talk about the best players in the world. It's not about us and it never should be. So excuse me if I'm a bit awkward talking about myself for a moment here, I'm not really used to it. I am incredibly privileged to have had a family that cared for me and loved me from day one and have had the resources, an incredible privilege in this world to go and study abroad in Europe and build myself and become the man I stand in front of you today. I have made countless friends in esports and all over the world. And I've learned so much about so many cultures and so many peoples that I will never forget. And I'm so grateful to the point where without Rainbow Six, I would not have met my best friend, my wife, Paula. I love you so very much. Thank you, Rainbow Six, for introducing me to her. You've changed my life forever. And today we're here in Brazil at SI24, but 10 years ago, slightly more even, my grandfather sat down with me. I was finally visiting family after a long time away. And I was young, I complained, hey granddad, it's really not nice not having a computer. I'm so used to it. My laptop doesn't really help me out. He just turns to me and says, of course. He gives me money from his own blood, sweat and tears and tells me, go build what you want. And it's thanks to my granddad that I could play and have that computer and be here with you today at Six Invitational. And I'm very proud of that. Four years ago, two days before SI 2020, the height, I guess, of everything in the pre-era, my granddad died. He passed away two days before SI. And I had no time to go and say goodbye. 
But I knew one thing, that even though he had no idea what I do, he saw that it made me happy and he believed in me. And I wanted to go to that SI in Montreal and make him proud. Habibi, Juddu. Allah irhamak. I hope, I hope we get to see you on another one day. Thank you to the Deaf team that made this incredible game. Thank you to the people that chose me, to you, the community, and everybody at Ubisoft in Montreal and all around the world that chose me to represent this. I, I can't believe it. I hope that I can do you proud at every show and every time you see me on camera. I love you very much. Thank you. Muito obrigado, Brasil. Hapcon. Allah Hikmikum. A salva de palmas, galera. Merece muito. Vou tentar resumir o que ele disse aqui. Agradecer o Vô, que deu dinheiro para ele comprar o primeiro notebook dele. E assim ele conseguiu começar a carreira dele. Graças ao Rainbow Six, ele conheceu muitos amigos. A esposa Paula. Então, muitos e muitos amigos. A carreira dele, a vida dele mudou. Graças ao Rainbow Six Siege, e ele tem um carinho especial pelo Brasil. Mais uma vez, gostaria de pedir ao ginásio do Ibirapuera para aplaudir o mais alto que a gente conseguir, Milos! What a man! What a beautiful moment! Milos, congratulations one more time! I cannot wait to see your career continue to grow and flourish, but for now, you've got a big day ahead of you. Are you ready to get back to the desk? Buddy. The one thing we have a fucking show to do. He's got a point. Let's do this. Thank you, Milos. One more time for Milos! Woo! Okay, we're just starting. Emotions are high right yep. now. Man, that was a lot. But listen, as Milos gets set up, let's just check one more time because I've been really curious ever since we found out that this was going to be a grand final all Brazilian grand final, who this audience would be rooting for. Should we do a quick test? Let's do it. Vamos ver, torcida. Hoje temos dois brasileiros, já somos campeões. Isso é bom, isso é bom. Mas temos W7M, Faze e Clã. A gente vai testar aqui o grito de vocês para saber para quem que vocês estão torcendo. Let's start with you. Brasil! W7M! <laughs> Noisy. Okay. Alô, torcida da Faze Club! Whoa. All right. Well, that grand final will be coming your way later on. But for now, it is back to our MVP of 2024, Milos on the desk. Thank you very much, Ian, and thank you very much, Leo. I held it together, but I can't promise I can do it for too long. Hello, everybody. Welcome. The show now is about to begin. And I'm here, not alone, of course, with two wonderful people, my good friends, Anne and Alfama. Alfama, first of all, welcome. Thank You're here you. in the middle of the arena. We get to see you. Thank you for your awesome telestration. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling, I'm feeling, thank you. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling. So excited, the, the arena is huge, the fans are crazy, the atmosphere is just, I've never seen this for Rainbow Six. And how are you doing today? You look wonderful, radiant as always. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. I had a hard time trying to keep it clear and not crying during your accommodation. It was absolutely amazing. You did a wonderful speech. Uh, also for the venue, it's been amazing to be here yesterday during the second you know, game. It almost felt like it was the final, so I can't wait what we'll be hearing today. All right, let us take a look at our schedule for today. It's actually the easiest we've had but it is packed with activities. First of all, is our show match. We're gonna talk about that together here on Alfama in just a moment. Our live performance of the Six Invitational 2024 music. We have the band here, I can confirm. It is absolutely sick. Afterwards is the Year 9 panel, focusing on esports and more. And finally, 
no introduction needed. Our grand final best of five, unlimited overtime on every single map. And what are our teams playing for? Well, that trophy and a boatload of uh, money. What are we doing with a, with a million dollars? That's a good question. I would never After know. After you pay the tax. <laughs> I, I get grouped every time I go to an event, so uh, I would never know what, what you would do with a top cash price. Fair enough. What about the second place? 500, 450 smackaroos? I mean, that's still a whole lot of money. I would definitely take it if I were any of these teams. And of course, they're going to try and go for that number one title and the hammer. Maybe multiplied by 10, we can buy a house one day. <laughs> Let's move on then. It's no SI without us complimenting the players. And we have an award show lined up for you. Why not? Let's have some fun before we kick it off into our show match. Welcome to the SI24 award show. First up, our top planter, Lagonis. And what's up with them? Yeah, we felt like it was very common to make sure that we preach our prayers or players that were on this event. And Lagonis was the one that planted the most in these rounds that he's played over the duration of this tournament so far. 17.2% of the rounds that he was playing on attack, he actually planted as well. And we kept on talking about the importance of attack during such a defender favored tournament so far. So that he was able to put it down so often is very, very good for his team. Yeah, he's always been playing like this. He's playing really good method uh, methodical siege, really good at finding that opportunity to go for the diffuser. But at the same time, you look at their attacker win rates, it's 30% only. So in that current meta, I don't think, you know, planting is really the key here. It's more frightening. All right, our unsung hero of the tournament, who is it? And please take us to a drum roll. It's yeah, Nath. It could only be Nath. I mean, of course, this player joining Dark Zero, a really, really nice improvement for him there. We saw him on his former team, of course, the second best rated player there, but he's never really been given that opportunity to join a team overseas and I think in this tournament so far he's been so flexible with the operators they was given he always has a super super strong start as well and I'm just really happy to see that coming from an EU player I feel a really good connection with this guy because actually yep. now I, I had a similar uh, pattern you know I was qualifying to every event with my European team he did with M&M and then he journeyed to NA and he had a massive impact on his team not only in terms of strategic vision in terms of shot calling but also in terms of fragging which is the most impressive I cannot wait for Nave's career in North America, see how that evolves over time. Finally, our rookie of the event. It is a big thing to award, of course, and it goes to Reaps from Bleed. Alphama, please, you've played in APAC. Why Reaps? I can tell you he was one of the most anticipated prospects coming out of APAC. Such a you know, shallow talent pool, you would think, with, it, with this region. And he was really, really liked by many players in ranks. He was smacking everyone. And to see him here is not a surprise for me. It's been a good go for him because I remember watching him during the LCQ of the second major of the year mm -hmm. and it was round 10 and I opened my house and like, he's dropping a 20 bomb, absolutely wild, had some insane clutches as well this year and I think it's definitely deserved. I expect Bleed to continue playing on the big stages of the year through 2024, that is for sure. We know the Manchester major will be coming up later on in the year, so hey, who knows, maybe we'll get to see Bleed perform. There. These are our awards for SI24, all of the stats that we have is locked in for this, but I know you're all ready. Your favorite players are in for our show match at the Invitational. It's no event without one. And this time it's special. Brazil has absolutely destroyed everybody here from all of their uh, teams all over the world. But maybe a chance of redemption as it's Team Brazil taking on Team World. Start off with Team World. We'll talk about them because I gotta say, there's a lot on the line and there's some people in there that have some heavy shoes to fill. There's a lot to cheer for on this roster as well. I mean, it's like the entire world. You've got people coming from every different region. Definitely something to cheer for. Starting off with Dev, our colleague. Of course, really nice to see that. We don't have G2 on the, the main stage with an awesome. At least have Dev Marta on the main stage of the uh, of the final day as well. Macy J, a big content creator, definitely one of the OGs. Brits, I think she won before Team Bolo during the Atlanta show match as well. Pisty, you know, a Mena content creator and a commentator as well. I'm sorry, Mena. Mena, <laughs> no, no, Mena not just Mena. Pisty is literally the best player in the world. I'm not putting any expectations on anyone, but if Pisty is not dropping a 20 bomb in this game, I'm disappointed. He's going to do great. And maybe they need it as well, because Tom is also playing from EU. Definitely something for EU to cheer for. But he won one in Elephant in a Copenhagen show match, so he's definitely going to have to step it up today. Yeah, that was a, a bit unfortunate. Yeah. A bit of stage fright, right? Your first time on the stage, Alfama. There's something that you can bring him back, but it's a lot of big shoes also to fill for our own colleague, Dev Marta. Yeah, I can tell you he's going to need to step it up. When I see the team in front of him, I'm like, OK, <laughs> all right. Me, at my peak form, I had struggle beating these guys. So they will need to really, really, really nail it down. All right, let's take a look at their opponents. We talked about Team World. Who is on Team Brazil? Well, it's actually some pretty, 
pretty great players and people that competed at the top. Alfama, walk us through it, please. Yeah, it's 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 Reviratis, Kamikaze, Raza, Zig, and then Julio. I can tell you I played against at least three of these guys on professional play. When I was 18 years old on similar stages, I actually went one and nine against Kamikaze and Julio. <laughs> At a minor in Vegas, it was absolutely crazy. I couldn't not shoot back, literally. Don't you and Zik play like the same role back in the day? Yeah, we did. Like he was playing support, I was playing support as well. And we were we never played against each other, but we played against each other in screams. And Liquid absolutely destroyed me. So like, this is why I tell you, they will need to step it up if they want to beat Team Brazil. Yeah, For sure. Riberetes, we have Raza on here. These are big names here in Brazil. Yeah, but the one I want to focus on is Julio, because I had the pleasure of playing together with him during the Copenhagen show match. He helped us all set up like our communication, felt like a bit of a father figure to us in that regards, but he's definitely going to help his team in that well, and I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. So, so you got the bleed experience yeah. before he <laughs> yeah. got on to bleed. Well, I'm, I'm really wondering here, because who would be then that kind of coach or calm under fire that Team World would have. Do you guys have any idea? We're just throwing it out there. Well, I mean, Brit is their captain, so I'd assume maybe she might take it and maybe take the lead in that to you. But also, I mean, Macy J, I yeah. think he knows every single shred at this point Absolutely. that you can only imagine of. So definitely someone to be the captain for that team to my uh, Even he has to be careful with what clips he puts on Twitter because I've seen the one a few weeks ago and didn't go too well. And you're like, oh, your team's not doing much. You got to go on, the, on top and the, can't really do much on the roof. No, I was actually playing with Messi J when I was in rank, when I was uh, playing in EU United, because I was waiting for my visa, so all I could do was play rank with him. <laughs> and I can tell you he's got a really good strategic mind, so he, maybe he's able to bring a little bit of that theory to help them. Honestly, see, that's how it is in NA, because when you play ranked, you're already at the top, that, the apogee of what NA can give, right? <laughs> that is so bad, actually. That, no, you're right. Hey, that's you your... said it. I, I just, I no, just I... hypothesized. All right. I, I assume. I didn't say this, okay? Maybe when I arrived in rank, maybe I felt it was easier than in Europe, but I haven't said anything. Don't worry, our highest level here in Europe is fresh and friends, so it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, come and, see, come see, as they say. And they're able to take down the best French team all as well. Ooh. Ooh. And Wolves beat most teams, including the two squads that are playing in the final. So, hey, what we're trying to say is Wolves are literally the best team in the world, right? Yeah, we want to claim that as a European. We don't have a European team on the main stage for the grand final. We just want to make sure there's at least a bit to cheer for. And Alfama, thank you very much. We are ready for our show match. Let's toss it to our casters. Every huge R6 event. Always has a show match, Leo. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for that. <laughs> the thing is, what I've already realized about this crowd is we are guaranteed a little bit of rivalry. I think this is going to be deadly serious. Exatamente. Afinal de contas, vamos ter os nossos principais criadores de conteúdo que vocês gostam. Brasil contra mundo. Raza de um lado, os gringos do outro. Hmm. Can you just check with them if they want Team World or Team Brazil to win? Of course, let's try that. Can you do that then. for me? They're for Raza or for the world? Yeah, they're supporting Raza. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any doubt about it? I don't think so, right? <laughs> it is that team, that one Brit versus Team Raza here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, aka Team World versus Team Brazil. Conversation. We got Hazard and we've got Hey. Alenda. Make sure they make some noise for Brit, please. Vamos fazer um barulho para ela também, rapaziada. Brit, I'm here. 
Vamos lá, um salvo de palmas, aê! Obrigado! <risos> Fritz! This is a tough one, isn't it? I mean, you're up against world champions. Uh, you're up against Brazil. You feeling confident? I, we feel super confident, but we're also here just to have a good time. And I think we're super motivated to play Siege. Uh, we've been watching all the games and we're really eager to just get in there and have some fun and play some good Siege. É isso, ó. Ela veio aqui pra se divertir. Vocês estão na diversão? Vocês querem ganhar a massa? Então, o meu time... A partir do momento que eu tô jogando, eu não venho pra brincar. Eu venho pra amassar. Nós é Brasil, pô. Não tem Lero Lero e vão amassar. Eu peço desculpa até pra ela, mas meu time vai vir pra engolir mesmo. He said, he said he's not here for fun. He wants to destroy his match and win the match. He's not here for fun. He, he's here to, to win. Oh, that's okay. We're here for fun, but also, you're going down. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. The gloves are off now. I was trying to be nice. You're going down. <laughs> I'm all of Listen, I'm for Team Weld here, all right? Your Team Brazil. Guys, go and take your seats and get ready for this one. This is going to be a lot of fun. Brit, go and get ready. Haza, go and get ready as well. You do realize, we've got some streamers that have been flown out here from all over the place, right? And it is a dream come true for content creators to be here in Brazil for what is the biggest six invitational of all time. É, muita gente, inclusive, temos com Gal, tem muita gente acompanhando, o Zig, o Raza, no mundo inteiro, vários streamers estão transmitindo o Six Invitational, que é histórico. E a gente ter lendas como o Raza, Zigueira, que já ganhou a Pro League em 2018 com a Team Liquid, hoje vai ser insano e a gente tá só aquecendo, porque já já tem a grande final entre FaZe e W7M. O problema é, Team Brasil... If you're part of Team World, you're a little bit concerned because it is a bit of an all-star roster, really, isn't it? You got world champions on there, Kamikaze and Julio who was uh, yep. awarded a common D just yesterday as well. Zigueira won Zigueira. The, the Pro League in 2018, but I get to ask what? I'm a huge fan of Massey J. He plays amazing Siege. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be awesome. All right, let's get into this one. Show matches are always a highlight for me at these events, and I know you are gonna love this one too. Let's get stuck into it with our amazing casters. Thank you very much. You find us here representing a bit of men of gold, a little bit of EU glam. And I, as an American, am tired of Brazil dominating this entire competitive year, Emmy. What? Double Brazil final in Copenhagen. Yeah, that's true. Double in Atlanta. Uh huh. Yeah, double yeah. in Brazil. Mm. And now we've got to face Julio. Uh, it, I mean, it's not just Julio. You've got Zig. What's oh. your thoughts on? Oh, Kamikaze. He's, oh, he's Riveretta. Played, he's played in a final. Oh, Emmy. The right. closest Macy J's been to a final is a show match. Maybe Raza. Maybe Raza as well. But hey. We've got Tom J. Sherlock, we've got a couple of other people whose name's Team Brit. Let's go into a map. Okay, I'm American. Just, I'm worried about this. Things we love. Apple pie. Apple pie. Uh, baseball. Apple bees. Apple bees. Things we don't love. Brazil winning absolutely everything. Yeah, well, and also if there's no apple pie involved. That's if there's kind no of the apple thing pie I'm involved. About. I mean, that's the power that we have right now. We have the rest of the world's hopes. We do. Dreams. Do you, know, do you know how many regions we have? How many regions? Well, so we have like at least one. Yeah. And that region is Brazil. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. But as we all know, there are far more regions than that. We've got MENA, OS, Japan, Korea, Southeast Asia, North America, Europe. You get the point I'm making, okay? I get. I'm, I'm the, with you. the entire ecosystem's hope is on this match, okay? This is the real grand final. This is not for a hammer. This is for the honor, because Brazil has had it too good for too long, and yeah. I need the world to succeed. He's riding APAC in the wall. James Devmata, uh, the greatest APAC player to ever touch Reload. this, because there's only about four. Well, uh, I, listen, I remember Devmata being on stage on Nora Rango when they made their great run at SI. Oh, that was not Devmata. That, that, that was players who, you know, Compete. As you, but as you can see right now, we're having a great start. I mean, we're going in with a Nomad Knife. I was about to say, this we're is going in with a Nomad Knife round. If you've never seen this before, 
You get 10 people. What do you do? Put them in a circle. What do you do then? Put an air jab in the middle. And what guess do you what do happens then? after that? They fly out from the circle. It's and then unbelievable you scenes of how much flying. I really want someone to fall off the roof. This is a really bad idea. Watch Zig. Oh, oh. Zig. But we're in, we're off, and we're going for each other with the blood of a thousand wolves. Zig finds Pissy. Zig finds two. Deathmarder gets one on the back of it, but Kamikaze's all over. Zig? Zig on a triple. Zig hasn't played a comp match in like eight billion years, and he just tripled us? Okay, this isn't a good start. This, this is, is a, a horrible start. Get the heads together. I want to point out, so, again, just to reiterate, Zig used to play for Team Liquid, if you're not familiar with, I don't know, the lore. He just got a 3K, very good for Zig. Tom J. Sherlock, Emmy, as you can see on the camera right now, uh, one and 11 in the last show match. Yep. So yeah, it's yeah. a bit of an apples and oranges he, situation. I mean, he went with, uh, he was out until 5 a.m. enjoying some karaoke, getting himself singing, I believe, Mr. Brightside. I've heard he's a great set. That's a British classic right there. I mean, it, well, he went with the G2 method of preparation, and unfortunately, it didn't quite come together. He also, this morning, we were talking with the players, trying to get them hyped up. We're rest of the world, baby. We got to plan a flag, even if it's several different flags, and say, woohoo! But. He spilled mustard on himself. Mid-conversation. Mid. Literally. We're like, guys, are you excited? And he's like, I am. I am. I have to leave. I spilled mustard on my pants. And then he, he was uh, cleaning his T-shirt. And I believe Brit said, stop wiping yourself in public. Round two. Do you know what a classic round two is, my guy? This is like the Old West, OK? We are having a, a showdown at high noon, or in the case of Favela, somewhere after 9 PM when all the shops have closed. Yeah, it yeah, is a yeah, pistol-only sure. round. Everyone will use the big iron on their hip and fight to the death. We team are Brazil yeah. versus Team Brazil. We team are versus Team Brazil. We are hiring, and we're finding out just who is. Hi, Brazil. No. Oh, not Brazil. Blitz, I feel, is a bit cheating in this particular circumstance. He has a shield nobody else has. Pisty was put forward by Milos, the pride of Mena, the man with a million kills. Pisty? Yeah, that was how Milos sold him. Well, he cannot. OK, maybe what? Maybe we oversold him. Our bad. He's blitz. That was our pressure. I mean, he's he's sprinting in. He's got a shield in front of him, and he's Ooh. the opening kill. Ooh. Macy J, put that in a video. Brit, maybe not. Come on, stop it. A little bit cruel, a little bit unusual, leaving the classic duo buddy cop combination of Macy J, man of the Americas, and Tom J. Sherlock, a man of weather spoons at three in the morning. And Mustard. And Mustard. Mean Mr. Mustard going for a kill. He's got Ribierez. He's got a two-piece as Raza falls. A little bit sour and accurate, our team Brazil. Attackers That's where Tom J. Sherlock succeeds. Whoa, Kamikaze going for another big kill. Playing ring around the rosy on the top floor on the trash chute. The big flank, but the crossfire works out. Macy J, he's going for the plant. He's going to sort of say, come find me, baby. The Macy J special right here. Can he play this post plant with all the precision of a man? And I've run out of words that begin with P. But I know one that might begin with goat. Macy J. He drops down and goes for the rotate. He's playing time here. They're going to try and find themselves underneath. Look at the verticality. Look at the preparation. Look. Can you see the brain on this man? The man has a brain that will be studied for at least some time after this. They bait the first, and he is not falling for it. Macy J, he's got a wiggle. He's got a jiggle. He's got a jive. He gets the first! We've only got a couple of seconds here, Zig. You might be one of the greatest of all time. But Macy J, I believe they're holding. We're good. They're hoping. Nah, we're good. We're good. They're in this. Tom J. Sherlock is silencing the crowd. Please, Tom, do not antagonize. Also, listen, I, you know, I, I, before I say this, I've been watching Macy J since I was young. He kept me with Rainbow Six when I wasn't playing. You are still young. I'm still young, still but I'm young. saying when I was, you know, four years old, I was watching Macy J videos in my free time. Is that not the most Macy J moment you've ever seen? We're mid-show match, pistol only round. He's like, I'm going to plant the bomb and play verticality. Well, talking of times when you were young, I think we throw it back old school. Slap it up, spin it round, and give me some OG operator rounds. Name some OGs right now. We got Sledge. Bam. Thatcher. Bam. Ash. Oh. Rook. Yo. And my favorite, Tachanka. Well, 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 well. 
Well, let's see if they can try and make things happen. As I said, old school slamming down. You guys in chat always asking for classic Siege. We're gonna give it to you, but without the things that you always hasten to not remember, like insane bloom, the inability to look outside on consulate. Hibata pellets crashing your game. <laughs> Fragmite. <laughs> I, okay, I actually miss Fragmite. I miss I'd Fragmite. like that one back. Uh, bring back Fragmite. If you can hear me, I mean, you did the, the certain ash change that uh, is coming. I think we I think we roll back to the classics. Anyway, we are in classic territory, classic town, and its name is... I think Team World going to win this. I, th I think they will. We've got Mr. Classic, Macy J, of course. Dev Marta bringing the Tachanka. I mentioned one of my favorite operators. This is where I think we will truly succeed. Because, I mean, to, to be serious for a moment, Brazil have really succeeded in this new meta. NA and EU have, you know, been a bit more of an older play style. And if we are handicapping the entire lobby with the oldest operators, I feel this was a round made for us to win. Let's see what Team Brazil can bring back into this. I can't roll my I've been studying my I Brazilian. I know no words apart from that and obrigada. Well, thank you very much, Tom is J. Sherlock. Is that what that means? It is. Oh! oh! There it is. He's gone. He's out of it. Sit down and watch the Tom J. Sherlock masterclass. Macy J as well giving in tell with the pulse down. We're just literally watching a Macy J video right yeah, now. He's watching just... a Macy... Uh, if you listen to him, he would be like talking to his team. He's like, oh, we're having a good time here. He's just calm and, oh, Pisty going for the run out. Oh. Look at this rappel from Zig. 6-0 and oh so far. There's one more play around that corner. But Julio going for the Hurts. W7M backstab. You can tell the impact he had on that team. He finds another. Team captain Britt falls. Julio has control of the bomb site. Mamma mia, this is looking spicy, but there's a man who can break the hearts of thousands of people in a single heartbreaking shot in a moment. Kamikaze, he's had a big couple of swings. Dev Marta, he's had one impact, and it sort of stays at one impact. Look at the, look at how sad he is in the background of cool as ice. Macy J, the man. This is just how Macy J plays anyway. <laughs> one versus three. What are they going to get? One. Oh, he's got intel on another. Julio's got the coverage, Kamikaze going for the plant, so now Macy J in a bit more difficult of a position. Oh, Kamikaze right above him. Macy J doesn't find the intel yet. Emmy, he's got a lot of time to figure this out, but he's not forced them into a position like he did before. He's going for the long run, and no, oh, oh, turn away, avert your gaze. Devastating, I think we need something to cheer us up a little. I'll do a quick reminder, after this, there's a live performance from a band. You, you're all gonna wanna see it. Everybody's gonna wanna see it. After this, he's doing a, an impression of an orchestra. Well, just a, not an orchestra, I'm doing an impression oh, of a violinist. Me. Everyone at home, if you're crying right now, as I assume every single person is, because Brazil is about to destroy us once again, uh, know that there's gonna be something very, very cool. After the second time I will have cried today, after Milos's wonderful thing earlier, I was... Shout out to Milos getting the shout MVP out to Milos. That's That's not a bit, just shout out. Good I don't think we should give a shout out to Parker. No, well, no, I mean, he didn't win a combination. No, right I now. just don't think we should. I just want who? to make ground rules. Yeah, who, who exactly. are we talking about? So next up, Emmy, if we didn't win the OG Operator round, well, I think we're in bad shape. I think... Because we're uh, we're going contemporary, okay? We're modernizing things here. Is this we're, split theory? We're right... <laughs> is, this the th is this the split theory I've heard of? It, well, it, it's split theory in that... Draw it to me in a graph. Draw... <laughs> <laughs> this, can your split theory fit in a pie chart? Well, my split theory involves Ram, Osa, Brava, Grimm, and Flores because these players can only play ops released in the past four years, which, by the way, it actually occurred to me on the on the uh, shuttle ride over just how long this game has been out. Nine years. Nine years. Nine years of Rainbow Six. Wow. And I was like, modern operators in the last four years? That's how long some games are just, like, exist in general. It's been at least four years. <laughs> so we've had some time here. And what time do we have? I'm thinking it's Team World time. They're cheering for Team World. You might think that maybe they're cheering for the Brazilian crowd right now, no. the Portuguese in-house vote. No, no, no. I think, there's actually, a, I think there's a lot of uh, fan bams out there. Emmy and I rented our own arena and we stocked it with 9,000 Team World We flew them fans. in. We did. We've, we're sick and tired of seeing NA, EU, MENA, Australia, APAC be flown out. We flew them all in. We brought them here. They're part of the show. Right back. And we'll see if Team World bring round four right back as well.
Macy J again, a very familiar position going on the drone, finding the intel. Is Dev going for the entry, the R4C on RAM? Certainly going for the verticality, I'll tell you that much. Well, there's a little bit of a chill spreading through me bones as we find, once again, a bit of a hold here. Look at this display of power. Look at Julio's oh. better play. Rivarete's Julio. He's on the floor. He's playing in the football field. He's got Diffuser. He's got the Diffuser. Brit, they're on the hunt. They're going to see if they can try and get the kill. Attackers recover. Like it's a, I mean, this is, this is a ridiculous state of affairs. Julio just runs out, kills two of us with Soulless P90. Dev Marta is on the roof with R4C after being the first guy in the building. So I know what he's trying to get out of this matchup. Trying to boost the show match KD. I I'll think tell you that much. I think after this, if this starts to go away, we might have to call a little bit of a timeout. Oh. Get the heads up. Dev Marta, he got one. He's doubled his tally and any of the hope that the Asian Pacific region has right now. Put that on your socials, you beautifully tall and slightly Defender exposed. golden retriever-esque man. got another kill. Got another kill. Julio. I mean, how do you stop, how do you solve a problem like Julio? Uh, well, you, you make it be the coach of Eminem oh. for a period of time. Okay, time out. Everybody, slow down, hang on. Who's the coach down there? I want to Put find me out. on the line. Is but, it Fabian? I don't think Fabian is the coach anymore. If Fabian was the coach, they'd start to do some very extreme things. Uh, we'd have some split theory, I'll tell you that much. Okay, I think they're uh, doing a couple of changes. This is what we've called in, actually. I, I've paid that guy. We go way back. And they're going to turn off the monitors of each of the team captains. Whoa! That seems... That seems okay, I, I gotta say, that seems a little excessive at me. Oh, I mean... Raza! No looking. They're zooming in. They're trying to work out... They're letting him choose his operator. Well, that's nice of them. And then it's off. Then it's gone. Get out listen, of here. Okay, listen. I understand, like, we want to blindfold the team captains, but yeah. I mean, if you paid off Jimmy, who I've heard is a very nice, very nice guy, I feel like we should be turning off the monitors of uh, Julio and Zig. I think we like six and one choose. and five and two. Maybe we turn off. I mean, I don't think we need to turn off Brit's monitor either. Maybe you know, this seems very. They might have been able to obviously uh, previously get a decent championship with the power of Lion, where Fabian actually once won around without his monitor because he just played Lion. So that would be my guess. What would you play? If I were like in that final? If, if I had to throw you yeah. down there and you survived. Yeah, and I, and I you know, ran up onto the stage. Ran up on the I stage. Said, Macy J, get out of here. And get out of here, down. Macy J. Get out of here. They're trying to get them to kill each other so the two blindfolded players they are the only ones that can shoot and kill as julio puts it in all chat oh, well, that's good see and i was getting i was getting worried this was going to be a normal round and it's oh, like no. oh no oh and two raza yeah, is <laughs> his monitor's off zig and julio can still play though yeah this is a lot more fair no zig and julio between the pair of them are actually, to be honest, with how well Brazil have played this tournament, a little bit under at uh, 12 and 3 between the pair of them. We've got two, like, great communicative IGLs right here and also Kamikaze, a very famous support. Yep. If there's anybody who can, like, literally map out where Brit is with just by communications, which it's is Team a shame, Brazil. Because I don't think the Americans understand a word Tom J. Sherlock or Dev Marta are saying. No, he had to, like, motion, like, to the mustard on his pants. And I'm like, are we miming? Or is yep. this, like, a bit? It's a very very, very thick English accent, and then you've got, oh, I'm from Dan Under. That's so Dev Marta, by the way. He's going to have to be the middleman. Whoops. Julio has been executed. We have, and, and then I'm <laughs> proud to reveal, we have hired Raza. We've hired Raza. You thought we just turned his monitor no, off. He just we, sat, re we replaced his audio. It's he, us he in his headphones. He sat up like the Manchurian candidate, and he's like, I have been awakened. <laughs> Team World is my true ally. Now it's three to one. So if Brit can pull out the Brit, Britlian, brilliant, brilliant, Britliance here. It is really confusing that her name is Brit, but she's American. I am thrown through a loop every time I look. It's like that one Brit. It's like, so, well, oh, it should be that one American. That one American. It's like Canadian, right? In the context of Canadian's name. If there was a second Canadian on his team, it would get very is, confusing. Uh, so I, uh, they're supposed to find each other, and Roz's team has left him. They, By himself. He's just shooting, He's just alone. He's just shooting upwards at a hard floor. I don't know. Nobody's moving. I don't know what is going on, but they know even less. But only just. Only just at this point. I think this is a, a tricky one to do on Favela 
because it's a very tricky map. He is he's just, he's just on by. What is going on? <laughs> that's, that's the comms. Oh, <laughs> Dev Martis just commenting. Dev what the there. heck? Dev, Dev Martis there just feeding the intel this on the is actually, location. This is a brilliant strategy. <laughs> I mean, it bounces the bullets back. James is doing, he's doing all that he can. We're also doing all that we can. Emmy, Emmy, they have moved like two centimeters in the past five Are minutes. Are they trying to push Brit? That's not how this game works. Just hold Wazda. Feel it in I remember, bones. listen, okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare anything, but I remember at Atlanta we had something similar and it went a lot quicker than this. We got 30 seconds left, this we've is, not even left the room. Think about who's on defense though. It's a play, it's a ploy. The pressure is on Team Brazil to be able to pull this one out of the bag, what? but at what? the minute the bag is full of mm, USD, baby. We're going all the way home. Why did, why did they leave Raza outside? Oh, they're <laughs> almost there. They're almost there. Just turn right, Brit. Turn around. He's left. behind you. They're in. They're shooting. They're so close. They're almost on the side of each other. Hitting and firing. Raza, no. no! Wait. Yes. 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 Sorry, I, I was, sorry, I was not invested in Team Brazil right there. No, no, no. I no, sir. No, sir. I'm getting a call right now. My phone, it's blowing up. Beep, 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 beep. I'll pass it to you. Who's on the other end? Mom, what, what do you want? Oh, no, wrong phone. In fact, it looks like we might be about to have a, uh, a swap coming in. I'm hearing some conversation. Oh, thank God. This has been kind of ridiculous. Maybe a Brazil needs swap. a Brazil needs a handicap. I mean, Julio Nesk again doing so good. What are we doing? I'm using my binoculars, which is my hands around my eyes. Oh, let me, because let me they take them out too. Provided them with us to get an idea of just what's going on down on the stage. Oh, my binoculars don't work. Hold on. Not that there's a script. Not that there's a set thing to happen. Well, I'd be useless. I can't read anyway. Maybe we're trying our best here to desperately pull in. What do you think's going right for the rest of the world right now? Well, I think what's going right for the rest of the world is that Team Brazil decided to just abandon. Oh. Who, who, who is that? What? Whose theme music is that? Whose theme music? Whose theme that? music? Oh, it's Kino! It's Kino! What? Make some noise for Kino! Now, where does he go? Does he go to Brazil? Why me? Why not? He's played in. He's played in Challenger League. He's played in. He is. He is Brazilian as well. He has a lot of heritage. I mean, this is kind of. The rest of the world. Tom J. Sherlock's son, Kino, a little bit known of trivia there, will be setting themselves up to play one round. Now, I think this is fair. I think we don't change anything else, right? I think, I think it stays as it is. We get back in. He's being massaged. I'm f listen, okay? Like, listen, I'm, I'm good friends with Leo, okay? I, yep, li yep. I like him, you know? Sure, he might not be the best Monty in the world, but he's a good guy. Honestly, you know what? The shotgun ministered, Leo. I think he is confused at Tom J. Sherlock's bindings. He couldn't hear anything, apparently. Whoa, whoa, has this been, has this been put together? Apparently his audio wasn't on. That says a lot about the power of... Was Tom J. Sherlock just playing Tom without J. audio? I think we have just made the best trade. I don't think there will ever be a better trade in a show match on a player for player, pound for pound scale. Are you? He was playing without audio? He was playing without audio. What? And he, did, he didn't... Who did what? Who did even, the choosing here? He didn't here? even notice. Kino. Kino is in. And I, I mean, I, I want to... I'm going to text the refs. Tell us to, to get back into this. I can only imagine that from this point onwards, we're going to find... No, don't. Oh. Wait, there's Wait. more. Okay, more so intro music. Are we summing up? Like, no! Shut up! No! Get out of here! of all time. He does go on Team they're World. They're winning! He Why are they on Team in World. this? No! Come on! This is... So wait, no, 
no, no, no, no, no. Time out, time, time out. out. Shut time up. Out. Hold Who the phone. We, text? we get. Call your mother again. We're. Li Mom. <laughs> Mom, we have. You give us Kino. Kino. And Brazil, who is winning. You give them Nesk. Nesk. We. <laughs> we got. We got a Monty player of all time. They got one of the players of all time. What is this? Okay. I can't believe it. What hey, am I? do you know what? We still got Macy J. We still got Dev Marta. We still got Pisty. We still got that one Brit. And now we got Kino. I have hope. I'm back on the coat. We'll bring the pain train, Brit, with the fight round. I mean, how good could this combination of players ever been? We've never seen it. We might have seen it. I'm just in disbelief. Like, what? They sub Neskin. They're winning. 3 2. We're going to. Emmy, I think it's over. I think it's over, girl. There's a minute 30. Here comes the rush on the back end. They've got a shield, and we've actually got a weird round of siege. So I'm going to play by play. Julio takes the head of the UK man. Julio doubles down. Who even needs this when you've got an MVP like Julio? Macy J redeploys as Pisty takes out Riveretta. Steph Marta kills Julio. Stops the Indomitable. I don't know if I would call that a rush, but a slow shield push, I suppose, works. Oh, no! Death is an op for the enemy team, oh. I suppose, as Kamikaze flies in. Cuts down Pisty down <laughs> one and five. He's screaming. Death, Death, Death baiting a Death. team that doesn't even exist anymore. Death versus Zig. A one versus one. Now, I realize a lot of the calls there was neither Tom nor, I believe, it was the team captain, Julio. That was Nesk. That explains the triple kill. Zig versus Dev Marta. Two names to tall people, icons across the areas of Siege. APAC, they could win the something here on the grandest stage. If you're listening, wave your flags, chant your Aussie, Aussie, Aussies. Oi, 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 oi. Dev going for the plant. Again, Zig has that heartbeat scanner, but he's not got it Attackers out. Are activating the bomb diffuser. Utility play, that's a North American thing, my friend. <laughs> Russo in three. Oh! 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 Big Look at him! Zoom in! Throw it up with a camera! <laughs> that's my big dog! That's right a big there. dog! He killed Ness of all people. He also took out. Kamikaze, Raza, oh! Rengo. We've seen Mantis. How many jerseys does this man have on? This is like number four at this point, but if he's got the Noro Rengo jersey, I can see he was channeling Waka for that play. Even the cameraman is on Nesk's side. Oh, man. I think we come back to normalcy a little bit. I think we have another showdown. I think we build on this momentum. Three apiece. Look at this. Death Marta. Oops. We didn't need to look at that. This one. Bam. Kamikaze and Raza in a single split. I mean, put the commendation on him. That's what? my boy right there. That's a gift. That's the tallest man alive. The look at that. Look at that. I believe that. I believe he is in the running is for that sexiest man alive right there. Oh, you can see the fear in Team Brazil. Look at how they didn't know that, we, they didn't know might, we had it like that. That might look like a smile, but that's the realization. You're up against the biggest dog in James Devmarta Stewart. Brit, Team yeah, Captain IGL. Now it might have been said that Canadian said he was the best IGL of all time. I don't know. I don't know. That Brit might be giving him a run for his money. Devmarta is certainly giving Attackers some of the best in the world, the giving virtue. Run for his money. Virtue's learning. Who do you think everyone learned it from in that region? Everybody everybody thought he was the brains. He was the the man with the quickest mechanics, the best reflexes in Australia. No, no, no. James Dev Marta Stewart. That's who he learned it from. The Phantom Menace from Australia. He's now found his way into the matchup. Even up the score. ACJ. Going for the verticality again. I mean, he's undefeated pretty much in show matches, apart from the one that he gifted Shroud because he felt a well, little bit bad for him. Ah, uh, Des Devmar has been locked out. I don't think he can see through Run the glasses. Me. In a hindsight, mistake. Well, I suppose uh, there goes our best player from last he's round. I'm a bit worried about how this is going to go. Oh. Would this count as an interrogation on the bingo? I would hope so. Tom J. Sherlock hits <laughs> with the kick kick K. You can see the smiles that come out. Just in that screenshot alone of Zig and Julia, you're like, yeah, that's, a, that's a lot of excuse. Those oh. alone could take the rest of it. Mace J on the run. Solo roam clear. 
ACJ running scared at the moment. Zig has found that one. Brit, excellent re-entrance into the competitive scene for Zig. Oh! Conte Sherlock! Just kidding! It's Kino! Kino the shotgun minister! That's Kino! Dot aerial rise we're talking about right now. Oh, wait, no, he left the team. I did before that. Wonder why suddenly Tom J. Sherlock was playing well. Because I forgot. Julio gets Macy J. Now we technically have three or four Brazilians here, but one of them is assisting Pisty. He had a lot of hype coming into this. The man from Mena bringing that fire, that fury of a region that's played so well this year. Turn right. Oh. Turn right. No. Pisty. Pisty, look around. He played the bait. Let's go. Genius. He let Kino have that taken kill. It takes two to tango and two to dance, and this is a dance of death. This is a Kino we've not seen in a long time, Emmy. Where were they in the tournament? Where? Oh, where, getting water, getting, I recall. Getting water, but this is a Kino I've not casted for four years now. A man who can't be stopped. A he man who is stopped. who has now was, fallen to two. He Zig, just, Zig, Zig, and, and now versus right. Pisty. A showdown we all knew was coming. Let's be honest. Ever since they picked up, it's the Spin Pisty. What an insane moment! Clip it! Play it in slow motion! Ship Put it, it on all the socials! Ship, ship it to every journalist outlet! Are you listening, Jake Lucky? Team World has a lead, Emmy! We're 4-3 right now! Ba -na 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 -na. For a friend! Oh! Eagle, look at the reactions! Okay, well technically they can't take their hexes off competitive integrity. But of course. Of course, of course. We'll get the refs on the V8. No! Competitive integrity has meant that Tom J. Sherlock no, has to play again. No, bring Kino back. Bring oh, him back. they moved off Nesk. Th that goodness. doesn't really help all that much. No. Shut Wait up. a second. What, are we going to bring up Palu? Oh, oh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have a game on our hands. Respeita. Come here. I want to take you Would down. You, I don't, I'm afraid. I'm not afraid. One v one. one. I feel. What? Well, this is... Let's this go! Is, Copper battle! This Let's go! Plan. Let's go! This is, Copper a, this is a feud. Now, in the back rooms, these two, they've been at each other's throats. I didn't... I mean, I thought we were going to address that. I don't know. Is this allowed? Is allowed? Who is the strongest? Who is the quickest? All these competitions we've had have led to one thing. There is... There is a lot of famous one versus ones. You see Jinxie taking on yeah. all these people. Oh, is this Roller Saturday? Bolo. You see all these showdowns, but this is the one that people have been crying for. This is the one that people have been screaming for. Milos. The M medic. The medic. MVP. <laughs> he must be so warm in that suit. And a man whose suit you might be wearing right now. Let, let's just say I borrowed this blazer from someone and it might be the buffest man alive <laughs> is who is currently subbing in for Julio. Now, I'll be honest, Milos, I love you. I'm kind of glad that this is an in-game competition and not an actual it's, physical competition because I think... It's our... Like, I like you said, I love Milos, but this is our doting, lovable grandfather versus Dave Batista. <laughs> this is... This is Coffin Toddler. And they're going to do their best for Team World here. Milos. It's got, it's got to be hot under that suit. Look how, look how great he looks. <laughs> he does look. He's look great. at that figure. He's a very he dapper guy. You got now, to, you got to hand it to him. I love him. Five he is not great at suits. Well, we don't know that. Well, we know that he's well, better than Parker because nobody could be worse. Well, yeah, because all Parker does is he, he cues Hibana, he baits me for two and a half minutes, and yeah. then every 10th round he clutches a 1v3. Yeah, this is your time to get in any quips about your father that you can. Well, we're, no, we weren't bringing out, were we? Who were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Milos is... Okay. Dockerby. Okay. This is not. Uh, this is a knife fight. It's a one versus one knife fight on the roof. But why so we're he... looking at Julio's name. But is Milos hiding? We're supposed. Mi we're supposed to. We're supposed Milos. to beat our enemies on the field of battle. Milos is preparing. I think you'll find Milos is. Oh, he's counter -stratting. Getting himself involved. How big is that blazer on you? How big is this blazer on me? Yeah. Well, if I stand just straight up. Oh, hold up. Julio just keep a barrier somebody. <laughs> I've never seen that before. What? I mean, it's kind of a special. Well, that's Leo one. again. That's Leo playing Julio. That's hard to get. Used okay, to, by Leo. The way. Yeah, Leo playing Julio. Leo Bianchi. I mean, Tom Keybind scuffed.
Tom, it's very true. All right. Here's Sherlock, they're trying to find each other. Look, it's a dance, it's tippy toes. It's tactical, it's tactical, it's Milos, but he's gone! Oh, the scenes, the humanity! A murder, a butcher, a candlestick maker. Not even a fight! Not even a fight. There's no tinker, tailor, soldier, nor spy here. It's, it's just Milos losing a 1v1 like he wasn't even playing. We need to go back to square one. We need to call in, I don't know, something that brings us back in. Can we fly in like, I don't know, like, oh, can we get Bolo in? Wait, I think, I think we're about to have some words. Now we know he's great in the ring. We've seen him slam him off and break a man in half. By my you know, God, JR. It was the key binds. I was using Kino's key binds. Who sprints with space, okay? What? Oh, you gotta excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, I'm from EU. We give okay. excuses all the time. <laughs> okay, great for you. Great match, great match. Great match. We'll Congratulations. We'll repeat it next time in Brazil, huh? Okay, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do Let's it. Thank you, Brazil. Obrigado! Valeu, Brazil! Beautiful scenes. The world coming together with Brazil and Team World. Again, happy that they didn't go for some sort of fist fight because Milos would die. Any of us would. Please, can we please get Nesk off the stage? I just get nervous. I'm like, is, he gonna, is he gonna baptize us again? I, you know, he could jump in. They, I'm surprised they didn't play the drums. Oh. Uh, oh, thank you, Brit. That's very you. nice of you. <laughs> they got away from Kino. They were like, Kino's doing a heart. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Go on. So we're resetting. I got it. We're getting everything back in. Now, as everyone from home knows, when you have a one versus one host-based grudge match knife fight, you have to reset the server. That's it's just part of it. I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. Well, you should have read the the pages of. Well, no, I'm just I'm just not a, I'm not a one v one savant like you are. Um, yeah. Well, I've been around the one v one block. I've one v one. What's with, your best one v one? I could probably take, and I don't want to build expectations. Everybody, KZ, give me him. You could you could one v one the whole world. So that's I think more I than could, one person. I think I can one v one all of W. Oh, oh, uh oh, oh! <laughs> the crowd did not like that one. We're gonna have to get him out of that tunnel quickly. Even James, our games. You think you know a guy? And then he and then he just like he's he's turned heel. Tom J Sherlock was. Crouching in his chair. Well, you might be able to hear the room. Now, obviously, they only get the Portuguese casters because they don't want to get too biased towards us, too biased towards the rest of the world. Uh, we know who they're favoring, Emmy. They're favoring the uh, rest of the world right now. You might think all these Brazilian voices, all this Portuguese screaming is for the Brazilian team. No, no, no. Now we are finding ourselves back in. And I think we're settling this as a, as a first to win two of these rounds. Just a normal, like, so even, man, even, dude, like, they, they got Ness coaching them. We got Kino. I like Kino. Kino, listen, Kino would be Oh, a, there's a wave going around the arena. Listen, Kino would be a starting guy on the nice guy R6 roster. <laughs> but it's just like, he's just not Ness. No. That's the, I guess, the trade-off. Wait! Hey. Just wave. Just you, you, in. you guys at home would have loved it. It was a very nice bomb. wave. Okay. Reset. Rest of the world. First two rounds. The first being a normal round. You've done this before. Imagine Five being Carter me. right there, screaming into your ears, which you probably wouldn't hear over the loud chants for Brazil, but just imagine it. Just imagine. Just, imagine. just suppose it. So I believe uh, we had a tie game going into this, which is honestly fitting, considering we're now moving into double or nothing territory. Pisty stopped momentarily. I think they believe the drone was back there, or they just had a moment well, of madness. Or they're Dev. Just, they're just a big anti-garden hose crowd. Dev is hiding, waiting to pounce. Famous play. Tom, great Lee, movie. A big fan of that movie, and he needs to channel all of the martial arts expertise if he wants any hope in this showdown. All right. I'm sorry, I gotta take the dogs out. I'm getting stressed. The dogs are out. The, dogs the are stress out. is up. We can push forward! Riberetes deploys the shield. Tom, look out! Oh, oh no! 
like two ships passing in the night, but one of them is looking right there in his and, arm. And rams him and sinks the other ship. So really, not like that at all. <laughs> the kamikaze. It's just a shipwreck inside a yellow hallway. Yeah, that's true. There's a Kavera to the side. Oh, oh in interrogation! It's me! Put it on the bingo! Brit goes down! The flash is over. Dev Marta's doing their best to hold on to it, but they're just battling back and forth. The trade out, it's chaos in the yellow hall and the yellow stairs, and all I'm seeing. His blood and bodies. We still have a man disadvantage. How is this possible? We had full intel on them through the walls. And now, again, we have and another down. No! no! But everybody's on the ground. It's just Julio left. Now, Come on, Julio, don't. He's no! He's out to the first. He flips out from the top row! Macy J hits them with the elbow drop. The Get him out of here! The people's elbow bringing the world back into it. It shook. This room shook when those boots hit that ground. <laughs> this room shook with a lot of very quiet and polite Brazilian <laughs> fans being very unimpressed. There was shaking occurring. See, now, but this, this is, is this is the best part. Break it down. Break it down. Because you see, I don't think they really thought the world was going to bring the fight that they did because we're back at the lead 5-4 overall, but 1-0 in the double or nothing section. And guess what? They have come down, okay? The, the powers that be have come down and said that we have to switch the mouse and keyboard hand. Oh my God. Of different players. We have to, can you imagine using a mouse with your left hand and a keyboard with your right? It's just something that shouldn't happen. It's, it's unnatural. It is, it is quite literally illegal. And we're breaking laws here, baby. We are. We're flying. Laws without, of nature, laws of man. They said man would never fly. They said man would never land on the moon. They said we would never play with our keyboard and mouse hand reversed. And yet here we are. Now. There's a first for everything. Who's going to be able to get this first bite? You can see. You can smell the fear. That looks, again, like smiling. Ignore it. That's just how they look sad here in nope. Brazil. That's it. There, there's fear Five in those eyes. There's fear in those eyes. They are all struggling. If you want to know what this is like, obviously it's illegal, so don't tell anyone. Try this at home for a round. See if you've got what it takes to break the law. Of the of competitive video games. <laughs> competitive video games. Oh, you are right into a trap. Oh! Pissy play! Slightly removed, but my God, my word! Just give him the hammer. Just Goomba stomps him. Let him have it. Sent right to the grave, but you can see everyone nervous after this. There's an Ella shotgun right around the corner. Woo! One shot goes out, but it reveals Macy's position. Three players all on the opposite side of the FO12. Just two shots puts Macy to the floor. Brit has a pretty impossible task here. Even though they have hard breach charges to go through the wall, they're instead opting to swing for the fight. You could get the exothermic, but Brit says, no, 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 too easy for measy squeezy. Tom, he's on the back end and struggling. Now this really does, I think, actually look like console siege at this point from an entirely PC biased standing. I just, we're all just sitting still, ooh. Stop. There's actually pretty, actually pretty nice recoil control with this non-dominant hand, if I'm being honest. He's doing his best, Tom. That's why they call him. Well, Wait, th is this cheating? Can he just Ooh. melee? He ah! can just melee! He's in! He was... <laughs> it exactly. took him a while! There goes Brit! Rip, he's able to play that close corner. They're gonna have to double swing, double peek. You're wondering, you're calling and screaming. Where is Zig? There he is! Is that all they've written? Do we have anything else? So oh, it is devastation. It is commiserations. It is heartbreaking defeat for some of you. But for us, for us, Team World, we stand tall, baby. You might have thought we were biased before. Well, now that Dev Marta is the greatest player of all time. Of all time. No contest, oh, no argument.
Grotesque who? Fuming Kamikaze with who? Each other. I think this is a disband at the end of this Team Brazil. They're in pieces, they're apologetic, and they're putting all of the blame onto the team captain, Raza. The room is booing the poor man, and Pisney is hidden. He doesn't want to, oh, he's not, he's, he's fine to deal with it. And the room is cheering. A good yeah. effort, a good maybe, effort. Maybe we've learned along the way, we can be friends with the Brazilian dominance of C. I mean, is it unfair that they There's have... another, oh! If James F. Martha Stewart, known as the bad boy of Seed, can win over this crowd and his icy heart can thaw and grow three uh, times. Listen, listen, as it, hold on, hold on. As an American, I can say that even though Brazil has been dominant this entire year, I must admit, Team Brazil put up one hell of a fight. And as Dev Marta has just shown, we can be friends and coexist. Now, let's listen in with the breakdown of Ian. Chaos that is going on here. I was coming down with a few moments to spare. Did you win? Oh, hell yeah, we won. <laughs> <laughs> team Brit, Team World, coming out here and shocking the world by doing it big in Brazil. Dev, you were cooking on gas. What did you eat for breakfast this morning? No breakfast. No breakfast, nothing. Just raw passion, just like the Brazilian fans. O cara nem tomou café da manhã, ele só veio aqui com a paixão igual a gente. O cara veio no veneno que deu resultado, né? I've got to ask. You really won them over here, because at first, they were all against you then. But now listen, these Brazilians love you. There's a secret to all that. Brazil is the best region in the world! So of course they win me over! <laughs> tá dizendo que o Brasil é a melhor região do mundo, por isso que tá assim, ó. <laughs> Let's have a quick word with Britt. Congratulations on a phenomenal performance here at SI. Britt, everybody was back in the Brazilians here. You came out strong with this team. We took the gloves off. They started it first and uh, we just finished it. So, GG's. Eles se provocaram, né? O Hazard queria amassar e aí tiveram que mereceram, né? So, I've got to ask. We're now looking ahead to a grand final. You are here in attendance. You are here as a, a neutral fan, I imagine. I'm not quite sure yet. I'm going to find out. For all these fans here, and let's just sum it up first before we ask, who do you want to win? Who do you think will win? Faze or W7M? Let's go, Faze. I dribbled them, I dribbled them. They thought they were going to say W7M first. But go on. I believe W7M is going to take this all the way. W7M? Great, before I let you go, what do you think of Brazil? Is this your first time here? How much are you enjoying Sao Paulo? I think Sao Paulo is the most beautiful city I've ever been to. I'm grateful to be here, and thank you so much for being so welcoming, Brazil. Olha, diz que Sao Paulo é a cidade mais bonita que ela já esteve, e agradeceu por recebê-la tão bem aqui. Thank you for the compliment. Thank you very much. We're going to let you go enjoy yourself, Britain, and celebrate a big win. Should we bring on Haza into the house? A máquina. Come on in. Good morning, beleza? Good morning, o inglês tá como? Tá 100% afinado, né? 100% good. O que que aconteceu ali, pai? Que tá, deu uma zerada ali, tá, bugou o negócio do jogo? Eu vou falar que foi uma das minhas piores partidas da minha vida, pô. Nunca joguei mal, falei muito, joguei pouco. Essa que é a realidade, tá? Falei que eu ia esmagar, mas pipoquei federal mesmo. Joguei mal pra cacete. It, said it was one of the worst uh, matches in his entire career. Oh, what? How do you come back from this losing on in your home country? You can't play in casa. É, é uma sensação indescritível, né? Nesse momento, sei lá, só tristeza mesmo. It doesn't have words. <laughs> As I've got to ask you, I mean, this this crowd absolutely loves you. What do you want to say to all of your supporters out here in Sao Paulo? In Portuguese? Yeah. Ah, eu só queria dizer, agradecer, pô. Pô, pela Ubisoft tá trazendo esse Six Invitation para toda essa galera aqui que merece, né? Já foi anos e anos aguardando a época de pandemia. Quando eu comecei a fazer live, eu esperava um momento desse e chegou, né? Finalmente chegou e eu acredito que em breve vai ter mais, porque, pô, isso aqui é sensacional, pô. É merece, merece, né? É a né? história do Cid, em oito anos, nove anos. É surreal, pô. He's so happy to be here and uh, we were waiting for this moment. So he thanks Ubisoft to bring 
That six invitation to Brazilian, he waits for another one in the future. W7M of Faze Clan. For me, W7M, for sure. Tá todo mundo com os touros, hein? Hmm. How do I say bald Hasa? Hasa careca. Hasa careca! <laughs> Uma salva de palmas. Isso aí não é legal, né, pô? Quem sabe um dia eu meto um carequinha, mas acho que ainda não é o momento, não. Vamos aguardar, né? Quem sabe em breve, né? He's gonna shave his hair in the future. Not now. Listen. Not now. Another time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Guys, we're gonna cross over now to an amazing piece of content because there's one thing famous about Brazil as well as the esports, and it is, of course, soccer. And our grand finalists had a kickabout. Falou. Oi! Falta só isso aqui, viado. Ih, meu porra! Bora, pô! Dinamite, dinamite, dinamite. Zizu! Penta. Mask. Benja Mata. A segunda opção. No, I'm gonna fucking miss. I already know. Fabian. Bingo. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, that was close. That was actually good. Holy shit. So did a boy from Glasgow. <laughs> It's time. It's actually time. Holy shit. Six. Six. No, Ben. I just got a dumb question. With the converse. The crooks. Canadian. I don't know, man. Oh, it's Good job, guys. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Six Invitational. What a show match, and many excuses, at least coming from me, in a 1v1 that, let's be fair, I will blame it on Kino. Who the hell binds space? 
for sprint? Are you trying to throw? That explains the shield play. Maybe he was trying to sabotage you. I mean, you know, he was part of Team Brazil, but I That's mean, true. we were really hoping on you keeping up our hopes for Team EU, and it didn't really work out the way we wanted to. So we're, you're going to have two options here. You're either going to have to tweet your excuses, like you said, or or like maybe an apology video with tears, like everyone else does. Look, I know I'm born, I'm, I come from the Middle East, but I've ingrained myself in EU, right? I've watched so many teams like Wolves. You know, I've watched, I've seen Mowgli on Twitter. I've seen Leon Gids on Twitter. Spoit also moved to NA. I know how to make excuses, don't worry about <laughs> it. The other thing it was actually Tom that binded uh, on space. It was his station at first, no? It was his binds. Yeah, it was yeah, his so, bind. it was, so it wasn't Kino then. Kino didn't troll. I think it was Tom. Was it Tom? Yeah. You and know what? <laughs> Whatever. Both of them. They're both throwing. But we won at the end. That's what matters. Team World, let's go. There was so much subbing in that I just forgot who was playing for who. And like at some point, it was showing Tom, uh, Tom J. Sherlock quad kill. And I was like, oh, yeah, he'll probably take a picture of this. So it'll last longer, but he didn't actually get the quad kill himself. Look, Devmarta clutched. You, uh, OK, I, I underestimated Devmarta so much. <laughs> First of all, him 1v3, okay, in, in, in the gameplay, but also show a show star, like the sunglasses, like him growing, like calling everyone, fucking screaming, all of this. Crazy, crazy. He is such a theater kid through and through, and I love him for it. I've had a desks, content beast. Uh, genuinely, since since 2019, I've had de desks with this man, and he is a, uh, a definite man for this sort of show business kind of thing. You'll see some replays popping up as we talk all about it. Again, a victory, but it's a it's a it's a victory that rings a bit hollow. You know, it's a bit tough to, to stomach because the only way the rest of the world could get a win is in a show match. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit sad, but hey, at this point, I guess we should take whatever we can take considering we're not playing the grand final today. But this show match had so much entertainment. That 1v1 that we saw with the clash as well, and we yeah. got a turtle coming out from Pisty. I was absolutely loving that. It was amazing to see that kind of stuff. And if, uh, you'd like to see it in your rank games on a show match on a main stage in front of all these people. Wow. You know, I've in all my years in this game, I've never been on stage for a show match. Really? I was always deemed too bad to be on there. Well, they were right. Then it... <laughs> How did you find it? They put Intero on there. Are you kidding me? The line kind of gets did, blurry. Did Intero lose a 1v1 with a knife? He Look, didn't? he no. was playing with kicks. It's unfair. Okay, all right. That kind of gives you a big advantage okay. on the game. Okay. How did you find it? Was it fun or did you feel... It was. Stress? I couldn't hear anything. I was focused. <laughs> Excuse us. Excuse number one. There we go. <laughs> hey, the Battle of the Coppers. That's what we <laughs> called it. At least we got a good show out of it, right? We both walked out. I felt like I was just, you know, strutting into the arena. So, you know what's crazy? Myself. You've got more playing stage experience than me in this past year. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you played on stage? Well, not that many times, but I've actually managed to do it in, in a few major. Really major, I managed to go on stage. But, True. you know, first rounded in the playoffs in quarters. Fair enough, but at that point, EU was already kind of dominating everything in Raleigh, so... Yeah, it was forced. It was Pasha, actually. It was Pasha, Pasha who was now... Us really hard. Now that we know in Virtus Pro how things change, but they stay the same. We were talking about Pasha yesterday, how, yeah, he's been around forever, actually. He's not just some rookie. Nope. And uh, speaking of rookies, I think we... Look, uh, can we get camera, camera two on here? Seth, super, my friend, you know how much I love you. But they're, come on, you can't just claim Rookie of the Year after one time. Come on. Better give and take, my dude. Let's be honest, Reeves definitely deserved that. Yeah, yeah. I think he did. Like, no, honestly, but... statistically speaking, he deserved it. First, that's the first thing. The second thing is coming where he's coming from, like from his region, what Bleed has done, what they have achieved throughout the year, not only at Six Invitational. For all of this, he deserved it. I feel like this might be one of the SIs where we had the most amount of rookie players, players that had never attended an SI before that. I feel there was even one matchup, I'm not sure. We had like six or seven people that have never played an SI before. That is so exciting. I'm really happy to see that's kind of like a new generation Teach players coming in. You know, one thing that I really like here in Brazil is all of us trying to learn a bit of Portuguese. Let's be honest, we're all kind of bad at it. Yeah. But one person who's tried better than all of us is not just Carter, because Lynx has <laughs> tried a lot and he saved our asses a few times here. But it's Ian Chambers. He actually tried to learn it on a content piece. So take a look at it. So Ian, this is Brazil. A little bit hot. A little bit? Yeah, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Are you ready to learn the real Portuguese? Maria. One word, vamos. <laughs>
Ó, a gente tá numa missão aqui de ensinar português das ruas pro Ian. O que, que você gostaria de ensinar pra ele? Show G2. Show de dois. Show de dois. Você me? Show de dois. É vai de tio. Não, eu não vou dizer nada. Vai, 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 vai. We are ready, set. Uh, show by. Show yeah. Yeah, by. <laughs> <risos> Show W7M! Não, 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 não! não. Oi! Como está isso? Muito bem, e você? Como que você está? Você tem uma mensagem para sua mãe? Sim, eu tenho uma mensagem. Vamos lá! Mãe, estou aqui! She is, uh, uh... Não, você pode falar em português com ele, ele sabe! Ah, você fala em Ah, ok! Minha mãe acompanha o cenário competitivo da RC junto comigo. Que resenha! Eu amo! Obrigado! Vai, Brasil! Lá Brasil. Vai Brasil. What did you say? Vai Brasil. Vai Brasil. Vai Brasil. É go Brasil. Go Brasil. Vai Brasil. Vai Brasil. Yeah, vai. <laughs> Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Whoa! Look at the size of this hammer. Whoa! Vamos. Vamos, vamos, vamos. No. Hey, não pode. A gente vai ser banido agora. Oh, the stage manager needs me. Hello, hello. A few moments later. Cadê o Ian? Where is Ian? Me lost my brother. You are the definition of a man to me, you know that? Gente, cadê o Ian, cara? Whenever I see you, the beard, the hair, the body. I think that you literally are siege. I worship you. You're a king to me. That was, there's a mark on it, so I was like, just get him. We were gonna eat some food together. Can we do that? Let's okay. eat. Okay. Bye, Brazil. Tá bem brasileiro já, né? He's already Brazilian. This one? Sim, bacon. No bacon. No bacon. Got it. I'm learning. learning. Clima de tensão. Tension, tension in the air. Unbelievable. Yes! É muito bom. É muito bom. É muito bom. É muito bom. Obrigado, pessoal. Do we need to pay for that burger? So now, did you learn the true Portuguese? Agora eu falo português. <risos> Agora eu falo português. Tamo junto, Ian. Foi muito da hora. Muito obrigado. Muito you obrigado. Are awesome. Muito obrigado. Is all we need to know, right? That's enough. Obrigado. I think you guys are having fun everywhere. Like, yeah. Ian is really someone else. He definitely is. Uh, I don't know how to feel. I'm definitely going to be taking that uh, roll-up piece that they put back home, and I'm never going to wash it because Ian touched it. So that's all <laughs> you need to know. But we talk about one language. I think another language that's very important, at least to all of us here, is music. And the language of music is being used at this event for the first time ever in a very special way. And yeah, I think it is indeed the first time that we've had such a theme song about SI. And I personally think it's such a hype song. I got to listen to them earlier when they were doing their rehearsals, and it sounded so amazing. Everybody's listened to the song that plays at the start of the day, right? Yeah, no, actually, I was listening to it. We had a sneak peek at it before SI. And I didn't understand that it was still not public, so I went on Spotify and tried to look at it. <laughs> and I was so disappointed, and I was like, why? Why, why don't I have it? I'm sad now. I'm no, but I will be able but to it hear is, it now. They actually did add it on Spotify and other streaming services also. Yeah. As of a few days ago, I believe, on a Wednesday or Thursday, they added it so you guys can go and listen to it on repeat as we are alongside the Six Invitational theme that we've known since 2018. We stand as one. We've all been here. We're loving every part of it. And we have a whole band on stage. I think a few of us are jealous. They want to be up there playing too. I, I want to play the drums. I actually played the drums. So when I saw the drums, I was like, oh, I, I might go there. I think, I think it's taken already. I know this is going to give us goosebumps for sure. I mean, the song is really good. It brings us so much hype. And having on the live performance, that's definitely going to give everyone in this arena goosebumps. In that arena, especially, like a rounded look. Stage. I am a metalhead. My favorite band is Iron Maiden. I love every bit of this. And a lot of us here love so many different types of music and also has a very special genre on her own for the gym especially. But this is dedicated to the metalheads out there that love Rainbow Six Siege. It's Ego to Kill Talent, Rob Damiani and Andreas Kisser from Sepultura. Every second that passes by, we are another second closer to finding out who will raise the hammer when it's all said and done, Leo. Tá chegando a hora, já já grande final, W7M fez e quem vai vencer, mas o show, a final, é só uma partezinha do que a gente preparou para vocês hoje. Now, 
First things first, our cameraman has been running around like a, a madman, so shout out to you. You're doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, double fist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, <laughs> what I love about Siege, hmm. the orchestra has been a beautiful thing and continues to be at the classic. Sixth Invitational. Yeah. Uh, absolutely classic. But the soundtrack this year is crazy, right? Do you oh, agree? It's amazing. Totally agree. You think the Brazilian fans like it? Should we of double check? Of course they love. Of course they love. It's our music. Can we ask? Can yeah. we ask? Yeah. It was made in Brazil. Galera, vocês gostaram da música do Six Invitational? Vamos fazer barulho, é bom, não é? You got your answer. All right, let's get into this. This is a moment I know a lot of you are waiting for. I know that we are too. The amazing Ego Kill talent with Andreas Kisser and Rob Damiani with We Move as One. Kill talent with Andreas Kisser and Rob Damiani with We Move as One. Vamos fazer barulho, rapaziada. A música é para vocês. O show é de vocês. Andreas, can we have a chat? Do you mind? Wow. What a performance. If that, yeah. for sure. If you weren't already excited for SI and the grand final, you must be now. Andreas, how was that for you? Amazing. 
Uh, it's good to be home, right? I'm from Sao Paulo. I came to this place to see so many concerts and stuff, and it's good to see this place here full, you know, packed. A lot of football shirts, Sao Paulo Football Club, yeah, yeah. It's good to see people participating, man. It's good to be here. Thank you. Can you answer in Portuguese? In Portuguese, agora? Sim. Como você se sente estando aqui? Pô, tá em casa, uma final brasileira. Pô, sensacional, cara. Para mim, na verdade, isso aqui é tudo muito novo, né? Não acompanho muito o jogo assim. Mas tá aqui em Ibirapuera com essa energia fantástica, esse clima de competição saudável, né? Uma galera com a camisa do tricolor paulista aí, ó, mano. É nóis, São Paulo tem <risos> Muito bom estar junto aqui com vocês. Obrigado pelo convite. Pô, prazer estar aqui com vocês. Andreas, I know that you'll be well aware, as being from Sao Paulo, that the fans here of everything from sports, traditional sports to esports, are some of the most passionate in the world. So I'm, I'm sure that you're not surprised to have had a turnout like this for such a monumental event here in Sao Paulo. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, um, usually the great bands around the world chooses Brazil or South America in general to record DVDs, live shows and stuff, because the, the, the vibes and the, the, the history, you know, we follow uh, rock and roll, heavy metal, any style of music or games for that matter, you know, with a lot of passion, you know, a lot of, uh, um, you know, talent. As you can see, you know, we have the two Brazilians in the final, which is great. And, um, you know, Brazil is a special place because we have so much different, uh, you know, cultures, mixtures of uh, uh, countries and, you know, everything. So, uh, Sepultura have that, you know, my band, you know, I'll mix the stuff from Brazil with heavy music. And so, you know, it's good to see this here in Brazil for the first time. Good to be here. Mensagem final em português para a galera que vai acompanhar. Agora em português. E vai torcer W7M ou Faze? O pouco que você entendeu, que você assistiu aqui. Cara, assim, é... É muito legal estar aqui no Brasil, ver essa mistura né, de elementos. O brasileiro tem esse talento né, de uh, aprender técnicas e tecnologias novas. O próprio Sepultura é uma, um exemplo disso, de levar a música brasileira de uma outra forma, né, através do heavy metal, da música pesada. E ver isso aqui pelo, no Brasil pela primeira vez é maravilhoso. Né? Uh, eu acho que o calor humano, né, o calor do, do fã brasileiro, não à toa muitas bandas que vêm de fora escolhem o Brasil para gravar DVDs e, e, e shows ao vivo aqui, porque o brasileiro realmente é foda. Desculpa o português aí. <risos> well, the song's amazing, you guys are amazing. One more time from Sao Paulo for this amazing band and Andreas. Obrigado, so obrigado. We hope to see you again, that's for sure. Obrigado. Obrigado. Valeu. All right. Cool. The year nine reveal. Oh my God. The year nine reveal panel is coming up in a yep. few minutes. But before we get there, mm. I think we should have some fun with this crowd. Definitely. They're all amped up after that musical performance, so let's get them even louder. What do you oh, think? Yeah. I think it's a great idea. You like it, right? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. So should we, should we do a bit of, make some noise? What do you think? Right now? Right now. In three? Yeah. Two? Yeah. One? Let's go. Vamos fazer barulho para poeira! Do you want to ask if they're ready for the year nine reveal panel? Vocês estão prontos pro ano 9? Vocês querem ver as novidades do jogo, os novos operadores, o que que vem aí? Can I... I've, I've heard good things about the I've year nine. I've heard great I, things. I, I'm just... Can I give that in spoiler? No, right? No, uh, I'm going to push you. Maybe a little one. I'm kidding. I will get fired. <laughs> oh, man. All right. One last game. Right here, when it's all said and done at the end of Sunday night, one Brazilian team will make history when this hammer is raised high in the air, center stage here at the Gimnasio do Ibirapuela. It is W7M versus FaZe Clan, an all-Brazilian buffet of a grand final. Para resumir, é campeão! É campeão! Fez o W7M, essa marreta é nossa, daqui não sai! É campeão! We're champions, bro. No matter what, we already won. That is true, and history will be made here because for the first time on home soil, a Brazilian team will win a world championship. And that is the first time ever in eSports. So every single person here, and you watching at home, you will witness history later on. So let's find out again 
who these people want to see raise the hammer. We keep talking about it being all Brazilian, so it's time to find out which way the coin will land with these fans. Are we ready? Yep. When it comes to the end of tonight, and this is raised in the air, will we be saying, face clan? Or will we be saying, W. Sachi Emmy? <laughs> All right, that is still to come, but for now, a lot of you wait forever for this. It is the year nine reveal panel right now. what the next year of Siege has in store for us. That's right, this is the year nine reveal panel. Who's excited? I'm your host, Camille Salazar Hadaway, and it is so great to be here, not only because it's warm in Brazil, but also you bring the warmth with all of your energy. We love it. Of course, joining me as well, we have creative director, Alexander Carpazes, and game director, Joshua Mills. Give them a round of applause. You're hearing everyone. All weekend long, Brazil has been loud. 10,000 people surrounding us, 360. How does it feel? I just want to say, Obrigado, Brazil! <laughs> we asked you to show up for the SI, and you did. This is unbelievable, and I can't wait to talk about year nine. I can't wait either, but first, Joshua, this is the first SI in Brazil. What does this moment mean for you? Oh, in one word, everything. This is our moment, not just our teams, but all of our fans and the pros. Like, this is what it's all about, coming together and celebrating everything that is amazing about Siege. And we can't be, oh man, we gotta get into this stuff. I'm getting too, too antsy already. I know, this is the community and this is for the community. So let's get into the overall vision of year nine. So what is the Siege team focusing on in Year 9? In Year 9, we're focusing on you, your feedback. It's the foundation of our roadmap this year. We're going to see significant quality of life changes and, of course, meta shifts that are incredible that's going to keep the game fresh and fun. All right, Alex, we have the fresh and fun, but how is it going to be fair? Right. Siege is a competitive game, and making sure that we maintain that integrity is really important to us. So anti-cheat will be a main topic for us all through year nine. Also, players have invested a lot of time into a game like Siege, and we want to be able to celebrate that. So expect season after season, more rewards and celebration for all of your progression in the game. All right, with that, I think it's time to get into the overview of the seasons in operators. How about you? What do you think? Ready? Let's get into the overview of the seasons in operators. So I'm going to drop a spoiler here if you missed it. Season one, Deimos. You can now be the villain we all need. You got to talk about it. All right. If you missed it yesterday, please tune in. 
We talked about Deimos coming into the game. He's now captured by Rainbow, but you can now actually jump into the villain's boots, play with the death marks, and as Justin said yesterday, take down operators one by one. Ooh, so menacing. Look at that mask. It's really exciting that we're able to go into this realm of trying to be a little more sinister. I love it. I love it. Uh, now let's get into territory that we haven't seen yet. Season two. That's right. Season two is when we shake things up with an operator remaster of Recruit. This is something that we all began with as Siege players. And you won't be getting just one Recruit, but two of them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just dropped the microphone there. We're getting two recruits. I have so many questions. But first, let's talk about the veteran players because they've spent the most time with the recruits. So how is this going to help them? Well, the biggest thing here is, yes, we've been with Recruit for some time. And the thing that they're bringing to the table is an ability to inject strategy into the lineups like you've never seen before. On top of that, Recruit, they got a bit of a promotion. They now have full operator status, which means they can appear in every playlist freely, just like any other operator. Additionally, you can customize them like any other operator, their uniforms, their headgear. So then what does this mean for Battle Pass? All right, because with Operator Remasters, if you own them and everybody owns Recruit, you get these two operators for free. So when you get the Battle Pass, you'll be rewarded an Operator Voucher, which means you can turn it in for any Operator you don't already have. And if you have every single Operator, you can still turn it in for cold, hard credits. Yeah! Let those R6 credits roll, but not quite yet. Because I still have a question. This is a really cool concept, the remasters. Where did this come from, and why was it important for the team to integrate it? Well, fundamentally, it's about the health of the game. We want to make sure that everything in the game is maintained and brought forward. This is game, we, we're here to stay. We're here, Alex has said it last year on the SI, we're here for the next 10 years, and we are making sure we make that investment across the board. So keeping our ops impactful through the years. And I'll also say this gives us an opportunity for our new operators as well, letting us give more time to their abilities, making sure they're unique, they're impactful, and also it affects their loadouts, making sure that we can give them even new weapons in the game. All right, TLC for operators. You gotta love that, right? Now, that seems like a lot, but we still have a couple more seasons to go. So let's get into season three. What can we expect? Season three will be a new operator coming from Greece. This is very near and dear to my heart. And so I'm very happy that we're introducing our first Greek operator into Siege. That's really cool. Uh, Joshua, I feel like you're just itching to tell us more. Yeah, I, got, I have two things. One, this operator is bringing something to the table, again, you've never before seen in Siege. And, just like the big bad Deimos, this operator will be fielding a new weapon. Ooh, a new weapon. Nice. All right, with that, let's get into Season 4. I know it's a little bit away, but you got to tell us something. Okay, so Season 4, we're bringing another remaster to the game. And this one is, I guarantee you've been asking for this for a long, long time. So I'm super happy we're finally getting to it. Uh, Joshua. You got to tell us more than that. We're not, we're not really supposed to talk about this one because it's so far in advance, but uh, this operator hails from the United States. And again, you've all been waiting for this one for a long time. OK, uh, I appreciate that. We could see it on the roadmap, the flag. But we are here in Brazil for SI. You got to tell us more. Who wants to hear more? This, All right. The crowd has spoken, Joshua. Yeah, going with the intimidation strategy, very good. Okay, so to keep my job, I'm going to say something different. On a totally unrelated note, I just want to say our cosplay community is insane. I've been incredibly inspired by the work you all have been doing. I can hear them in the crowd. And you all bring life into our characters, and you bring them to real life. And you know what? You've inspired me. I think I got to get into the game. And I'm saying with my current features, I think I, think I could cosplay Season 4's Operator Remaster. Just saying. Hmm. Okay. 
I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get you in trouble. But I think there's a few guesses out there as well. For the overview of all the seasons, what else can we expect? Of course, you can expect a new battle pass with a new theme every single season and an event to break up that middle of the season, freshen things up. All right. Well, that's sounding pretty good, but let's dive a little deeper into player protection. What does this look like in year nine? Okay, I want to make it very clear. Forosios hackers. And to translate that loosely, hackers have no space, cheaters have no space in a game like C. I mean, Alex, a lot of people are excited about that. So let's talk about what else we're going to see. So cheaters have no space in Siege, but it's also about reducing the amount of cheaters as well, right? That's right. Season one, we already announced that we're introducing new technology, machine learning, so that we can quickly and effectively make bans based off of data and statistics. This will make us a lot quicker when it comes to analyzing the complete Siege population, making sure that we identify cheaters quickly, and we're getting them out of the game as soon as possible. On top of all of this, too, Yesterday, we talked about the ranked playlist, making sure that there's new restrictions so that new players understand what they have to do in order to jump into it, but also making it tougher for cheaters and smurfers to jump into this playlist. And finally, when it comes to toxicity, this is something that we're really working on in year nine. Every single season, we'll see an update to the reputation system in the game. Sounds pretty good. I think you made it pretty clear and everyone heard cheaters are not welcomed in Siege. So how is it going to be harder for them? In season two, we'll be working on anti-toxicity first. And that is the release of the reputation system from beta. Right now, the system is in beta mode. So actual consequences aren't yet live. However, in season two, you will begin getting restrictions on the playlist that you can enter if you have a low reputation standing, meaning that you better be on your best behavior. Ooh, cheaters beware. OK, let's talk about PC. That's right. Season two, we're also introducing something on the PC side. We're making it harder for cheaters to have access to multiple accounts so that if they are banned once, they stay banned, and they can't jump into other accounts into the game. Sounding pretty good. I want to double back to the reputation system, specifically Mousetrap, as we head into season three. What are we going to see there with that? So Mousetrap is our console anti-cheat. It detects mouse and keyboard while you're supposed to be using controller. You asked for more punishments when players are detected by this, and we are delivering. Players detected by Mousetrap will be penalized by the reputation system. If you do something wrong there, you will lose access to certain playlists in the game. And is this just part one? Are we going to see more with Mousetrap? We are going to see more. This is part one, with part two coming the next season. What we'll be doing is making sure that if you are detected by Mousetrap, you will be automatically placed into the PC matchmaking pool so that the only players you're playing against are those with mouse and keyboard. If you're on console playing with a controller, that's the only person you should be playing against. Yeah, uh, you know, you don't want to have your controllers out if, uh, you know, you're not supposed to be playing with them. So beware of Mousetrap. Let's head into season four, specifically how the season will be hammering down on cheaters. Season four, we're also making a big update. We will introduce live bans. That means as soon as a cheater is detected, even in a live match, they will be removed from that match. And that match will be canceled, not affecting more MMR or 
experience and gets me into that next match quickly. What about anti-toxicity? So, communication is key in Siege. And it's okay to have friendly banter with the other team. However, what we don't promote and we don't allow is hate speech, sexism, or any kind of bigotry. So, we'll be stepping it up in the text chat. We'll be introducing automated moderation in text chat in season four to make sure your games are fun, fair, and safe. And we're seeing a little bit of that there as well. That sounds pretty cool. A lot covered for player protection. Let's get into what you want the main takeaways to be when we think of player protection in year nine. For us, when it comes to anti-cheat and anti-toxicity, this is a year-long effort. You'll see season after season, we're investing in four main priorities. One, it's going to be about hardening our security systems, making them more resilient, making them more robust, and that means reinforcing our two technologies. Mousetrap, our console anti-cheat. We'll be updating it every single season. And QB, our PC anti-cheat making sure it's robust, it can handle what it needs to, and make the game a lot safer. And finally, when it comes to game exploits, we're stepping it up as well. We're growing our team and putting dedicated resources on game exploits so that they can be identified faster and they're eliminated as soon as possible. Sounds pretty good. Now you talked about communication. How frequent are we going to see that? We've been stepping up our communication already this year. And our promise to you is that we're communicating on this subject every two months. We don't want to go radio silent on this and make sure that you always have the information you need so you understand what's going on in the game at all times. All right. Well, thank you so much for that, Alex. You know what, Joshua, I'm thinking maybe we should give Alex a little bit of a break. Covered a lot there. So let's head in to balancing. Joshua, how is balancing changing in year nine? So, we, like I said, we are dedicated to some serious meta shifts. And I want to make it very clear, Alex was very clear about our player protection. I'm going to make it very clear about this. The TDM meta is not here to stay. This is not how we intend for Siege to be played. We want the run and gun out of the game. We want to get tactical, strategic, focused, methodical play to be the center stage of everyone's ranked match, just like we're seeing up here on the stage. We're hearing a lot of players really excited for that. So how is the player perspective going to be integrated in that focus? Well, there's one more thing I'd like to mention yeah. just before I get into the player's perspective okay. on that. Because actually their perspective leads into this next point. Our, another big focus for balancing is reinforcing our attacker lineup. Divi making that divide between our attackers and our defenders far closer. Because again, strategy, teamwork, and smart play is what should be winning your rounds, not what side of the fight you're on. Yeah, and you're right. That is, a lot of players have been bringing that up. So what else is going to be brought into what you're hearing from a player? So that's the thing. We want to be able to be far more reactive to your feedback. We've actually changed a bunch of process internally so that we can do that. So we can react faster to that feedback so you're not left waiting months and months and months for changes to come in because that can be incredibly frustrating, especially because you're all playing the game every day. Now, let's talk about, um, you know, how the communications with players, because again, you mentioned they're very integral to the process. So how is communications with players going to be clarified? So one of the big things we'd like to do is clarify the vocabulary around the game. So when it comes to the game, we have three main updates. First and foremost is a straight up update. It's a single entity, something like you can see where we take a frag grenade away from an operator and give them flashbangs or something of the like. The second one, a little more complicated, is a system update. This is something you can see when we do, say, a weapon class update. This is our shotguns we did in year eight, or even the LMGs that are coming in year nine. Last but not least is the remaster. This is by far the most complicated balancing change we can possibly do in the game, but it is integral to the health of the game, so that we make sure that your investment in our operators carries forward for all the years to come. Well, that's really exciting. Uh, okay. 
Let's get into the seasons for balancing. Let's talk season one. I know a lot of you caught the season reveal, but if you didn't, here's a little refresher. Joshua, let's give it to them. Okay, yeah, so season one is coming out hot. There is a lot of stuff in season one, so you gotta check your loadouts, everyone. Uh, you all saw the ADS and attachment adjustment, right? Because I think some people want the Ash ACOG. I'm, I'm not sure, but outside of that, we also have our weapon class update. Again, this is a big thing for us, where we go in and we make sure every weapon in the game is working and versatile and has its role. So the LMGs are coming back out to play. Last but not least, the revamped shield mechanics. This is a huge one for us. I'm a little hit of the game here, but it's a huge one for us because of the complexity of what it brings to the game. It gives that defensive stance that we see where you can have more control and definitely move around the field. Now, some of the features, you can jump through full health barricades. You can activate your gadgets behind the shield, like a cluster charge, a breach charge, or maybe later this year, an exothermic charge. Ooh, sounds good. Okay, um, I want to talk about reinforcing attacker lineup because you mentioned that. Um, you know that everyone's interested in that. How is that going to look throughout year nine? Okay, so as we talk about reinforcing our attackers, it means giving them the armory they need, the tools they need to be able to take the fight that they have to do. The second side of it is going across the line over to those defenders and dealing with some powerhouses over there. So in season one, Azami will be receiving an update. A zombie's Kiba barriers will no longer, will now have a durability on them, which means depending on the weapon caliber you're using, you'll be able to knock them down faster or slower. Additionally, this bring, is one of the first steps because we're actually going to be bringing something else in Season 2. Our lovely spooky boy Fenrir will receive his first update. This will be removing the bulletproof off the FNAT entirely, also removing an FNAT from his loadout and a code. Lastly, Soulless. I got to move fast here. Solus will be receiving two updates. Season two, she'll be receiving the first update, which will make this the case. Her gadget will no longer be able to be used during prep phase. Additionally, ad additionally, the range of her gadget will be reduced and the battery will drain faster. Now this is part one. Part two will come in season three and it'll bring a deeper system change, but it takes more time for that and that's why it's in season three. We have an additional operator being adjusted in season three, which is Dokabi. We're attacking some of the frustration around her gadget. I mean, I love how you just laid it all down there uh, with all the operators. It's so exciting. There was a lot to you know, pack in there, but we have to also talk about season four. I know it's a little bit away, but what is the balancing focus heading into the end of the year? So the biggest thing about season four is making sure we leave space and time to the react to the needs of the community. There is a lot of stuff coming online in season one. And we want to make sure that we can be there for you as we experience this all together and we move forward together. Of course, there'll be multiple new updates throughout the seasons. Lots of things we didn't cover here. So you can stay tuned to all of that as well. And what else should we keep in mind uh, heading into year nine for balancing? Well, fundamentally, we know where we want to take this game and we want to be the best damn tactical shooter on the planet, period. Reckless play will not be rewarded. Methodical team-based strategy will, and that is our goal. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Joshua. I'll give both of you a break now, because that all sounded really great. And you know what sounds great as well? The fact that, you know, Siege is up-leveling the competition. No, I'm not talking about SI, but a new feature that is coming to the game in year nine. For more on that, here's live content director, Christopher Budgen. We will be finalizing the maps within Quick Match 2.0, bringing the entire map roster to Quick Match. Standard will be getting new filtering so you can choose between ranked, all maps, or only the non-ranked maps as well. Within Ranked, we're bringing exclusive cosmetics that you can earn every season. Siege Cup is a brand new time-gated tournament that happens every two weeks. Participation within the Siege Cup provides specific rewards, so make sure you grab your friends, squad up, register your team, and we all know that feeling. At the end of the match, when your heart is pumping, you just need to close it out, there's gonna be no other feeling like the Siege Cup.
and there is no other feeling than knowing that the Siege Cup is here. Alex, I don't think anyone saw that coming. The Battle Cup is back. It is now Siege Cup, and this time we mean it. This is the best way to experience Siege with a full stack of your teammates going up to the top of the tournament and winning those exclusive prizes. Gonna brush up on your skills there. But you know what? Let's get a little cozy and head into player comfort and long-term progression. What is the player comfort and long-term progression philosophy in your nine? Ultimately, it stems from giving our players many different quality of life upgrades, making sure you have full control over your experience, and giving you more tools to take your skills to the next level. And what else does this mean for players? This also means that we are invested in rewarding players' dedication in Siege. You pour hundreds of hours into the game, and we want to return the favor. So we want to make sure that you have that long-term progression to always look forward to. Okay, with that, let's head into Season 1 updates for player comfort and long-term progression. Uh, we already saw a bit of that in the Season 1 reveal, but how is it really setting the tone in Season 1? So Season 1, we start immediately with the locker that I know a lot of players have been asking for. The ability to favorite your gear, the ability to look at what you just unlocked, all of this in one place, we're delivering Season 1. Yeah, I love the locker. I, I like keeping organized, and I think a lot of players do too, so the locker's going to come in handy for that. But on top of the locker, we saw updates to movement. Yeah, so we're going through and making sure all our systems are getting that kind of health thing that we talked about with our operators, making sure that the clunkiness is removed and you have that real sense of flow. So we're looking at Repel, an iconic feature of Siege, and that entry and exit, making sure it's super smooth and feels great. It's a game feel thing. It's very hard to describe or even see in a video, but once your hands are on it, it you'll know what we're talking about. Got to get your hands on it. Uh, let's talk about gadgets. What's happening there? Okay, so we have two big things coming for the gadgets. One is improved gadget pickup. So the idea of being able to pick up a gadget once you've placed it, relocate it within the map. Number two is projectile trajectory pre-visualization. And that is the last time I'm saying that. It's called pre-vis. <laughs> so what this means is giving you full control of where your gadgets go. Again, take your skills to the next level, but at the same time, if you're already there and you don't need it, you can turn it off. I'm probably going to have it on just so I could really tighten my skills there with that. Uh, let's head in to season two for player comfort because a huge part of how you experience gaming, you're comfortable with playing the game, is knowing how you can improve and how you're performing. So how is season two going to help players on this front? We are completely revamping the after action report. This is the system where you commend your players and understand how you performed. After that, you'll see an updated screen where you can see all of your progression, all of your stats, and everything you care about in one single place, and then quickly jump into that next match. Do you have anything else to add for Season 2? Well, we're extending Previs into Season 2 as well, and we're adding it to our drones. This gives you all the control you need to be able to get your drones wherever you need to get them. At the end of the day, it's about making sure that you can get the intel you need and drone survivability. Wait, there's more. Oh. Yeah, so Previs, as I said, started in season one, season two, and we're actually bringing it right into season three. And what does that mean? It means bringing it to our deployable gadgets. So deployable shield, new jammers, those sort of things. Being able to get them set the first time right. Anything else for season three since you already jumped the gun there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a lot of us maybe go on our phone when we're waiting for our match and ranked or whatnot, but wouldn't it be nice just to jump into the shooting range? You can do that now. So in season three, you'll be able to load into the shooting range whenever you're waiting for your matches. And this includes the R6 Cup. Additionally, it seems a bunch of you like to 1v1. So we're adding it as a preset into our custom games. 
That's pretty cool. I will not be one being one you because you spent a lot of time with the game, but give me some time to brush up my skills and maybe we'll talk. You mentioned rewards off the top. Are we going to see that come into play here? Absolutely. Season three is a big feature that we call badges. This is where you'll be able to earn the achievements and challenges and equip those badges as a badge of honor so that you can show them off with all of your friends. And on top of that, we're creating a new home for badges too, which is the career page. The career page is where you can see your stats, see how your last matches went, and customize which badges you equip on your profile. That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, I got to talk about matchmaking as we head into season four. How is matchmaking evolving? So in season four, we're introducing something that we call dynamic matchmaking. This is making sure we have more flexible matchmaking for players in lower population zones or in places that when you're playing and it's not peak uh, siege time, you're still getting a fair match. So if you're in Australia playing at like five o'clock in the morning, you're still getting a balanced and fair matchmaking experience. Making a lot of Aussies happy. <laughs> Let's talk about crossplay. What's coming in season four? Crossplay is the final update that we're bringing to the table, letting console players play with PC friends. It should be very important. We'll take a moment to celebrate this. But it's very important to note that this is a one-way street. PC players will not be allowed to play with console matchmaking. So now, with this set, doesn't matter what platform you're on, what console you're playing on, with Siege, you can always play with your friends. That's pretty cool. Who's excited for that one? Yeah, you heard the noise. Anything else to cap off player protection? When it comes to or player protection. Player comfort, sorry. Player comfort, yeah. <laughs> this is really about what you care about, what the community cares about, the quality of life improvements, everything that's rewarding. Expect us to expand on this and to grow this on the roadmap as we go along in the year based on your feedback. All right, well, thank you for that, for player comfort and long-term progression. Now, for some of you, you may be looking to maybe trade in some of your items for some cold, hard R6 credits, or maybe you're looking for some sweet throwbacks. Well, guess what? The Marketplace is where you could do all of that. And to tell us more on what the Marketplace will look like in year nine, here is Business Strategy Director, Mohammed Ben Hanada. Right now, we're aiming to launch the feature in season two. The philosophy behind the Marketplace is that we want to make sure that the feature is polished, functional, and as secure as possible. So this means that the beta is going to be running up until we feel that the feature is up to your standard and up to our standards. So for you, this means that you can still sign in through the QR code or through our website. And you can still give us your feedback in order to build this platform together. And be sure to register for the Marketplace to get in on all that cool stuff. All right, now sometimes you hear training and onboarding, and you're thinking new players, but guess what? Year nine is bringing some cool things for veteran players as well. And back again to tell us about this feature is live content director, Christopher Budgen. This year, we really want to focus on following up on our promise to bring the best training tools to Siege. That's why we're really going to be focusing on all of the players, making sure they have the training tools they need to be able to execute whatever strategy they intend. We're really happy with the reception of Versus AI Playlist. And that's why we want to follow it up strong in Season 1 with five new maps, new Defender AIs, and being able to play more attackers as well. And we're not stopping there. We're bringing new content in Season 2 and Season 3 as well. On top of that, we're also delivering the AI attacking playlist. That means for the first time, you'll be able to play defense and attack in an AI match. Expect AI attackers to drone, to clear roamers, and plant on site. We think this will be a great way to bring your friends into Siege. We know that map knowledge is really important, 
And that is why we're bringing new maps in season one, but also season two and season three as well. Map knowledge isn't the only skill you need to become a champion. And while the shooting range is a great place to warm up your aim, it's not the same as navigating through maps and clearing targets. That's why we're bringing a big update to Target Drill, where you can play for over 60 minutes with targets in every room. We have a lot of quality of life improvements coming in this update also. You can turn on headshots only, have pre-made destruction, or even turn on a mini HUD. We're also bringing damage reporting. So as you clear a room, you can see how much damage you've taken, and then you can actually know whether or not you cleared that room efficiently or not. In season three, we're bringing the drone drill to the map training playlist. Intel is king, and we know that finding a good hiding spot could be the difference between a win and a loss. Also in Season 3, we have a new cover mode coming to the aiming lane within the shooting range. It's a great opportunity to test with a smaller target as the target dummy takes position behind cover. In Year 9, we're not just building onboarding tools, but rather the future of training to help our current players improve their skills to perform at their best. Quite a bit there for veteran players as well. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and Christopher said it really well when it comes to something like target drill we've been working with veteran players making sure that they can clear floor after floor after floor and that they get the best practice possible before they jumped into a ranked match and of course this is the best time to jump into siege as well with your friends when we bring the new versus ai online with attackers as well now we are here at si so, I mean, it only feels right to check in to what the competitive scene of Siege will look like in year nine. For more on Siege Esports, here is Esports Director Maxime Vial. We have Associate Director Esports Live Events and Broadcast Nelson Garcia and Blast Executive Director Christina Martel. Just a few weeks ago, we have announced some of the changes coming to Blast R6 in Season 2024 and revealed the revamped point system to qualify to the 6th Invitational, which now puts more emphasis on team's results at the Majors. And today, I'm happy to reveal one more key change. This season, we are bringing back the 6th Invitational's last chance qualifiers. We will provide more details on their formats later this year. The first Major of Season 2024 will be hosted in Manchester. We're excited to host the very first major for Siege in the UK, and what better city than Manchester, where we know the crowd will create an unforgettable atmosphere for the teams up on stage. In November, we will head to Montreal, home of the Rainbow Six Siege production team. Montreal holds a special place in our hearts, and we're excited to be back. After Sao Paulo this year, we will explore fresh location in 2025. The Six Invitational will travel to the United States. Normally, this is when we drop the mic, but in early 2026, the 6th Invitational will continue traveling. It is time to spread the love to Europe. We have so many amazing local communities across Europe. So deciding where to go was not easy. But guess what? I'm happy to announce that in 2026, the 6th Invitational will be host on Ubisoft home turf in France. Can't wait to see you all there and make it history. There is a lot that we covered in this panel, so let's bring up the roadmap as a refresher. Look at all that stuff. A lot of things people are excited about. This is a big year for us with a lot of new features that honor the past, but also prepare us for the future. Yeah, yeah there's a ton coming in, and it is all inspired by you. So we're really excited to bring this year to you. Now, before we go, I can't believe the panel's coming to an end already because you all have been so great. But I have to ask, what is the lasting impression you want the community to be left with heading into year nine? Joshua, let's start with you. I, I think the biggest thing is that you're heard, that we are building this game together, we've committed to doing that, and we want to listen to your feedback, and it is not only welcome, but actively encouraged. So please keep giving us your feedback because this is our collective game. And as Alex said, it's a great time to get into the game. Lots of new players are joining us and the passion here in Brazil, oh my gosh, 
you will send ripples through this game for years to come. So again, thank you to everyone, and it's been amazing. Alex? I just want to echo what Josh said. I want to thank the entire community for all of the passion you've brought to the game. It inspires us. I also want to thank the team that works on Rainbow Six Siege as well. They pour their hearts and soul into this game, and we appreciate it. Also, I want to thank Blast for putting on the SI, hosting it in Brazil, and for all of you to show up and make it such a special moment. Year nine is an important year for us, and it sets the stage for an important milestone. At the end of year nine, we'll be moving into our 10th year of Siege. That's a huge milestone. We're already working hard on that next step for Siege. And while we can't say anything today, I will say that this brings Siege into the future bigger and better than ever. So I want to say again, thank you so much for making this the best game in the world. I want to thank both of you for coming here and presenting everything you and the team have been working on. We really do appreciate that. And I'm really excited to get into year nine, which a reminder, year nine, season one hits the test server tomorrow. So you could try it out. Before we go, I also want to thank everyone that is watching at home. Obrigada, Brazil! It is so great to be a part of this passionate community. We love these reveals, and we can't wait to see you again. But for now, we have SI to continue. We have the live orchestra and the live finals coming up, so stay tuned. Salve rapaziada, eu sou o Herd, sou entre Fregger da W7M, capitão da Line também. Sou um cara que ajuda bastante nas táticas, junto com o meu coach que é o Igor, é, o Abreu também que é meu analista e o Pox, o Felipe Pox, que é o IGL do time. A gente costuma cuidar dessa parte tática aí do time. Dentro do time também a gente tem um suporte que é o Nade, e pra mim é um dos melhores atualmente no cenário. Tanto em skill individual, quanto em ser um cara que ajuda no clima do time e tudo mais. Pô, o Casey, que ano passado foi o melhor jogador de R6 do Brasil. Uma skill bruta absurda. É, pra mim, o melhor jogador do mundo há tempos. E o 9-2, cara, que é tipo a peça que tem que ter em qualquer time, que é o cara brincalhão, o cara que deixa o time num clima suave. Bota o cabelo, sua criança! E pra mim também o melhor sup 2 que tem no mundo atualmente. É, ele faz o, a função dele ali como ninguém faz no mundo. Rapaziada, a gente já ganhou dois mesmo, acabamos de ganhar um aqui em Atlanta. Mas a gente quer a marreta, a gente vai em busca dela. Porque não tá bom, a gente quer mais. A gente é um time que trabalha muito e eu acho que isso é posto em prática nos campeonatos e tem dado resultado. E, bom, é isso. A WC, isso é a WCTM. Meu nome é Jaime Pereira Ramos Jr., mais conhecido como Cyber dentro do jogo Rainbow Six. Jogo pela FaZe Clan. Now, what is the idea for FaZe to try and mix things up? Oh, what a shot there from Cyber! 
Major Suécia, eu quebrei meu, quebrei o recorde né, de kills que teve em campeonato de Major. No próximo campeonato que a gente jogou, que foi o Major Berlin, a gente, eu quebrei novamente meu recorde, mas não fui campeão. O estilo de jogo é muito agressivo, então eu sou um jogador que pensa em muitas possibilidades ao momento. Tem o Vita King, né, que é o nosso IGL, ele é um jogador que é, direciona a gente onde ele precisa. Essa parte assim ele faz muito bem, então acho que ele meio que nasceu para essa parte de fazer essa parte de GL assim. Tem um Souza, né, que tá há muito tempo comigo, é um jogador que é muito calmo. Ele consegue pensar muito sobre o jogo também, ele consegue trazer muitos rounds importantes pra gente, que a gente tá perdendo. Ele é um jogador muito habilidoso nessa parte. O KDS é uma pessoa que fica, fica parado, não faz muita coisa assim fora do, do comum. KDS is looking for him and the opening kill is for FaZe. Acho que essa parte sim é uma parte mais forte dele, assim, de ser um jogador também que pensa bastante dentro do jogo e sabe a hora de executar alguma coisa. O Range é um jogador que é muito bom também, ele tem uma parte de skill muito boa também, acho que todo jogador nosso time é muito bom em questão de skill. Handy from above. Is able to deny, and that means there is no chance to ever be clutch this. Ele consegue fazer bastante round que a gente está perdendo ali de uma forma é, drástica. Acho que o Civitation, todos os jogadores querem ganhar, né? Acho que cada um quer se provar ali dentro do, do campeonato. E eu acho que todos os jogadores pensam assim que é o maior campeonato assim para si, né? Que é, é, o, é o troféu mais antigo que tem no jogo, então acho que é o que todo mundo quer ganhar. O time, esse é o time entendo não, que eu tenho que é mais unido dentro de jogo e fora. É um time muito agressivo quando precisa. Sabe que o nosso estilo de jogo é totalmente diferente do que eles jogam com. Então acho que a galera assim, tem um pouco de medo de jogar contra a gente nessa parte. Welcome back everybody to Six Invitational 2024. It's the one we've all been waiting for. It took two weeks, but we're finally here. The grand final, best of five between the two best teams in the world. No two ways around it. Brazil is the best. We've got the best, the cream of the crop. And nobody does it better. W7M versus FaZe Clan, a best of five grand final. And every single map is an unlimited overtime activated map. And so we're gonna be here All goddamn night. It's gonna be the best siege you're gonna ever see here live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Let's see what our two squads have to say about one another.
So playing the grand finals is amazing because uh, the whole family of the group is here in the crown of Brazil. The weakness of Derby 7, I think, is playing against FaZe because every time they play against us, they lose. It's been always a dream of mine to be in the grand finals of a Six Invitational, to be in front of our home crowd, uh, to be in front of my family, my friends. It's just amazing. I think FaZe Clan is a very complete team, but I think their main weakness right now uh, is that they don't perform uh, like they do in front of the crowd. Aí, rapaziada, fez os últimos confrontos aí não foram muito bons pra gente, mas é, acho que a gente sabe agora como enfrentar vocês e vocês vão chocar aí em frente da, da rapaziada da arena e vai dar nós. E aí, Pox, você já perdeu duas vezes pra mim esse ano e vai perder a terceira aí. Tamo junto. We are breaking records here at the Invitational. The first time in the history of esports and Brazilian esports that a Brazilian team will leave a Brazilian event with the trophy. It has never happened. And all the wonderful esports that we have in the world, this will be the first time. And we're so honored here that Rainbow Six gets to claim that very first title. But there's also other things on the line. There is, of course, our big trophy, the hammer to lift at the end. Tons of money and a massive 10,000 fan filled arena absolutely sold out in Gimnasio de Idra Poeira. And the biggest story of them all, there are two brothers, two siblings, and the fact that they play on opposite teams in W7M and FaZe Clan is massive. And please help us with the brother Diva. <laughs> we need to find who wrote the script for this because this storyline is absolutely amazing. We've got two twin brothers playing on opposite teams against each other. And I believe this is the very first time in esports that this has happened. Sure, we've had brothers, but not twin brothers, and not at this stake either. Playing against each other for a chance at their very first world championship. We see a head-to-head -head here, both playing more supportive operators, but only one gets to take that world championship home. Only one, and there's, of course, a lot of heat between these two teams, because let's just say that Brazil wants to prove that it's the best in more ways than one for them. I mean, yeah, they have been so dominant the last year, even longer than that. Now they finally want their dynasty. That's what they want. And they have a chance to take that. There's one opponent in their way, FaZe, and they could play a major villain role here as well. Imagine, they upset them, they take away that dynasty. Sure, Brazil is still dominant, but the dynasty, it's not just there. That one specific team, W7M, are looking for the trophy for the hammer lift here in Sao Paulo on home turf. But what are these two teams fielding? What can we expect, Fresh? Well, the statistics don't back up that dynasty story if we add on to it. We look at head-to-head -head graphic between these two teams. The last two times these teams have played each other within this, well, within this season, FaZe have won both times. In fact, the last time FaZe lost to W7M was in 2022. It has been almost two years since W7M tasted victory over FaZe, so the history doesn't add up. And here, you at least, as if you're a W7M, and if you're a W7M fan that is watching from home, you have this kind of atmosphere that, hey, at least the fans in Brazil are supporting our team. But it's kind of split in the arena, and that's something we're going to talk about because it is an extra layer that you cannot really quantify and objectively put into numbers as we often like to do here on the desk. But let's start off with our teams. First up, Faceplant are up on the chopping block, and it is their first time at the SI Finals. Yes, indeed. They have never played an SI Final before. They have played many international tournaments, and the last time they've won something was at that Sweden Major in 2021. And as we mentioned, they played many international tournaments after. Specifically, this year, they played both those majors, made it to main stage on both of them, but every single time they got there, they got knocked out by a team from their own region. Guess who they're playing against today? A team from their own region. And I think the one big thing is that FaZe had to reinvent themselves, right? After that Yavla Major win, the, the kind of core that was in that Yavla Major win, obviously Cameraman moved on, a few other players moved on. However, they've developed a new team, and that new team has got a lot of brotherhood, a lot of trust in each other, that whenever they're playing, 
They know exactly what they're doing. Even if it gets a little bit funky, even if it gets a little bit scary, a little bit hairy, they trust that they can find their way through it between every single player on that roster. And brotherhood and trust outside of the game breeds cohesion in it, Fabian. Yeah, I've actually selected three players that I want to highlight for this game. And it's not because of, well, them being flex players in a way that the traditional flex role is. The thing with face and how they have gotten themselves to this position, which is a grand final, is just the fluidity. They are like liquid around their opponents. If they see something they don't want to go through, they'll rotate, they'll find another solution, they'll find another way. They might rotate one time, they might rotate two times, they might rotate the third time. They will always find their way around their opponents, and the way they play is just so, so impressive. I mean, you mentioned three players on the side of face, but there's one more that we have to mention as well. One that is particularly scary on that entry part. Cyber has been absolutely popping off. When it comes to those entry engagements on this tournament, he's going to be a really scary factor for W7M. Paul Vitzking, we've not mentioned him. He's the last <laughs> one. And I will say, he does have his main character moments from time to time. Well, 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 that is a lot stacked against W7M, so let's talk about them. Put them up on the screen for everybody, because here, that crowd buff, is not something that we can neglect then. It's such an important thing for W7M, right? Because they played both major grand finals, but every single time that they got there, they had the crowd against them. And I will say, this tournament started maybe a little bit shaky for them, but as soon as they made it on that main stage, had the crowd behind them, they were absolutely thriving off of it. And I think they basically, it's the energy, right? The energy of the two crowds being against them in Copenhagen and Atlanta, they fed off that. The energy of the crowds being with them, especially yesterday in that game against Vertus Pro, they feed off that. And particularly, there's one player that I want to highlight from that, which is JV92. He just feeds off everything, and he has this big moment every single event where he pulls off a huge clutch and he just stands up with his arms out. Well, you talk cohesion on FaZe Clan. What does W7M bring playstyle wise, Fabian? I mean, it's funny because both teams are Brazilian. They have a similar idea on how to start a round, where they spread out a lot, and they try to find gaps everywhere. The difference between them, however, is that when W7M run up to an obstacle, they don't rotate away from it. They don't shy away from going straight on, head through it, and find a way to pick it apart. They are so intelligent with all their utility that they use that they just figure it out. Okay, how do we get past this shield? How do we get past this position for a specific player? They are not afraid of using the utility that they might have wanted for the execute. They'll use it any time of the round, and they'll be happy doing so. They're definitely spearheading. I mean, I mentioned Cyber on phase, but on W7M, Hurt is definitely a player that's going to be battling with him in that entry engagement. That is something I'm very much looking forward to. Well, 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 we talked about Dynasty, and honestly, this has been an, an idea that's been floated around over the past few months. You win two majors, it's great, but a Dynasty, that's another level for us. It's been the topic that nobody really wants to approach, is whether W7M are going to be a Dynasty. So on your screen, you're going to see G2, and then obviously the Pentacle that my good friend here, Fabian, was on, that were the original Dynasty, Invitational into Paris Major, into Pro League Finals, into another six Invitational, with a few tournaments in between. Now. W7M, they've won one major, they've won two majors. If they win the Six Invitational 2024, they will have won everything with it inside one season of Rainbow Six inside the official competition. Now, in my mind, that leads to them allowing to be entered into the conversation of being or becoming a dynasty. They're definitely coming into the conversation. There's a potential for maybe even the greatest of all time. That is the potential. Today is where I think it starts off really, really much. Like, the majors, yeah, sure, that's the start of it. But today is when they can be mentioned as the first dynasty after G2. Well, 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 it seems like we're transitioning into a brand new era, maybe. Thank you very much, my friends. We'll be back to converse more about our map bands, but first with Alphama on Telestration. Thank you, Milos. And indeed, I want you guys to take a look at how W7M is able to problem solve anything that's thrown at them when they're in attack. We're taking a look at Virtus Pro on defense here, Jim and Bedroom. First, they're holding the, the heart of the strat here with three defenders, and then they have the classic extension here in construction and cash. Now, when you're in attack, what do you do to punish that? First, the fact that there's no one on construction door, you may have a pinch here on the extension. That's your target one from someone running into solo wall, and then a double pinch from construction window and red stairs. Now, after after you, you've cleared that first extension, you want to focus on the bomb site. Let's take a look at how the round plays out with real footage. First, Dan and Always, they're your target. They're the extension. First player comes in here from solo wall and pressures the target. And at the same time, JV and Hurt, you see how they triple pinch him? Really well played. What's even better is the operator pick. 
They're bringing Blitz. Why are they bringing Blitz? Because he needs to be quick and he needs to win close range engagements by being fast. And that's exactly what he's doing with that extension. Now, Area 1 is cleared. What do you want to do? Clear Shepard. Shepard is the gateway to the bomb site. And again, great utility usage. Remove that strong position using Ridge, uh, Grim, bouncing the swarm off the wall onto him so that he's fully ping and KZ can pre fire him. Now, one last thing you've got two players that to, you need to remove. JV jumped in gym. That means that they can only be in two positions. That's bathroom, that's hallway. KZ is aware of that, so he will just pre fire the first one, pre fire the second one. Welcome to W7M. It's great strategy, great fragging. Great problem solving. W7M for you in attack. Back to you, Milos, on the desk. Thank you very much, Alfama. Always, always clean on our telestrations. And we are back here to discuss what happens when you go in from the top bracket and from the bottom one. From the top, you get an advantage. It's not what we had a few years ago, where it was a map that you get for free. You get an advantage in your map bands. And yeah, face coming from that upper bracket get to pick how they want the map veto to go. And they pick the option where before anyone gets to ban any map, they get to at least pick one map. They get to force a map onto their opponents. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing. That's the option they took. They get three different uh, options that they can take, and this is the one with the very, very clear advantage. And this is because if your opponent has a permaban or a very low preference map, you can pick it. Then let's call that map veto. Put it up on the screen to get started with it. A nine map pool is what we play around here in Rainbow Six. Five will have to be played, so you got to be careful with your picks. First one is on Oregon. The fence for W7M. Guide us through the rest, Fresh. Very, uh, very not surprised to see Oregon played out. It's W7M's lowest preference map at this event. It's FaZe's number one preference map at the event. W7M actually have an issue where they've only got a 50% defense win rate, and FaZe love attacking it. Moving through to Bank, it's a very middle preference map for both teams, but I'm not surprised W7M picked this one. It's a map they've won consistently throughout this tournament, 100 percent win rate at the tournament that's going to lead us into phase picking skyscraper now w7m leave it open they like people to pick it into them which is exactly what phase have done both maps love it however both teams love it however w7m destroyed g2 on skyscraper yesterday finally w7m are going to pick into border they won it yesterday against Bertus Pro, which I think has given them confidence, even if it was overtime, and it's a very low preference map for FaZe. Oregon map one, Fabian. Yeah, so obviously Jack said it's the lowest preference. The thing with W7M is they have a nine map map pool, even if it's the lowest preference, that honestly doesn't tell you much. Oregon as a map, obviously, is a very step-based, which kind of doesn't fit either team, but they do have that extra spice of being able to split up and just go from everywhere at once in the execute. So Oregon overall, I think it's going to be a very exciting map. Yeah, W7M, of course, very strong with their map pool. Maybe they're expecting FaZe to bring this out as well, but talking about that advantage that FaZe have, if they do win out this map, with this being a best of five, that is a huge advantage if you can put yourself in an early advantage. <laughs> We've seen W7M recover in the past. Can it happen here? First? Well, this, this first map band is always a really actually interesting one to see because it's only been a concept for a couple of years. Obviously, W7M had this advantage last year against G2, picked Clubhouse and beat G2 on it, but then lost every map from that. So it's not always just as much an advantage as you might think. So the biggest thing with this map is because it's so low in the map preference and they know that they were going to pick it, the way W7M goes into this is feeling this is more of a warm-up map. Like, that sounds silly, right? It's a grand final of an SI. But you kind of have to expect yourself to lose map because this is a heavyweight boxing fight where you will trade punches left, right, and center. The first map is their first hit. You're okay with losing it. You have so much more. You still have extra space. But it's just the start of a momentum. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, maybe with this best of five situation. But I also just really hope we make it to that decider of Nighthaven because I think that's where we can see whether yesterday was a fluke for W7, and, right? Because yeah. they were hiding it for so long, run it up, absolutely slammed. And it wouldn't there. surprise me. These two tunes are so equal in the way that they play, the fragging ability. Just, they are so different, but so much the same. And we couldn't ask for two better teams here. Final thoughts on map number one, Oregon. How do you see it going fresh? Um, it will be the teams that can attack better. Obviously, that will yep. get the advantage on Oregon, so you're looking for W7M to kind of step up in this map here. I think FaZe takes it. They wouldn't pick it if they weren't going to win it, and that's just as simple as it should be. Shows confidence. I think FaZe picked it with the reason. They're going to yeah. win it.
honestly. Yesterday was incredible. That match versus Virtus Pro between them and W7M was a beauty to watch. Thank you very much for all your information. And thank you for the production team to make it all so smooth, but it's no SI without our orchestra. Please give it up for the Orchestra Sinfonica Villa Lobos and Maestro Adriano Machado. It's the SI theme.
atmosphere in here is absolutely electric. This Brazilian crowd is built different. And what we have here is a moment in time, a moment in history. Twin brothers who entered this world together, about to go their separate way on the main stage here in Sao Paulo. Nade, Handy. Wow, this must be a real conflict of emotions. É uma narrativa inesquecível para os esportes. Chegaram ao mundo juntos. Tá aqui, Nade e Randy, irmãos separados por uma final de mundial de Six Invitational. Deve ser um conflito de interesses, porque só um de vocês sai daqui com a marreta. Como é que fica o coração enfrentar o irmão, alguém que você ama, mas em instantes o amor fica de lado? Cara, é, é muito emocionante estar aqui jogando contra ele, é, mas eles têm o dinheiro e a soberba e a gente tem o povo. Quem tá torcendo pra dar o seu Can you translate first? Yeah. He just said, they have the money, they're cocky, we have the people. Sua vez. Cara, é um momento muito inscritivo estar jogando com ele aqui do lado. Dividir essa final de palco com ele. Mas a gente tem a humildade e a fez com a gente, que é a torcida mais calorosa do Brasil. E tenho certeza que será uma grande final. He believes that the people will come and we will join them because they're humble. Do you put brotherly love well and truly aside here? E aí, como é que tá o coração agora? Cara, tô ansioso pra essa partida. É, a Face contra a gente tem um confronto. Ele tem histórico de confronto de vitória. Mas a Face tem histórico de chocar e capturar o decisivo. They have. They have the winning history, but normally they chalk when they face like grand finals like this. Bom, é, o que eu tenho para dizer só é agradecer a torcida da Fez aí e eu tenho certeza que a gente vai sair com essa marreta hoje. Eu acho que você tem que pedir um pouco de torcida porque a gente já sentiu aqui que a galera tá do lado da W7M, hein? É a sua chance de pedir a torcida. Bom, tudo bem, a gente joga contra a torcida, mas a gente tem um time incrível. Eu tenho certeza que a gente vai derrotar eles hoje. Now he understood the people is with W7M, but they believe that they're going to win today. Okay. In Portuguese, any last words for your brother? Suas últimas palavras em português para seu irmão. Boa sorte. Good luck. Suas últimas palavras, last words. Boa sorte, que seja jogão. Good luck as well. <laughs> Go and take your seats, guys. Get ready for this one. Wow. That's it. A moment in time okay. that we've never seen before in the history of esports. Twin brothers head to head on a main stage competing for the hammer behind me in front of their home crowd. Absolutely incredible scenes here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I've never felt an atmosphere like this. Arena lotada, ingressos esgotados. Estamos a poucos instantes da grande decisão entre Fez e W7M. Quem vai vencer eu não sei, mas vai ficar no Brasil. São irmãos, são brasileiros. Daqui a marreta não sai. Já já W7M Fez. Let's find out. We already know, but let's double check. All right, Which so team these fans want to win here? A gente já tem uma ideia, mas eu quero testar com vocês aqui. Vamos junto, Ibirapuera. Para quem vocês vão torcer? Vamos lá, começando. Vocês querem a Faze? W7M! Faze! Faze! So we've got a little bit of time before we get into our first map here. So let's have some fun. We did this yesterday. I think we should do it again. Let's split this crowd right, right. down the middle. 
And let's find out which side is the loudest. Vamos dividir aqui, vamos fazer a primeira batalha para ver qual lado do ginásio do Ibirapuera faz mais barulho. Se é o meu lado, vocês comigo aqui, e vocês não vão me deixar perder pro gringo, hein? Oh, to Ian Chambers, traz a torcida junto com ele. Can I start over here? Start over there. Okay, this side, this side here. <laughs> okay, everybody with me. Eu quero ver esse lado aqui fazer barulho em 3, 2, 1. Vamos fazer barulho, Ibirapuera. This is the atmosphere here in Ibirapuera. My side is rocking. Yeah, your side is good, bro. Yep. Yeah, you did good. Can I try one more time? Oh. Okay, okay. Vamos de novo, galera. Agora respira, guarda o pulmão e vamos fazer o Ibirapuera tremer. Vamos lá. Atenção. Três, dois, um. Vamos fazer barulho, Ibirapuera! Aqui é Brasil! Mm. Last thing. Okay. We've proven here in Brazil that our six is bigger than ever. And it is thanks to this crowd. The biggest one. Here in Sao Paulo. And I just want to let everybody know all eyes are on the Ginásio do Ibirapuera here yeah. in Sao Paulo. So all together now, let's rock this entire arena and let them know that Brazil, number one. Vamos fazer o seguinte, todo mundo junto agora, para mostrar para o mundo que o Rainbow Six Siege é gigante. E vamos fazer o ginásio do Ibirapuera tremer. Ready? 3, 2, 1. Vamos, vamos fazer barulho! The grand final of the Six Invitational 2024 starts right now. Thanks, Clan. W7M, let's get into it with our casters. Well, the moment has arrived, and haven't we been waiting here in Sao Paulo, Brazil? These two teams that have been prepping, building, not just in this tournament, not just this year, but basically their whole lives, willed on by this 10,000 strong crowd here in Brazil. And now these two titans clash together on this grand stage. Cannot wait to jump into this game for FaZe Clan, a 6-1 record against W7M post SI 2022. They haven't had an opportunity though to pro prove it in a playoff bracket this season. Can they step out of the shadow cast by W7M? Well, I can't argue there, right? W7M, last SI, they're in the finals. They won back-to-back -back majors. If they win here tonight, I'm gonna say it, oh. it will be the beginning of their dynasty in Siege. I, I, probably is, is it not? But obviously this crowd, it is split, is it not? Who have we got taking this grand final? Very quickly, Penguin. I want it to happen. Give me W7M all the way. Very quickly, guys. W7M32. All right, let's get into what will be the grandstand beginning of hopefully one of the most epic conclusions to Six Invitational we have ever had. Within this arena, 10,000 people must now choose a side. Will it be the challengers, FaZe Clan, who have fallen short of the last two major semi-final losses, or W7M, who are looking to end their last dance with the only trophy missing from the cabinet? It's the hammer. I don't know what to feel <laughs> at the moment. Overwhelmed with emotion and eager to jump into this game. Oregon map one, and it's Ying Grim off the board, Nick. I was curious here, I want to say it. 
I am curious if we'll see a clash ban from W7M because we know Vita King, we know FaZe, they like to bring this operator. So far, the Ying, the Grim, the Fenrir, it's right by the script. This is what they've been doing throughout this tournament on Oregon, from both these sides, and it speaks to the strengths and weaknesses of both teams here. But no, W7M, they do not go for the target ban, they will go with their good old stable of Tuberau. So the Azami then will sneak through the most banned defender from FaZe in this tournament. And the crowd already screaming the name of their favorite team. The stage is set for an epic match. It certainly is. The stage filled to the brim. 10,000 people stacked to the rafters here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Already, these people have captured the hearts of Siege fans everywhere regarded as one of the best crowds that we have ever seen in this game. And for one last time, let's see what noise this crowd can make for these two juggernauts. The socials were 50-50. The crowd seems 50-50. Nick, everything says that this should be one of the best SI Grand Finals of all time. Yeah, and I agree with it. I wanted to face yeah, Thomas in a matchup because They've been at it domestically, but not quite internationally. And also, who does want Brazil against Brazil with this crowd? That is the final that we deserve. Let's jump here, Dan. Map number one. Round number one. Defensively, we're going to basement the pick of W7M. Nothing standing out as being too unusual in terms of their composition, but looking across to the attack, some intriguing picks. The gridlock in play, so flank watch available. Capital will be a key player in the late round for clearing space. And keep an eye on KDS as well on the floor as he'll be tasked with clearing all that utility stack for the defense. But speaking of the early round right now, it's about feeling each other out in the server. Who's gonna get that opening pick? Who's gonna get the crowd to either boo against them or roar with them when they find it? And it's a slow one. We know FaZe, they're not the quickest to enter the building, but when they do, usually they have five players alive. They play close together because they really want that open engagement. And in the Grand Finals, when the pressure is this high, it only makes sense that Ws and M, despite being a very aggressive team usually, are all on site in basement. And these teams, Nick, so difficult to split. Heading into today, they both have a 50% attacker win rate, 63% on the defense. I mean, they are equal in almost every part of the game at the moment. Charge deploy. Five men stacked down below for W7M to begin. It's smart, it's safe. You don't really want to be me making mistakes this early on. So, but the downside to that is you give FaZe a lot of that time up above for three. They open the hatches, meeting's gone. 90 seconds left in the round and the Roteros make their way through Freezer, clearing some of these keeper barriers to create that space for FaZe on that eventual push. They must, though, get multiple angles of attack. The big thing to look out here is W and M. They're really good at knowing when to lash out on defense. They will play it safe, they'll make it seem like, hey, we're not gonna do anything, but out of nowhere, they might just explode into the attackers. It's been a slow build up here for FaZe, but it's the expectation. Will they be able to pounce onto site? KDS with a final Rotero. He sends that through Freezer. The util clear here from FaZe has been pretty spot on. The groundwork is now laid. Can FaZe build upon it? 50 seconds remaining in this opening round here for Six Invitational 2024. Who can find the opening kill? Will it be FaZe to make their way into site? A little bit easier. Cyber through Freezer cannot connect with the initial shots that he outlays, but he pushes forward slowly with JV92 watching his very position from this deployable shield. Double push from Freezer, double push from Laundry, but it is handy on to Hurt. The opening shot for FaZe, and they double down, and Handy gets aggressive. Oh, close with a skeleton key. Oh, the longest, the longest start for FaZe here in the grand final. I don't know. How does it start in a flawless attack? We said it was slow to get their 5v5, but Gus, how do you start off this strong? I thought the shield standing in laundry was perhaps going to pose yes. some problems for the attack, but FaZe able to just mow it down. The buck and the skeleton key to go deep to that connecting wall. A flawless start at six Invitational 2024 for the grand final.
I gotta be honest, when we saw the map V2, when I saw them, you know, face pick Auric and off, they're thinking, that's the 50-50 map that no team wants to go to in the finals because you might just lose because you don't know what's gonna happen, really. It's really up to those micro decisions in the server. But if you pick this map, you start an attack, the less favored side, will you pull this off? That sends a message. Oh, I mean, just look at that kill there. Caught off was nade. And the push through freeze are still clean despite that keeper barrier standing. And we said before there was a bit of a split in the crowd, probably in favor of W7M, but the noise emitted from the pocket of FaZe Clan members or fans that are here at the event is astounding. Unfortunately, such is the case sometimes in esports, things don't quite go to the script. The tech pause here after just one round, and it does just kind of leave us a little bit yearning for that second to come. Hopefully not too long. There is a little bit to talk about though, Nick. Of course, slow was the pace set by FaZe early on, but a lot of that was because W7M gave them that space. They didn't contest up above, they didn't go for spawn picks, and they certainly didn't contest those hatches. Well, you're right, and that's the thing that's not very common for W7M. When we think about this team, when we see them play Oregon, they like to match aggression with aggression, but the issue that they face here is that FaZe Clan, they're not an aggressive team, so they can't match it. If you run around the map, go for those spawn peaks, FaZe will be watching those angles and shut them down. So you said it yourself, they play it safe, but they also get slightly punished because they didn't have anywhere on the map to play with. The bomb side, of course, overrun by the attackers. The other thing as well was they had that split. Laundry two, freezer two, and a little bit of pressure as well from backstairs. So they were able to at least work the angles onto site, and that made it difficult for W7M. They weren't able to have the numbers to stop that push from freezer, from laundry. Eventually, you just get overwhelmed, and it ends up being a flawless start. I can say that we're very likely to get back into this second round very, very shortly here. A dramatic start, a flawless start for FaZe. Of course, it is the opening map in a best of five grand final, so you don't take too much from just one round. No, you can't. And I mean, this is the long game. You can even lose the map. I mean, you can lose too. The comeback is always possible. You would know. I would know. <laughs> the one time, I mean, we spoke about this before, right? What do we want as casters from this? Five maps. It's yeah. very simple. And then a great game of Rainbow Six Siege. It looks like we're moments away now from jumping back into the server phase with a flawless way to open up this match. We head to top floor then for round number two. Can W7M formulate a response? They are a team that have already proven time and time and time and time again when they're under pressure they can step up. They've made the lower bracket run. They clutched up against Virtus Pro. This is not going to be enough to shake them. It's going to take one hell of an effort here from FaZe Clan to really apply some serious pressure in this match. Exactly. You're right. And I mean, they even sent home G2 as well, right? The current reigning hammer lifters. One thing to face, though, they don't have any ego about them. They'll have a starting plan going to every single round, but they are not afraid to change on a dime if things do not work out, nor to brute force if they feel like they have to. So you expect here calculated, very slow beginnings, but if they have to change, they will. If they have to go fast, they will. The biggest thing I'm looking for for W7M will be that pace. We saw it in that opening round, said it a couple times already. Slow down in the basement. Well, guess what? We got stairs now, Kid Storms, and already you can see Herd over towards that armory position. Oh. And so he's already wanting to contest. Now you've got JV92 as well towards Big Tower. So immediately we see the response. More aggressive positions, happy to get into the face and take those early contact fights with face. JV92 loves to play these sort of power positions. FaZe have the tools to deal with him though, the Capital Line combo, if they want to play into it. FaZe are the best example of a team that will avoid the strongest part of a defensive hold. They will pivot, they will change up their push, so they may elect not to contest JV92, but you can see Handy, perhaps keen to get in Big Tower and get to work on the map. We see both teams studying each other here. They've seen them play Oregon. They know the patterns that they have because they tend to play the same style most rounds, JV and Big Tower, but it's Hurts and KC usually in the front looking for things as the Cyber downstairs to the buck. No vertical destruction just yet. The advance of Armory stairs looking for an opening. They haven't got any. Obviously, they haven't even cleared. JP, Cyber, takes the initial shot. He comes off second worst. He's still got a bit of pressure, though, for FaZe, and away he goes through bedroom into trophy. 
but can cast over towards Philippe Pox, trying to deny that entry coming in from the balcony. On the repel, pressure again from FaZe. Handy over towards Big Terror as well, and his Cyber makes entry into Pit, gets the kill, trade does come through from that added position, which is still in favor of W7M because of that big tower hold, because of what the Oryx can do through the hatch. Vinicky, oh, a double kill from Vinicky! JP, can he win the battle? No, Handy makes it a three versus one! He had to win that, JV. If he got that kill, it's a 2v2. Oh, there he gets the down the onto Vita King and suddenly makes this a little bit more comebackable. No, King, KDS is watching. FaZe just look on on the outset of this grand final, but not really put anything wrong. Huge double kill there from Vita King. As the first trade came through, he aggressed towards the breach. Philippox could not cover that position without exposing himself to that bedroom balcony. And that attack, again, ruthless, making W7M pay for the small mistakes that they're making at the moment. We saw FaZe again being able to just uh, out of nowhere say, you know what, it's time to go. There was like, what, a minute and 14 seconds left. Cyber will just flashbang, go through pit, get the opening kill, and he gets traded immediately. It's a one for one, and that's not necessarily a good thing, but the entire team of FaZe was behind them, supporting, cutting off rotation. Vidiking, who is on the scoreboard, not the guy we expect to see much from, he goes in, follows on Capital. You got the fire, you got the smoke, but what they needed there was not utility. They needed manpower. You need guns. <laughs> as simple as that. Mechanically sound, the repositioning on point, really well played. Needs to be said as well, for those unaware, Oregon essentially tied for worst map when it comes to attacking. So the fact that for FaZe, they've already got two attacking rounds early Five on, especially with the fact that in that opening round, it was on basement, which statistically is the best Attackers when it comes to defending on Oregon. So, perfect start for FaZe. Now we beg the question, the response from W7M, where's that going to come from? So it's the shock drones now in play, Cyber on the Twitch, into the Solus though of Herds. Solus can really punish the attack if they're leaning into pre-place drones as well, could help to bolster the protection on site because, of course, those shock drones can counter a ton of that utility. Rolling yeah, back. but then we got the Tokubi, we got the Jackal, we got really strong and guns from the attack inside the and a, bigger, a quicker pace run strategy right now from FaZe, kind of keeping the same guessing as to what's the style going to be. Slow and methodical, explosive out of nowhere. Is it going to be relying on utility, for example, or drone intel? Right now, FaZe, they're just lingering on the server, very split across, but a lot of map control being asserted. I mean, they're trusting their system. Board. They're bringing their game plan into this grand final. If W7M adjust, I'm sure they will as well. But at the moment, it's a strong start. Bit of getting taken low. A contest through bomb. split, and the hard breach will fall. Fight's not over, in towards classroom. JV couldn't get the response that he was searching for on to Sol. Still over towards split, it's Herds. Being aggressive on that Solus, that's the response, the question that was begged, and finally the response has come through, courtesy of Hertz. Cyber's down, but not out just yet, and then he gets caught. Backside of meeting coming from Big Tower, handy yeah, made entry, but there's still going to be the pressure there from Philippox. I've not seen this kind of excellent play from both teams right now. It's pixel perfect from both sides, fighting back and forth, in. members injured, and now hopping down the hatch. Chasey's dropped down, he wants to take the fight, but he goes for a different option, rotates away, KDS is low. Can play the Inox scanner on the Jackal, creates sightlines in towards security. And there's pressure oh, building for the Andy. Shot shot from Handy, and so Going far the perfect up. start. Going Four accurate. versus three now as FaZe retake the lead here in this round. 60 Great. seconds remaining. Great work from FaZe to shut down that flank potential and now bolsters their man advantage. Cyber now, shock drains, as we mentioned, critical, can chip oh. away at that utility. The Goyo canisters and those smoke canisters are both key in stalling out this push. Now they're gone. They're going to be wasted. They'll be expired by the time FaZe are ready to push. Also, here, KDS handy cyber, stall on HP, any fire. Toxic babes will stall them out or take them down outright. FaZe are not having much health to work with. It might just be an issue for them. It might be a similar push to what we saw in the opening round. It's a double push through laundry. A couple of players through freezer. Cyber goes for a drone. Nade hasn't been spotted in that hallway position that might red ping down. Information comes through from the Jackal of KDS. Still one more scanner. Smokes go out. Cyber makes the slow push as well, coupled with Salt, who has the diffuser in hand. Down to the final 15 oh, seconds. Go? Sprays go out, but he doesn't find the target. Philippe Box gets the open kill. And he's knocked out. Cyber Soul in a two versus three. W7M are looking to make a statement, but Soul! Oh! Get 
one kill, sure, but they buy so much time. And you got the Goyo Canisters, the Toxic Babes, the defense looked perfect, but somehow FaZe found the gap. I, I commented on the Toxic Babes and I thought that they were going to be expired by the time the push came to shove. They were all still standing, arguably placed to perfection, yet despite that and other pieces of utility standing in the way of FaZe, they once again are able to overload key positions, win those engagements, and I tell you what, now that pressure perhaps is starting to mount a little bit now for W7M. I mean, I love that start, at least for W7M, showing a bit more strength and presence up above. But my goodness, this is the back-to-back -back reigning major champions, and they look a little bit shocketh right now from FaZe, the team that in those very major tournaments got knocked out in the semi-finals, both times falling before the final hurdle. But right now, they are making leaps and bounds to start the six Invitational. 3 nothing on attack? Nick, this is unheard of. Uh, I did not see this coming. I gotta Jack say, to right now, this is all about FaZe. They're in control. They're setting the pace. They're making all the right decisions. But I do feel like WSM, they gotta change something up. They had the same kind of semi, what should I say? They've been only committing half the time. We saw two roamers last round, but normally they have four. So they're playing, trying to play in both oceans. We gotta play safe, we gotta play risky. Hurts Casey, go crazy. The rest of us play on site. No, no, play as a team. Five players. We saw a documentary on Breakable that WSM they say, guys, when the communication isn't there, we don't win as a team, we have to play as a team. We've not seen that yet. And I think a good example of that in the previous round was for Leapox, rear stage. He elected not to push through, support that roam inside of meeting, perhaps just being a little bit conservative in a match where being aggressive, being in the face of your opponent can give you a significant advantage if played correctly. So we enter now into round number four. It's a top four defense for W7M. Can they get their first here in the grand final? That's the question that I'm asking as well. And now we see FaZe change it up again. Slow, fast, fast, slow. And right now it's about an intel game for those. They want to know more things in the map. That's why the Valkyrie's being brought out. Four Nitro Cells here from W7M. So our understanding with that, they probably want to play the vert positions that they can use. Obviously, you can also throw them out of windows, like Big Window, for example. JV plays aggressive Position into secured. classroom. Denies that kind of front door entry position, but he gets caught. Oh. Fire. W7M are wanting to play a little bit more aggressive, but it's getting shot down by FaZe. Yeah, it is. Every single time, opening kills, fearing the attack right now. That's how you win these rounds on Oracle, and you build that early lead. As you mentioned, though, several Nitro Cells still remain here for W7M. Is that the clutch factor that can bring the round back? They want to peek. They want to see if they can catch someone from FaZe off guard. W7M need to start be the ones that put their feet in front of each other and start moving, but it's handy. And it's FaZe again, wanting to make that entry into the site before Lee Fox gets the denial. There comes Nade onto Vidakin. But so is in response every single time. FaZe have got the answers. Still one Nitro Cell for KZ. Oh, rips it, but misses KDS altogether. Yeah, he's still alive. And for Lee Pops now, Tom White makes his entry known. Flash, no, he's not one. Oh, KDS doesn't miss. KZ, though, can't clutch. And so far, It's the same thing happening multiple rounds now in a row. Where we go, oh, those might get around here. They look pretty mighty fine, but then they don't. FaZe, every time in the early round, will either get an even trade or the early advantage. That's the one part of it. But then late round, they always find a way into the bomb site. They always trade out in favor, and they have forced the back-to-back -back major champion into a tactical timer after just playing four rounds. Now, we got to speak to a lot of the fans outside of the arena today. I think the split inside the building is probably 70-30 in favor of W7M. Yes, yes. So if you think the crowd is loud now, well, they're probably a bit stunned because W7M certainly are the hometown heroes and they are forced into an early tactical timeout down 4 nothing to FaZe. FaZe are the upper bracket team, but W7M are the back-to-back -back major champions looking to seek that hammer that has eluded them since SI23. And so far, not off to the best start here in their final last dance. And picking up on the point from Nick about the emphasis on the early round. Oh, oh my God. Right. And the entry, kills like that. It only is narrowly in favor of FaZe heading into this match. 57% to 55, we're talking narrow margins. At the moment though, it's not looking like that. 
It's not. And I mean, <laughs> we've been watching Thomas Tim for a full year. And the big story takeaway that I always see is, what do you do against them? Where are the gaps, where are the weaknesses? Well, yeah. almost no teams in the last full year of Siege has been able to expose those at all. And the other thing as well, there's always these question marks about pacing and, and how should you play this game? Should you go fast? A G2, for example, a W7M. Those two, in fact, are basically the top two teams when it comes to time on entry. You know what's one of the lowest teams? Third last, in fact. Tied third last. Yeah. It's phase. About a minute and a half thing. That's a good, almost close to 25 seconds slower then W7M, and so that's quite a staggering difference. But despite that, they actually have the same amount of attacking win rate. So it really does go to show, in this era of Siege, you don't have to follow a script, you can play your own way. You say it's the third slowest, is that correct? Third yes. slowest? Yeah. Right. But watching these rounds, I'm not thinking faces a slow team. Yeah, they will set things up correctly, but when they start going, they do not stop. Well, round five then, ready and rearing off the back of that tactical timeout. I'm heading to the basement site. KEZ to play first contact on Wamai and those discs are great counters oh, to the for Tau. Flushed oh. out though. Cyber probing. And there's another outline. His partner in crime. It's herds on the warden, so Cyber needs to be very careful here. I mean W7M just can't get these early contact fights to go their way. Again, it's another one for FaZe. And obviously at this point now, I think W7M look a little desperate. They're seeking it really aggressively and probably a little overzealous in that. And now they're getting really punished for it. And that's the thing. This is kind of what we want to see from W7M. Usually they do play overzealous. They do play those high risks. But again, emphasize here, they do it as a team. Family Pox, not the guy solo or ghost typically. We got to talk about KC and Hertz. Where are they? But on this round, they're playing stuff like Omai and... Has he been drawn? Yeah. Is Hertz actually sneak? Oh, he's got the flank. He's got the creep around. Uh, it's coming through the corridor very slowly and maybe a moment for W7M that could bring a round back around that they've still yet not been able to find successfully. Logic Bomb goes out and with oh. that, Hertz has to actually pull back momentarily. Just has to buy his time. He can put that phone to sleep and re-aggress on the flank later in the round. KDS already inside of Freezer alongside Cyber. Two big targets for him to find. I think it's Hurts timing here. He wants to find more than one kill. He's looking for the Lurk very slowly, but his team is saying, it's not time yet, wait. Let them all come down the staircase, then go for the flank. Double push Freezer. Hurts will be the player to go for that flank to W7M. It's the best win condition that they have thus had so far. Hurts must win this and die. Central on the Cyber. But Paul, oh, maybe didn't anticipate oh. the is watching the stairs profusely, expecting then KZ to swing. Now takes the battle in the DMR battle with the Aruni of JV92. Wants a bit of help and will seek and get it from Nade. One gas base still left in the back pocket as well. Three on two for FaZe. W7M holding on by the skin of their teeth. And the smoke canister will just stall out the default plant for a little while longer. Little shift over the head. He's got a good push coming in from Elbow. JB falls, and they know the last one remains inside a freezer with no gas babes. The chance here for Nade is very unlikely. Does his twin brother come and finish the job yeah, off? Andy wants to go for the peak. Nade, the red peak. A little bit of information up close from Bill. It sounds. It is a disaster of a start for W7M, but for FaZe, it's a dream that's becoming a reality. 5 nothing, and that little camp of W7M is silent. If you want to know what a, what a near-perfect round of Siege looks like, you have to watch back that round. Anything from KDS catching the flank on the freezer stairs, despite that being a big surprise factor. No hesitation from the side of FaZe Clan. And they commit laundry, they go down freezer, but they make that big thing they're known for, the mid-round road where they recognize this is not going to work. Three people will go backside, big tower, meeting hatch, outside blue double door. And while W7 are so distracted trying to retake Freezer, with two people against one, that's all there is to find. And then the backside attack comes through. It's how to secure that fifth round in a row. I keep looking at that damn deployable shield that doesn't get taken down. <laughs> right? And despite that phase brute forcing their way through Freezer once again, what a play from KDS. He reacts to the call and then immediately expects the re-aggression from KZ. Fantastic couple of shots there with the DMR and the rest of his team locking it down nicely. Really is about the balance. Grix were made a pretty big interview with TCG after their loss against W7M. They were here on stage and he said, 
Sonics, well, we couldn't find our balance, when to aggress, when to fall back, and that, that dance around. And so far in this event, up until now, I think Virtus Pro came the closest to beating WCNM by having the right pace, knowing when to hold an angle, expect aggression, and when to aggress yourself. But FaZe, they have played it perfectly when it comes to balance for these five rounds in a row. I mean, it should be said, through this upper bracket run for FaZe in the tournament thus far, at no point have they 7 0 a team. Oh. Imagine a world in which that happens oh. to begin an SI Grand Final. Well, it's not too far away from being a reality. 5 nothing Thank start you, into the final round of the half. And again, mind you, there are absolutely no expectations for FaZe that they're going to squander this chance in the second half. Going onto the defense, they will be in the driver's seat for sure. Oh boy, flashes, rappel on in, and we see those to them this time. They're not fighting it, they're falling back, they're saying, okay, when you want to take space, we'll give it up. Yasha will kill a drone, fall back because they've killed five so far. JV on Solis looking to gain more intel here, but it comes down to, again, the entries. So JV92 chipping away at that drone economy, and as you can see in the top left, only three remaining here wow, for FaZe. Will that be their downfall? Will that be the error, or perhaps the counterplay from W7M that they've presented in shutting that down? Could that be the win condition for them to finally get a defensive round win here on Oregon? Very well, maybe. And again, we might actually see the time be an issue right now. We see here the, the, the duos, Solas, and they are explained together on Longy's side, but the catch is there. KD's again out of the building, holding it down. Five versus three. And again, it's FaZe that set the pace, the tone. The, tr the trendsetters at the moment in this map of Oregon, W7M, are on the back foot the entire way through this first half and remain so even towards the very end. Cyber gets aggressive through bedroom. The flush went out, gets the red pigment nade on the swing. Successful. Another one on the balcony. At least a little bit of a fight back here from W7M, but Jamie can't make oh, the plane you. work. Denied, shut down. This is a slaughter! seeing right now to begin this grand final six nothing to phase in the opening half it is their map pick after all and boy are they showing us why we gotta talk about something here gentlemen this is the best of five it works very differently than your traditional best of threes it's about the long run if you're w7m by my experience by what i believe in it is not worth fighting it out on Oregon. I know that sounds crazy, but a best of five requires so much energy. Mental toll on yourself. Us. It's gonna be a long night. I say you quote unquote give them Oregon, and yet yeah, sucks to lose 7 0 7 1, but you at least have something back in the, in the tank. Give them Oregon? Yeah. It's been taken. <laughs> Stolen. You let them take it. Phase are up 6 0. There's no letting. They have run all over W7M. 6-0, match point, what a start for FaZe Clan. And of course, Nick, back in the, the olden day, used to have a bit of an advantage for fitting in, finishing in that upper bracket, that default map. This is basically all that is now, yep, a default map, because W7M have not shown up. Since the best of five format has been introduced to the Six Invitational, no team has ever won a map in a 7-0 fashion. The most dominant was G2. Map three of Bank in 2019. That was a 7-1 victory. No 7-0s to speak of. Wow. I mean, history will be made one way or another tonight, that's for sure. Yeah. Records are meant to be broken, and Vinny King gets droned out, fourth back. Does get rid of the drone, does also throw out a gas babe early on. Good information early for W7M. Might just find their groove on the attack. Less pressure, if you will, although the pressure's gone at this point because they're so far behind when it comes to the scoreboard. Down 6 nothing. But I will say, I've already been a part of a 6-0 comeback at this very tournament. It is possible. But W7M will have to be utterly perfect if they are to do it. And like you said, Nick, maybe in a best of five, it's better to conserve that energy. Has to be a consideration, at least. W7M, yeah, they've won majors. But not like this. Not when you've been pressured so hard in the first map so far. They got the Blitz, they got the Osa. They have a strategical way into this round without much counterplay from the defense. And the Cyber Blue, they have impacts. Cyber aggressing over towards Blue. But certainly this Osa could play a pivotal role in capturing control through Freezer. For FaZe, they're able to just brute force their way through in the gunfights. But a bit of utility laid here from W7M. Yep. 
We gotta see Handy or Cyber make a rotate. Wants to see those ocean shields getting deployed, those talon shields. And Katie's just there. So now if they get the intel, go for a swing, out impact goes. Take that freezer control back. Five stack on site for phase defensively has kind of allowed W7M to get into very critical positions. Laundry and freezer, an opening kill for Hertz finally. Feels like a long time coming for W7M to get themselves into this very position where 60 seconds left into the round. They can start to strangulate those of phase on site. Handy. It's been quite good. Who's going to get the response for FaZe? Because it feels like it's coming. They've been the team so far in this map that have always had the answers. KDS as well with keeping barriers through Freezer. Keep an eye on Handy though. On the chassis, if he is not flushed out, if he's not considered by the attack, he could be a difference maker. Oh, Handy wins it against her. The leap on now comes in on the blitz. Oh. Oh, White gets the kill. Double for Handy. Then they all fall. Then he gets Cyber in between versus two to win this. In a 7 0 fashion for FaZe, they've got the chance to create history, but Vinicky falls. Down to Cyber. Coming through Pillar, nade for the plant. That's a big plant. What? Down to KZ. Cyber, can he create history to begin this invitation? Oh. No. W7M are on the board for the first time at the 6 Invitational. And the crowd loves it. They've been waiting for that for a long, long time. We have a call in from Jesse, who's gonna break something down, I guess, for us. Yeah, guys, I can't say I'm coming to you with great news for W7M fans. Obviously, this has been a rough game for them so far, and going onto the attack is gonna be even more difficult than that first half, because the last time we saw FaZe play on Oregon, they were undefeated on their defenses. They got a 5-0 half against the Sonics a few days ago in playoffs. A big reason why FaZe were able to do so well on defense was because of that top floor clash play that we saw from Vidiking. That's something that I know Pengu has touched on already in the operator bands. If we see that clash from Vidiking, which plays inside of the closet, slows anybody walking into Master, and allows Handy, or KDS I should say, to swing in from Trophy and get kills, that's going to be very difficult for W7M to deal with. So watch out for that when and if we get to the Dorms bomb site. We're going to need to see something good from W7M to take it down. Quickly, Jesse, before we jump back in. Oh, no, Jesse's gone. Okay, see you, Jesse. <laughs> That's all right. We'll talk to you later. It's all good. I think the map's going to be over soon anyway. <laughs> Let's jump back into things. 6-1 the scoreline. W7M able to ward off a historic first map with that 7-0 storyline now put to bed. Does W7M, do they keep fighting this one out, though? Now you got to. It comes down to 1v1. You're gonna keep going, at least until things are over. Again, round by round, either they have to go all the way to overtime or they gotta lose soon because losing like 7-5 again, those energy reserves. But I think you said it well, Sonox, just, it's a free map in their mind, right? That's how you gotta play this mentally, but still try. It's that one round at a time mentality that yeah. needs to be taken here now by W7M. I know it seems difficult and a long journey, but that has to be the mindset here. Forget the scoreboard, take it out of your mind, treat each round as if it's zero, Zero. You cannot let that scoreboard affect you here. Teams have been able to make these gigantic comes comebacks before, and boy, wouldn't it be great if they could do it here at the Six Invitational Grand Final. The other thing as well, even if you fall short, even if it ends 7-3-7-4, you can take that momentum into your next map. You can. Start feeling comfortable in the server, take this as a warm-up, if you will, right? Get everybody active, get their communication flowing, and if you end up feeling better than you started off with, that is a win for WCM here, despite losing. I'm really liking this advanced position from KZ. Oh, already inside of Freezer. Some of those Goyo canisters have been dismissed by JV92, but decent counterplay from FaZe on site. You can see KZ lurking around. Elsewhere, though, it's Herds contesting Cyber in blue. Oh, big impact, though, from Cyber. And I'm not just talking about the nade, it's the fact that he gets the kill, and that really does put a wound for W7M onto their attack. Down a player means they cannot overload these positions on site as easily. Flash plus the smoke to allow the cross back. Really good team play then from FaZe, and Cyber's able to get out of that deep blue position. Vidiking, one more gas babe available, but holding an aggressive close angle as JV92 starts to peek down backstairs. 60 seconds then. Can W7M make it work with the man disadvantage? It's a really tough challenge, especially on a site like Basement Oregon, where you need to have a lot of pressure, but it's KZ to drop Cyber. I think JB's going for a bit of a rotate here. Hatch drop might be the play. Oh, KZ gets the kill. It's KDS. Basement looking for the response. Still able to 
towards elbow. That does need to be cleared out. Philippe Pox there, though, of course, with KZ. Shoulder to shoulder, they can push together. The flash, it's full wide for Vidicky. No response comes through. Three for KZ before it falls to Handy. Trade zone, pillar, one back by FaZe. Down to a two versus one to save me with his battle. Handy versus Philippe Pox to try and seal this map for FaZe. It's down to Handy. Philippe Pox goes hunting. Kit, not with him. Oh! He's down. Dismissing any doubts that this was going to be a runaway for W7M. They have now set that bar high. That they have. I mean, <laughs> I can imagine this being a massive fan of W7M, but seeing that kind of performance on Oregon, we don't see it all that often. And it wasn't anybody that was doing crazy things we've never seen before. They just did that usual good stuff with so much precision for both teams. I guess the one upside for W7M, they can serve a little bit of energy because they're so quick. They certainly can. All right, let's go and see what those on the desk have to say for this opening match. Thank you very much to Gus, Xenox, and Pengu. And I'm sure that as this game continues, there will be no voice left on our casters. Welcome back to the analyst desk. I'm Milos. With me are Fresh, Fabian, and Anne. And let's get started with this game. I think the biggest story for this SI, Fabian, has been attacks win you the game. Has this been the case here? I mean, yeah, it is hard to uh, say anything against. I mean, we saw seven attack wins. How often do we see that on Oregon? I mean, the <laughs> basement bomb site is like, I don't know, so high percentage win rate that it's incredible. And the way that they did it, it's they, they, they didn't make any mistakes. They overwhelmed W7. I mean, every single situation. The timings were so on point that when pressure came from one side, it also came from the other. The map obviously is shaped like an L. That's hard to miss. Yeah. But they were coming in from everywhere at the same time. You you can look at games and you can be like, that is a pinpoint of how to play Oregon. From FaZe, that wasn't a pinpoint of how to play Oregon. That was a pinpoint of how to attack and how to play together as a team. Every single time somebody died, within a second, they were being traded out. A, a teammate was picking up a kill again to keep that man count rolling. And Fresh, since we have you on this, we talked about the, the brother buff, I guess, on both sides and the debuff in the entire game between Handy and Nade. Can we follow up? Who has been winning so far in map one? Well, it was Handy. We, we are going to keep you up to date right throughout this whole grand final. This is kills only onto each other. So you can see that Handy is currently 2-1 kills onto Nade. Nade only got his only kill onto his brother with a smoke toxic babe as well. You got to hand it to him. Hey! <laughs> he got the first kill and the very final kill of the game as well. Really starting and closing it out there. But it showed why FaZe picked this map. They were so confident, like you mentioned, on the attacks, not making a single mistake, always having the right ETNOD, and it showed. I think that the mistakes that were made from W7M side, I don't even think that they were any mistakes, really. Mm -hmm. It's just that they are playing against a team that plays very differently and plays a lot into them. And W7M so far throughout this tournament have not really been punished for their aggression. Huh. And FaZe today, yeah, they didn't allow them to fall back. They didn't allow them to push up. They just kind of stayed away and then took long fights that I don't think we've seen so much from so far. Is it structure? What is it that's winning them fresh? I, I think you've got to, for W7M, you've got to wonder whether it's a little bit of pressure, right? Yeah. I think the pressure, obviously, of a grand final gets to anybody. God, I was, I was scared before coming on this desk. <laughs> but the one thing that I will say is we're so used to see from W7M, Hertz and KZ particularly, is this kind of snowball effect. They pick up one, they pick up two, they pick up three. Yesterday, they were fighting their ways out of multiple crossfires. Today, we've not really seen any multi-kills coming out of those guys in quick succession whatsoever. Bays have just been shutting that down. Yeah, they can get one on the flank, for example, but then are going to get shut down immediately after. And sometimes their confidence need that we saw, it was lacking a bit now. We saw players sitting behind shields, unsure whether they should peek, trying to peek. It looked a little bit shaky. The confidence is missing so far from W7M. Is it lack of confidence or too much respect? It's not too much respect, that's that's for sure. It's just that they have something to lose. That's the thing. We've talked about the Dynasty before. Now they come up and this is the one game they fell almost short against Virtus Pro. Almost. Now they go up against FaZe, which is a more, I would say, a completer team than Virtus Pro. Let's not take anything away from them. They had a great event. But FaZe is that one step above them, and this is the reason why they came from the upper bracket. Have we had any eyes on support play in this map? Because it's very easy to pick out gunfights, especially when it's you know so one-sided on the scoreboard. Have you spotted anything yourself on that? It's mostly the drone work and just the timing of phase, because all that comes down to communication, right? And that usually comes from 
the support that like players behind you calling what they need next or that the players are taking advantage of the information they're being fed by their support players and right now i don't see faces making any mistakes they're not they're really not like that is just literally a perfect map the one thing that i will caveat that with is that was their pick before any maps yeah, were banned. Absolutely. They were supposed to win that map, and it was a very brave pick from them. I think Oregon's always a danger to go with, but they knew how comfortably they were, how comfortable they were going to be on the attack, and they know W7M likes to play a bit slower behind the utility when they're defending it. They were fully ready for W7M. Final thoughts, Sam? Well, I mean, one player that I really want to highlight is Souls. I feel we talked about Cyber being so strong on the entry, but Souls definitely showed up as well, really making it uh, making it easier for them. And even though they got the entries quite often, whenever it was W7M getting the entries, they were immediately punished. So sometimes FaZe could even take an extra kill with that as well. All right, friends, thank you very much. That is map number one, Oregon, going the way of FaZe Clan. This buff crowd here is just not working out. But that is only map one of a best of five series. We'll take a quick break and then fill you in on map two.
And welcome back, everybody, to Six Invitational 2024. For those that don't know, we're almost breaking the viewership record at an Invitational in the entire history of Rainbow Six. So call your grandma, tell her to watch. She's got to be part of this, too. Welcome back to the Analyst Desk. I'm Mel Semetic, your host. With me are my good friends Fresh, Fabian, and Anne. Let's have a chat before we get into map number two in our grand final, W7M versus phase now bank is this map preference do we want to talk details and you have some numbers for us i definitely have some numbers if you it is w7m's that pick and it makes a lot of sense as to why they picked this map they've won m8 out of nine games on it in recent history already beat sonics on this map as well and we talk a lot about attack so far in the street right face they have their second worst attack in win rate on this map but they don't have to start on attack. they can wait it out w7m gets to start on attack but they actually have their second best attack in win rate on this map. 54% of the times that they play an attacking round, they actually win it. There's one thing that we have to watch out for though. Even though it's one of their greatest attack rates, it's the pressure because now it's actually on them. Having such a slow start on the map, even if you start defense, I mean, you should win your defenses. The pressure that they will amount on their heads now is going to be it's going to be monumental how much they're going to think about it. But if we were to compare Oregon and Bank, what's the difference in playstyle? I mean, the, I think they're very similar because the roam clear is kind of the same way. You spread out all around the map and then you squeeze together, right? So we can expect the same thing. They were going to go on the CO windows. They're going to go on Heaven. They're going to come in through AT ATM, into Lobby, up the stairs if they clear top floor. There's going to be very similar playstyle just a different map. I think the big thing for me is the comfort factor. This is W7M's yeah. map pick. They've just played their ninth reference map. They would have banned it if they were able to, right, on Oregon. Now they're into a map that they've not lost this event. They're feeling very comfortable on it. They get to attack, they start attack, they look comfortable on the attack, you know, on Oregon. It was just the round pressure that got to them. So I think we see a different W7M. Are we getting a tie? I think we're going to get a tie, and the biggest reason for it is simply that W7M is an experienced enough team the last year to just be able to let go of this loss and just push forward again. Well, given recent history, we need to see a strong start from them, though, especially on that attacking yeah. half, because we keep on talking how important it is, but they want to make sure they keep up to the numbers that they've been putting up previously. Yes, no? Yes, for W7M. History's going to repeat itself. G2 lost the first map last year, won it 3-1. Thank you very much, my friends. Let's toss it back to our casters, please. Our Tridest, Gus, Xenox, and Pengu. Yes, they certainly did. Fresh, well said. Couldn't have said it better myself. And so far, though, FaZe, they have set the challenge to W7M. That's really what we wanted from this grand final. We certainly didn't want this to be a one-sided affair. Many would have had W7M as the clear favorites. Perfect start for FaZe. I think this was their intention, because JV told me the first day of this event, hey, we want to go lower bracket run and make that miracle victory. What better way than losing the first map? Mm. I mean, W7M's ability to attack here on bank is absolutely ruthless. I cannot wait to see if they can bounce back here. Well, 50-50 once again. Damn, W7M. Nick, do they respond here? Yes, I think they do. They got a map to work with, more roaming around, and of course, they got the confidence, and they love this map. Well, our two-time major champions now need to respond on their very map pick of Bank. We'll see if they can do it. Well, we've set the stage. FaZe Clan are up 1-0 in this grand final, but W7M now onto their own map pick, looking for that redemption, looking for that response. That's kind of what we are expecting here on Bank, attacking into it first as well. So the onus is certainly going to be on them. What can they do to now respond to a FaZe Clan that are clearly here to fight for the hammer? So it's Monty off the board first. Ying as well. Ying is a very, very strong execute-centric operator that we frequently see banned out. And Monty, you think oh. about Bank, so many opportunities for that shield to come into play. The likes of Basement, Top Square, Lobby pushes Banana. Defensively, we'll see the Solace taken out. Interesting, considering we did see it played on Oregon and arguably had quite an effect in the first half. To top things off, Kaid on a map, uh, pardon me, on a hatch-heavy map like Bank, that is an expected ban. What I love to see from a high level of Siege is you see these kind of target other bans come into play. You don't see teams ban Monty unless you expect the opponent to play it at a very high level. The funny thing is, Vidiking, one of the best Monty players at this entire tournament, yet they find themselves in a position where they have to ban it out because what the enemy might do with it, because of them, they start in the attack inside. So here we go, into Bank, second map of this grand final between FaZe and W7M. There's a large contingency 
of W7M fans inside of this arena. We haven't really been able to hear them at full peak so far. It's been FaZe. There's a rather large pocket of FaZe Clan supporters down in the arena, and they have been going non-stop bananas here. To bank we go. And for W7M, we look to them to now respond to the challenge set by FaZe Clan. And I mean, the best way to respond on attack, I mean, guys, you told me right yeah, before we went here, you love their attacks on banks. So if I'm a W7M fan right now, what should I expect from them here? Well, I mean, we had the opportunity to cast them, Jake, against the Sonics, and they are ruthless in their ability to get quick map control. They will find any pocket of space. They will immediately take it. And with the mechanics that W7M typically present, they often win out those opening engagements, then compound that space into what is then a really clean execute. Okay, then I gotta say, we gotta want Cyber handy in these rounds. They were very big in those opening engagements on Oregon, especially Cyber running into his opponent as always, even outside the building. I think it's important for W7M to get off to a good start here, a very strong start, especially yeah. attacking into bank. You need to be very much on the move, clearing out these roamers, especially when it comes to basement. And so far, so good. Haven't lost anyone early. Starting to get a bit of a foothold inside of that. Clearly can tell they want to go for this top square take. Top down to the bottom, clear everything out. Maybe slow things down a little bit, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. The other thing is, we haven't really seen W7 attack that much in this series. You can see KZ there, perfect example. Happy to drone himself forward and then takes the initiative to take that space himself. He's not relying on necessarily his teammates to aid as they're doing other things around the map at the same time. Herds, meanwhile, makes himself known in stock. Hatch will be opened up off the back of the Xkairos from Nade, and that will put pressure in towards that open area position. ADS. Oh! Opening kill. Last oh. though from KZ on the drop through the hatch. Hatch opened up as well inside of open area. Just over 90 seconds left in the round, but again, it's more of a good start from FaZe than it is for W7M. And that's not ideal for the team needing to find the response on their map pick as Handy sits inside of elevators at the very bottom, waiting to see if someone from the side of W7M gets aggressive, pushes over. Philippox is up and around that area towards main stairs, but not going towards elevators, not just yet at the very least. Open area in control for W7M. They still got to go and get to work over towards square. They haven't even opened up at that hatch. I mean, they dropped on the hash of an area. Okay, we're gonna come for those roamers, straight back those numbers from five, five, four versus five to a four before. But all of these immediately when they got that kill, all the way back to side saying, we got the most advantage. Go your canisters, Maestro cams, they got a C4 in pocket. They're all right where they wanna be, so deny the plan, and they have one more gun available as well. And good denial from the defense onto those shock drones. We'll keep those Maestro cameras, those evil eyes alive for a little bit longer to feed more information to the five members standing of phase. Handy with you. Next on to Nade, isn't that fitting? And then a second from KDS as well. So far, it's just stalwart defense from FaZe. There's no chink in this armor. FaZe flawless for the second map, just like the opening of the first. It is a standing ovation from the crowd. And so far, FaZe continue to set the tone. Those in they had to do what exactly? Had to get comfortable in the server, find some ground, and build some familiarity, and will actually win. They played on Oregon when it's all about figuring out the mentality of the opponent, the play style they're bringing, face probably the strongest team in this event at feeling out their opponent. Okay, are they gonna go fast? Are they gonna go slow? Right now, WSM, they cannot figure out their opponent whatsoever. The face fans are making a lot of noise inside of this arena, but there's a large contingency of W7M fans that just look glum. They cannot believe what they are seeing before their very eyes. Yesterday felt like a fever dream, but right now, for W7M, it's turning into a nightmare here at the grand final for Six Invitational 2024. And again, it all started with that from KDS. Disgusting. <laughs> and then cleans it up at the end as well. I think W7M again on their attacks are quite reliant on the defense spreading all the way up to the top floor. That's probably one of the, their strengths in dismantling that setup, quickly forcing defenders back towards site. But as you can see there, those on the defense that were willing to take a risk, to stay in the likes of Elevator, were rewarded. Speaking of the fact that WCM, they might want to go slow, given how Oregon played out, that also just makes the Monty Band that much better, because now you cannot slow the game down in an easy way. Monty, you play it, extend your shield, you walk around, you control the majority of the pacing. Monty being gone, yeah, basically can't play it, but it's not defense. They might not care about that, so WCM are forced to fight. 
on the windows, on the doors, on the rappels. Nothing is free for the taking, which is funny because this is how we used to talk about WCVM when they play defense. So eyes on souls then on the Azami inside. Those keyboard barriers will be pivotal towards the late round. Look, W7M have the tools to deal with that utility. I mean, look at their explosive economy. It's not great outside of the Odgon 6, but that's being used elsewhere, soaked up by the castle barricades of the Rome. Opening kill for W7M. Hurts, finally. Now, though, it's about can they capitalize? They've had a couple of opening kills, but translating those into round wins has proven to be quite difficult for a team they can be so strong once they find the momentum. That's a second. The crowd starting to find their voice. But clearly the fan favorite in W7M, the local favorite. Up two players in an advantage. But so many times on Oregon, this is where they'd start to capitulate. The middle portion of this round, unable to convert on the advantage that they find early on. We'll see if they can do it here with 90 seconds left. I love how they're just slowing things down on the attack. They got those two picks, no risks being taken. No one's exposed themselves to a 1v1 engagement. No one's staying on soft count for a C4. Despite that, we know there are no C4s in play. They're throwing things out, destroying the floor vertically, really setting themselves up for success here, and just playing this safe. Safe, the key word, but also confident. W7M are not giving away anything for free, not giving any conditions for FaZe to get back into the round. FaZe eventually will probably be forced into foot making a play, and it won't be a calculated one in a three versus five. Couple of low HP members as well for W7M. Hurts, JV, to explicitly name them. Souls takes an engagement, loses that one initially. Still very deep insight on the Azami, so I thought the cover of those Giga Barriers. But again, can you watch that stock hat? Very pitiful for this round. Drone makes its way through, only one remaining. Rotates towards Beepers because it's got that main stage control, but not from Elevators. JV with a bit of an odd flank and then doubles down. Finally, double seven M flexing their muscles in the grand final. Nade will get this plant down. Soul as the solo for FaZe in a very perilous position in a one versus four. Not often. W7M can do. A really good example of W7M being able to, to constrict the round. They get the early advantage. As you mentioned, Nick, they then were happy to slow down the pace. Now, slowing down the pace doesn't mean you do nothing. We saw the vertical play. We saw the defenders flushed out. We saw, of course, JV92 then able to sweep in as the defense tried to reclaim that ground whilst avoiding the vert from up above. So all around, really well played by W7M. I agree with you. The thing that's different about like Oregon and Bang is that Oregon, pretty small map, very compartmentalized inside the building. Well, on Bang, you can play on the window repels, on the exterior, and it's such a big, wide open map. So you need to ensure that all your players are in the right positions. And that's what slowing down essentially means, is that you say, oh guys, let's wait for this fifth player so that he is ready for his job, and then we work together. There were a lot of questions about what an all Brazilian grand final would look like in Sao Paulo. But boy, is it living up to all of the expectations set upon it. Sure, it's not Brazil versus the world, but the inter-region rivalry is clearly there. A large fan base for W7M starting to find their voice. FaZe finally has got their opponent for this last dance. The big thing is, right, W7M defined all their success overseas when they are the villain. When the crowd is saying, we don't care if you win, but they're home. They are loved by the crowd. And I do think that the desk said they might be afraid of disappointing their fans that are here because there are so many jerseys from WCBM. There are so many fans talking about them saying they're so good right now, and they are, but that means there's pressure now on them. Back to back majors, but imagine they lose six invitational yeah. back to back. How devastating would that be? In Sao Paulo of all places, right? The one place you want to be if you're from Brazil, if you're one of these players. And it continues the phase dominance over W7M. It's been brought up five and one since SI 2022. Yeah, W7M, the better of the two internationally, but locally. And when these two teams meet, it's been FaZe that has had their number. Oh, Cyber aggressive through the hatch, through the skylight. Cyber holding that no. pillar really well, but overall, numbers were with W7M that time around and starting to just look a little bit more comfortable here in the grand final. Yeah, and it's him taking it slow. If those in them were a little bit quicker there, they would not have three different players holding down their flank. So again, now we see the attack of WCMM reading the pace of the map, figuring out their opponents. And Herds is eager to double down. 
not allowing KDS to have any space over towards Stock Hallway. Some of that utility now dealt with. All the Reteros have been used by W7M. Time is taken. They are advancing slowly towards the bomb side. B's going out, going to give Intel. First time to kill, open things up. Second round in a row, the W7M have got themselves a two-man advantage. Bees go out from the Hive Launcher. Mirror, position, station, into airlock goes for Leapbox. Nade, look for that site plant, it's so far successful. No, denied, Vinaking with an Nitro Cell. Does stop the plant from going down, but it's still a three versus two for W7M. They do not have to panic in this scenario, but here comes Souls, a swing. One inside a stock, through the hole. Oh, People clearly with W7M. 2 1 lead on Bank. And starting to find a foothold here on Bank and in this grand final. I mean, what a play from Herds. The star player for W7M. And many have said that perhaps one of the best players at the moment. If he pops off in this grand final, probably then enters the discussion of some of the best players of all time on full display there, capturing those kills, capturing that control through top square. He looks ruthless. It really is phenomenal just how many different categories you can put W7 M in, best team in the world, best fundamentals, some of the best players, and they've only really been here for quote unquote two years at the big tier one international level. Despite that, they've been the biggest name for us as talent members. Timeout called and just about evaporated as well in said time. An early one. But I like that from FaZe. Pretty clearly yeah. understanding that W7M have found a sense of momentum here in the grand occasion that is an SI Grand Final two rounds in. Crowd on their side. FaZe want to halt that momentum as early as possible. Mind you, Herds gets that kill because of that skylight pressure as well. Essentially a two-on-one. But again, really good clearance from W7M playing off that grip. And they were able to use that numbers advantage really well towards site. 2-1 lead. We head to the basement here at Bank. The big thing to look out for is that FaZe are very good at changing things around when it doesn't work. Not just for the attack, for rotating around the map, also defense, whether it's different bomb sites, different operators, or for example, Cyber not making that aggressive scatter flank early in the round. And if you're the coach, coach that took the timeout, you're probably not gonna talk about, oh guys, you know, wait for the attacks, we're gonna pop off. You're only down a single round. Go. You're talking defense structure, you're talking mentality, you're talking the communication in the server. Or if you're a coach saying, guys, ball. I noticed that we're trying to make plays around the map like an organ, but this is bank. We don't need to be the ones to make the action happen. We do have other win conditions. Play to those win conditions. So smoke and mirror then in play for basement. That said, utility peppered all across the map. We saw the Valkyrie camera just as one instance inside of lobby, but we see rotations. There are windows. Bomb. Open okay, area right, is damn. probably going to make or break this round for either team. Oh. Intel from Hertz. Now, if Souls ever leaves servers free for the taking, Hertz will take it, but there you see it. It's been found out by Souls. Know that Hertz is not moving the drone left or right because that's going to make noise. Just waiting there patiently, seeing if Souls makes a significant misplay or perhaps checks the cameras. JB92 on the Nord, certainly going to be a big factor in this round. If he does go through Garage, try and sneak his way in, that's certainly a possibility. Oh, the Intel game here from both sides. Valkyrie oh, fans, oh, oh. yes, drones on the attack, but you got to act upon this Intel. Now you know the Rome is very much active from face plan, but what are you going to do about it if you're double seeing it? Herds one square. Herds is pushing through. Can he make a play? Herds in towards Archives, trying to clear out this position. Vidiking running around down below. Handy, getting the F-9s ready. So far, though, Herds hasn't found anyone. Cyber. Oh, JB92, has he slipped in? KD6 has got no idea. With the way that he positions, the way that he aims, the timing is everything, and he's still got no chance, no clue at all! The Nook slips in through the night! Five versus four, and again for the third round now, W7M have found the opening engagement, and it has gone their way. And with that, garage control, but I believe JB doesn't get away. No, Cyber catches him on the rotate. Nice kill back for FaZe, evens things up with just over 60 seconds remaining. That's what I love about, you know, Siege. This depth of the C. We don't see him play that often right now, but for Garrick's take, that's the perfect operator. Hides from the Bluetooth camera perfectly. Double Nitro, double Nitro available here for defense. So FaZe still have plans and our potential. Gotta see it now. 
That was the is 4v4, they have the manpower, they got a ton of smokes and flashbangs, they can disrupt the vision of defenders, but those C4s, they don't need to see, they just need to land. Nitrosol in hand for Cyber, puts it away. Lands a couple of tags onto her. It feels like warning shots from what FaZe can do defensively. W7M, they want to go for this plan. The gas phase come out to deny that position. Still time, but now he comes for the drop. In a bit of an unexpected plan. Position doesn't come through the doorway. Gets into a different spot. Oh! Gets his off -fold. Now goes the plant. Doesn't stick it. Anticipating nitrous cells, but they're already expended. Inside of the smoke, he is a skewered when it comes to the vision for FaZe, and that plant will be successful. Now the retake is on for FaZe Clan. They just oh! What kind of madman goes brain inside of a smoke? Response from KZ. Handy card touch up. W7M starting to make the magic happen at the most magical event. Nade might be making his sixth invitational debut, but my word, what a phenomenal support player. Able to drop down, dodges the canisters, then sidesteps a nitro, finds a kill. Gets the pick, goes prone, finds another. What a phenomenal play. We always talk about KC, Hurts, their entries, they get the kills, they're like plus 50 this tournament. I do think that a team is only as good as the backbone, the anchors, the pillars, the supportive play, the network. They drone you in, they give you intel, they make the calls, they get the diffuse down, and yes, while the cover has to be there, look at this from Nate. Perfectly reading the situation oh. on when to advance and when to get the bomb down. And it's not often someone who is tasked with getting that kit down when it comes to lockers and CCTV on bank is going to go for that mega play. No. And he's moving around trying to dodge any potential nitro cells along with those gas pipes. The Eventually then sit inside of the smoke, goes prone, anticipating that clear across over towards CCTV. Perfect game sense. And so far, Nate has been so impressive. I would say there are so many players in that scenario with the pressure so high, they would just hold F on keyboard and pray the bomb goes down because the enemy will miss the C4, but the best best in the world, they don't pray for the right opportunity, they create the opportunity, they make the space, and they make the play. Alrighty then, top four we go, round number five, W7M rolling this momentum forward on attack, and well and truly silencing the doubters after a disastrous map number one. As mentioned, top four, Mirror back in play, Castle as well, Azami barricades as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of utility once again for the attack to deal with, but they have the explosive tools to do so. That's the thing, though. We've seen phase down three rounds play util in basement on the roam, in basement on site, now here in CEO. The util isn't really working. Yeah, you got the mirror windows, you got the castle barricades, but not round defining for defense. It comes down to the brawl on the bomb site, the gunplay, the trading, and most importantly, the opening kill. Who can play that round five versus four and maintain that momentum? And the Valkyrie as well is in play. Now, often we don't get to see just how much value that is providing because we don't know exactly who's watching what cams at any given time. But if they're not found, just like that, they can be deadly. So some really good drone work again from Nade. Oh boy, Hurts on the IQ, he's gonna find that camera, like, yeah, there it is, yep. he's one, and sees the other, so they put one can a little bit more, obviously, hit the second one, but this will be a dark air map in two seconds. 90 seconds left in this fifth round so far, W7M have found the response that they absolutely required coming into the second map for the grand final phase. Just feels like momentarily on the ropes. Can they get a counter punch in? Can they find a way to get an opening kill? So far, the early engagements have been going the way of W7M very consistently here on Bank. It's very evident that FaZe are sitting back right now, saying, guys, don't make the active play. Let them come in, then play together. No one's swinging, no one's taking risks, but they're giving them too much space in the attack. They're at the bomb site with a minute left in the 5v5. One minute left into top square they go, opening up these sight lines. There will be a contest though from FaZe. Stock hallway still in their face. The keeper better to plug the hole. Salt gets aggressive. How Nade hasn't got the clue to be aware of the position he's standing in. Four versus four. Great job from Hurts to at least get that, that quick little, oh. little comeback kill. KZ onto Cyber. W7M retake the advantage with 30 seconds left. The flash KDS for White. He's wary though of a stock push, but no one's coming from that direction. Handy to fall as well. Advantage still W7M though. They continue on. Forward, marching towards this site, finding kill after kill, down a bit of king in a one versus three. He will fight one, no! <laughs> probably should have got that one, but not to be, and that probably says everything for W7M on bank. It's all going their way. 
Lee. And again, it's Herds over towards that top square into stock hallway position. Now, perhaps W7M probably shouldn't have let that first pick go against them with that player on drone, but a very snappy trade. He pushes into sight, able to find even more pressure. He just thrives in that particular part of bank. That's the big thing about this being an even matchup. We're not seeing those usual multi-kills from WSM where they find two, three, four kills in quick succession. We're seeing trades most in the beginning, one for ones or one for zero. But that round we just witnessed was the first time with WSM, they get three kills very quickly because Hertz, he finds that opening and it's all because of the IQ. Hertz finding the Valkams, all three I believe, walks into sight, doesn't plan, holds it down, waits for people. They know FaZe will go for those pushes because it did earlier. We saw Souls get the opening, but again, the trade was perfect as a response. And Herds there again, electing not to go for the plant heading into this match. A 21 plant percentage for W7M. FaZe edged them out in that regard at 25. But there's always that moment for the attack to just set things up and make that decision. Do you go for the plant? Do you go for kills? And yeah. given the positions in which the attack had, that was the more favorable condition. And that's why W7M is so strong on attack. Oh boy, Brava info here. The value, of course, if you don't know what the subreddit does, well, you can hack Intel. That means you disable it, fall the defense, and it becomes yours. So now those finger mines, if a defender walks in there and is activated, they will get nearsighted instead. So this gives you Intel, and it takes away some the enemy. Final round of the half here for W7M's map pick. Looking to take a 5-1 advantage into the second half. A very significant advantage that would be. FaZe desperate now to find a second defensive round. It should be said, attacking on bank is very prevalent. A second defensive round could be enough for FaZe to maybe allow them to have a comeback potential in that second half. Handy on the road, oh. take that by Hurts. Yeah, W7M have got good control of this map, have they not, so far, in this first half? And again, Herds is commanding map control. He's warding the defense away, catching them off guard on rotations, and now W7M can lean into this significant advantage for the majority of this action phase. This is the strongest round so far from WCNM. Minute 45, opening kill. They got all the shields, Util, and now Cyber down to a single point of health. No, he's gone. Yeah, and those are the kind of fights as well. The back on Oregon, FaZe were winning time and time again. But here on Bank, W7M have been able to get them to go into their advantage. And again, for what feels like the third or fourth time, a two-player advantage. Now, though, in the final round of this half, oh. Sorrels has got a big oh. task. He's cut off. Hatch opened up, stuck over towards blue stairs. He needs to hold this position. SMG now in hand. He has two gas canisters to clutch up for phase. Goyo canister as well will implode, and that just gives him a little bit of time to set himself up. See the flank though, third time on Souls. What to fight multiple angles here. Has to make the right decisions with no intel, just game sense. 50 seconds remaining. Can phase. Get a clutch round to close this half. Keep themselves close on that scoreboard. W7M though, they've been good, so good at overwhelming these side positions, winning these fights. But KDS, able to get one. Souls to fall, couldn't hold out towards Blue Stairs. And certainly couldn't take anyone with him. Trades go out, two versus two. Suddenly FaZe have brought it back. With 30 seconds left in the round, it's a two stack on site. KZ and Hertz, where's the kid though? And they fall! Angle foul from Vidiking. Hurts knows the KDS is here, close left in garage, expecting maybe the swing from Bitterking. Hasn't come just yet. Time, a huge factor. Doesn't have gear, oh, but he finds the kill. He's got to go hunting. Main stairs, though, is where the kid is. Could grab yeah, it, doesn't elect to. Hurts now has got red time to find this kill onto Vidiking. Vidiking just has to hide. That's all he needs to do. Don't make a step, don't make anything go wrong. He's getting closer. Oh, oh too close for comfort, but Vidiking holds on. And FaZe do clutch it out at the end of the half. Two to four. But W7M still take the lead going into our second half. FaZe did not play a conventional bank basement there in my, in my eyes. It's three versus five. And they are spread so widely across the entire bomb site. We got Souls, Server Stairs, we have KDS involved, and that third player in the middle. They have basically a line with a middle link. No one had backup. No one could help one another. So they have to rely on individual gun skill to try and even back those numbers. And they do it successfully. All right, let's go and have a listen in with Jesse on his thoughts from that opening half. 
Hello, Guz, Xenox, and Pengu. I'm coming to you at the half point to tell you to keep an eye on Cyber for the second half. Despite the fact that he's had a pretty rocky map so far, the last time that FaZe Clan played on bank was in the upper bracket against Los. And that happened to be Cyber's strongest map through the entire Six Invitational so far. He had an EPS of 163. And most of Cyber's success in that last play on bank came onto the attack. He loves to play Buck when they're attacking in on the basement or when they're attacking open area. He'll typically choose the Ash if they're attacking top floor or if they're going to Teller's Archives. Sometimes he will pull out that IQ if they want to go and deal with some Valkyrie cameras if that's causing them any problems. So I know it's been a rough game so far. I know Herds has kind of been rolling over FaZe Clan, but watch out for Cyber because this is one of the maps where he does amazing things. All right, Jesse, just for a quick one here. What do we have to watch for W7M in response? For W7M, I want to see them getting aggressive to shut them down. If there's a buck over on your map, maybe below your bomb site, maybe above your bomb site, you got to get active, you got to take them down early. That needs to be the key for W7M. Right, thank you, Jesse. Thank you, so much, Jesse. thank you very much. So, seventh round to begin the second half, oh. and a great start from Sol as well. Jesse was mentioning aggressiveness on defense for W7M, but through stock, an opening kill for Sol, so that's the perfect start for FaZe. And I really like what Jesse mentioned as well with Cyber as we get a look back at that oh replay. God. Cyber on Buck gets super quick map control, ridiculously quick, especially transitioning in towards that open area position. Nade is holding that currently. He is though on drone and he'll look up above Cake and low. Doesn't elect to drop the hat straight away though. Could be a very aggressive start here. FaZe has already got Nade in a very perilous position, stuck inside of open area, goes for the spray. Now expecting response from that stock hatch, but no drop to come through just yet. KZ loved his position though over towards main stairs. Close angle, shotgun, and he should be good from there. No! What? KDS, I mean, he did have a slight high ground advantage and then shot through the stock wall. The retreating for Lee Pox cannot get very far. And a five versus two start from FaZe. So quick in their approach to get inside of the map. And they are just slaughtering through this defense of W7M. That last round of the opening half proving to be so pivotal. If FaZe are going to play like this, W7M are in for a treat. Great shot from JV92, but the pressure won't stop there. No, from main stairs, it's KDS. FaZe make it 3-4. That's a statement. We have gone through the last, what, two weeks or so saying, Defender cited this, Defender cited that. The numbers very much proved that it was indeed for a very long while a heavily Defender cited meta. But as more teams have gone home, as we've seen who the best teams in the world are in the current present time of Siege, that number doesn't matter anymore. Defense or attack, if you're a phenomenal team, which both of these two are, it doesn't matter what side you're on, it matters what you do in every single round. But, but what about that time of entry though for FaZe? We don't typically see that from them. Back on Oregon, it was this concise gameplay, worked, clearly played the map well. Now they come over to bank attack and it's like, let's go fast. Off the fact that they got that opening pick through the barricade into stock. I mean, talk <laughs> about an opening start from there. They just felt like, let's play off of that. Yeah, I mean, confidence was really flowing from them. Nate then put under a lot of pressure inside of open area. That's why W7M <laughs> tried to react and hold main stairs so that they could fortify that position. Didn't work out. They simply didn't win their engagements uh, when they tried to transition. So some really, really good work there from FaZe. And I tell you what, this second half is going to be very, very spicy. I do want to say, though, it was so quick because there were a couple of drones yeah, inside open air from the prep phase of things. And that shouldn't happen, but it is because look who they banned. They banned they ban Ying and Solis. So now you're on defense. Face, they are an intel reliant team. They don't know where those drones are from the attackers, and that's why the attack was so quick. They had drones in open area, drones in heaven, entries, run the building, block the floor open, and you just feel like you're under so much pressure from the get-go on defense, and you, now we see them, they banned the Solis. To top four we go then for round number eight. It's a double, in fact, triple hard breach lineup here from FaZe. Not that. You have Habana, Ace, and Thermite. So you'll be able to open up Kanto Wall. You'll be able to open up the main walls as well and apply pressure onto this defensive structure. Yep, being stabbed in peak apart here. The big question mark now, the mirror windows. How much value can you get? There's no Ash, there's no Kali, no real counterplay from FaZe in that regard. In fact, they don't have smoke grenades, so those mirror windows, that intel, will likely stay up the entire round. I mean, I think it's just the ranged hard breach, right? You've got to combo Habata and or Ace to clear those positions without the likes of a Capital as mentioned. Yep, let's see. 
Hurst took the advance on the window. Might go for a punch and a quick peek with the right timing. He might find Cyber from behind. Yeah, Cyber just outside Terrace, wanting to make his way in towards Mott Square. Oh. Has done it. No! A couple of seconds later, and Hurst may have missed that opportunity. Great opening kill for W7. That's the kind of aggression that Jesse told us at halftime. He's expecting. He desires from W7. But one back from KDS. Really strong kill. Oh, that just off of her to see even stronger, and it makes its impact known. Once again, a four on three. We know how important the Rapole game is, so a huge Nitro there. Can that potentially make things easier for W7M? They now have the man advantage. They have line of sight towards that plant position. It's up to FaZe to create a play. Yeah, but they have no one inside of... Well, sorry. They have okay. one inside of Janitors. That's the one player that can stop this plant. Because there's no C4s, if you clear out Janitors, they can maybe plant here. 50 seconds left and four on three for W7M. Faze started to go for that top square push. Third in the round, Herds. Oh, my God! Oh, yeah. It's a quad kill from Herds. The back-to-back -back major champions have arrived here at the arena. Well and truly. Sure. W7M set the challenge, but these guys are up for the task of responding. Up 5-3 now on bank. Gentlemen, we now officially have a great series ahead of us because we saw our oh no. We saw Kawansi and Bank going, oh no, not the 0 2, right? No, no. When that's the performance that you see, they're here to play. Look at that crowd. What it means for these fantastic fans of South moment on the repel night yourself denies phase and when you're playing CEO executive you need the repel game to be strong herds has just come alive yeah on this second map that look it, it's hard to be critical of phase Nick because it every team struggles to shut him down yeah that's the thing I'm not gonna go and say oh you know phase they missed this or they missed that no that's just hurts probably the best player in the world right now not for like the last year basically so you know what this is why they say my name as one of the strongest Korean players. 15 and 5. Yeah, 15 and 5 is a statement. And I was going to say Philippe Ops as well, not to put a dampener well. on things. Yeah, 1 and 6, but playing very difficult positions like Azami on site. No, you can feel that pressure. You've got to deal with Repel. You've got to deal with Top Square looking to open up sight lines into sight. You don't have a lot of help. You're kind of stuck on an island. He's been playing those kind of roles now on the Warden. The only thing I would ask of him is can he survive a little longer in the round? He needs to have that impact on the Warden. So the Capital has now been brought out. Direct counterplay to the Mirror, looking to dislodge those positions. We've seen in the past the Mirror from W7. Well, I mean, oh. obviously the last round, it can be very challenging for the attack to deal with. Hurd is hiding inside of open area. He's gone mid drone so far. Oh. And based on the counter capital, don't let him get to site to execute 5v5. This play right now work up. Hurd finds one, but it's not done. Make that six in a right for Hurd. He does finally get shut down. Nice lit up from Cyber. A one and done kind of position. But he did get his one. Now makes it a four versus four for FaZe. I don't think that's such a bad thing. No, I certainly think this heavily favors defense. Melusi died. Not needed for the plant deny, not needed for side. It's a gun for hire, and the gun, well, you got one and a half kills. Well, you're exactly right. Three gas babes still available for KZ. Double Nitro as well. I'm presuming that the mirror windows are still standing. I don't think we've seen those necessarily dislodged by the shock drones from Vidiking. So yep. W7M arguably still in a very good position. Going live. I agree. I mean, time as well, right? There's still a minute and 10. Hatch is getting opened up. And this time around, the big difference is server is free for the taking. Yeah, that certainly is. The minute will last for a very long time. Yeah, no blue stairs hold either. So it does mean at least for W7M, they will have those gas babes. KZ will be the one to watch in that regard. Couple of nitro cells as well. Two, in fact, JV92 and Philippox. They've still got garage control. That's where Nade is going to be holding. Red from Philippox, so important. Souls to open up with secondary hard breach. 40 seconds left in a four on four as W7M are seeking that map point. Again, three gas canisters, two nitro cells, a default plant here. 30 Four seconds should be a challenge. There's not a lot of time. 
It makes it a very difficult task now for FaZe Clan. One that they need to overcome from a very difficult position. One final gas bait thrown by KZ to deny further incendiary from Sol. It is KDS that finds a kill. Suddenly they've got Elevator. They've got the back of the site opened up. W7M could get pinched here. They get a very crucial kill off the Cyber. Needed that. Sol now can make his way into a fight. Oh, he's dropping out to Sol. He's dropping out to Sol. Sol's to play behind the bomb chassis. He has to stick it. There's no time. He went to stick it. He went to the time. What do you make of this, guys? Honestly, what do you make of this? I mean, it's just insane. What an insane round there. Great response. And the crowd is rallying behind W7M. Now on match point here on bank. Map point on bank, more specifically. 6-3 lead. And it doesn't look like they'll be taken down from here. It looked like W7M and Oregon, they had no solutions at all. And on bank, it's all they have in so many different ways as well. It looks like the attack might go sideways. C4 comes flying out as well, just oh, denying oh, it. I, I don't know. I, I don't think it did get to that. I think it got that kill, but still, regardless, plan couldn't go down. You saw that at that very last moment, Souls tried to stick it, ran out of time. But in these clutch moments, Nick, this has been a massive turnaround, a shape shift from W7M here yeah. on this map of bank compared to what we saw on Oregon, where they struggled immensely. They couldn't get involved. FaZe were so dominant. They were able to get very significant early advantages. That has changed clearly here on bank. Three map points looking to respond to that earlier map of Oregon in style from our back-to-back -back major champions, looking to now claim a map for themselves here for the grand final, and the crowd is getting right behind them. I like to believe that WZM's talent is to pacify their opponents. If they have a star player, they'll shut him down. If a team tends to play super overly aggressive, they'll shut that down too. And while it didn't work out on Origin, which is a map that WZM do not like playing, they pick bank. And it is working for them right here. They're sure, Cyber's still quick to the punch. He's 4 and 8. He's always trading his life for something, never going to get the initial kill. WZM, and they're doing a great job and denying them entries. Very quick control over towards top blue. We saw the Kiba barrier set up in stock above open area. That's going to be a challenge for the attack to clear, but the Amaru might come from down below. Souls will prepare, wait for the call. Will this work for FaZe? Only one on site. That's JV, 1v5 basically. We saw them go fast there earlier go. on. There's the Amaru grapple hook up through the hatch. Cyber got that open kill, that opens down. Oh, the pressure there. Oh, oh, Cyber through stuff makes it a three on three. Handy though also re establishes that lead for phase. Down to Nade and Hurts to bring this back in the round. There is the down onto Cyber, so it's essentially a two versus two. Still, with 90 seconds left, but FaZe have got themselves side control. Kit though out of hand, still outside. And Nade had to run outside, so Hurts, the sole member on site, he's now being flushed out. Can FaZe constrict site and try and get that plant down. Hurts with beepers control, playing off of the info. Cyber trying to get as he crawls forward. Do they go for the revive? Yes, they do. Hurts is down to beepers. Nade, in a one versus three. Comes in from behind, couple of low members for FaZe, but he can't connect the shot to FaZe. They withstand one of three map points. FaZe did not have the diffuser in hand towards the end there. So a huge couple of kills. Again, with Nade jumping outside, they had a read in the three versus one. Nade, a huge clutch player though, so they've done a clinical job in shutting out that round and extending bank at least a little while longer. It's so important there for FaZe that all the members acted together. There was only JV on side from WSMM, but we saw quickly Hertz KC dropping down hatches, trying to help him out. But the fact that FaZe was so close together, the response was instant. You see here, outside side window, Cyber in double door. The moment they get the kill, WSM, they drop with reinforcements, and KC almost made the hero oh. play, almost getting a 3k. I mean, I think he did in some ways. He did his job, he got two. He was yeah. able to kind of just at least bring the round back for W7M so that they had a chance. A chance, though, that, of course, still was squandered. For FaZe, yeah, that's one. Two more to go, though, when it comes to these map points that W7M have still got acquired in their back pocket. Four to six is the scoreline. Phase withstand one.
of these defensive rounds of W7M. They've got to keep attacking, and I like the pace that they are also bringing here on bank. Again, when you think about the time on entry for phase, yeah, typically on the slower side, we haven't seen that from them. If they feel they've got an opportunity to go fast, hit site, they're doing it. And as we edge closer and closer to a potential overtime, a timely reminder that at the 6th Invitational Grand Final, we have infinite overtime oh. in play. I'm just saying. Mindset! Don't tease me like that, guys, because I want to see it. I really do. Take us all the way. It can be mapped too, I don't care. But we got to go there at some point. Oh, man. Base went for a quick side rush last round. Of course, it's not going to happen again. They're going to slow it down here. Got the Grimbies as one of the big wing conditions. We saw Hurts last time on CEO playing aggressive between the windows. That's the only Nitro Cell they've got. So we think about that Repel game last time out, very strong in trying to deny that from W7M. Well, this is the only Nitro Cell to really try and deal with that. Will it work? KDS precariously close. But it doesn't. I believe it has been exploded. In fact, it has been used. Herzlo will hold the position at least temporarily. And mind saying, there's no Capital, there's no Nates in the meta. You can just chill in the corner of your Hurts. He cannot be cleared unless they go downstairs below. So he can just relax. Oh, oh Mirror Market, Handy gets a kill on the Hurts. Lo and behold, that means quite a lot for FaZe now as they can start to push into the map from other avenues. Say stock, say top square, don't have to put everything into this Repel game. Interesting. The ankle there once been lovely repelled. Find that kill from Handy on Kanto. Yeah, long lines of sight. Now there's him on the back foot. No C4, no plant denied, but they have genders control with that mirror window or that position at least. That might get them somewhere. KZ senses that this is an important part of the map to hold, but it's JV92 as is often the case to step up this time around. KZ eventually produces results, and it's now a four versus three in favor of W7M. Yeah, it becomes a big issue now for FaZe. They don't have the numbers in terms of hitting site quickly. They're still very much outside of the map. Three, all of them are outside, still on these repels as well. Trying to maybe get lucky, find one through Kanto, the wall near the elevators, KDS. Oh. And it's a double no, it's just the one swing in towards Airlock. He has been able to get in successfully with the kid in hand as well. Red Pink trying to clear front test, needs to, does, barely stays alive. Oh. And Handy is well by the second of the round, but Janitor, strong on the defense, and KZ, three! And one versus two now, Vidikin, can he keep FaZe alive? Still has time, but no kids in front of him behind the sofa. Two versus one. You do not need to peek if you're W7M. Absolutely make no movement, no noise, no sound. And JV has not given away his position. Now swings, I'll kill, you're kidding me, Vidikin! To do it like this on an SI Grand Final now creates the one versus one into red time. KZ can play the time. He doesn't have to do anything. Just allow him to plant and then swing at the last second. Vinny King cannot get off of this now. He sticks. He sticks it all the way. Pros do not fake. Not at this level. KZ to win the map. No! We have not finished on bank. FaZe have got unfinished business. W7M, you are not taking it this easy. A 12th round is required. Vidiki might be a support player. He might plan down the diffuser. He might dabble on Mons on occasions. But in the 1v1, down on match point, he will find the kill and he will take FaZe further into bank. I mean, there's a reason I picked him for my fantasy team. <laughs> the rest of my team might have been pretty ordinary, but I tell you what, this man is absolutely key to the success for FaZe. Now one round away from potential OT. I mean, let's replay that round, just the ending at least. Rapple in, unlock, that double in the position never goes well. Yeah, yeah. But the keeper barriers, arguably, working in favor of the attackers. They had a little bit of cover. And also here yeah, we see the angle that Handy found. So the Rapple on in, we see the keeper right there on the screen, the H chassis, it gets them in the building. But does he need to pick that? Does JB need to make that presence known? He had obviously the kit in front of him. That then loses that position. You then lose the kit. You then allow that 1v1 because of the post plan scenario that happened because he got that plant. JV probably is better of oh. dying and getting swung on from his teammate. Unfortunately, these little moments, though, at this level, will get punished. And we saw that from Vidiking. Here's the thing. When the stakes are this high, when the crowd is getting so loud, you probably can't hear all that much as a player. Nah. And those small micro decisions, you will make a misstep at some point. It was a small mistake, but it did have an effect on the outcome of that round.
Well, the neutrals now begin to pray for overtime, <laughs> oh. sensing that this match deserves it. Come on. Vidiking, diffuser in hand off the back of a huge clutch to keep his team's chances alive here on bank. Now, mind you, phase win this map, suddenly you're up 2 nothing in a grand final. Yeah. And suddenly then you can find yourself one map away from winning said grand final. It would put so much pressure on W7M. Even then, more so coupled with the fact that you had a six on three lead, the fact that you had three chances to close this out on your map, this is a massive round for W7M. Phase it's a free punch. They get a chance to send us to that infinite overtime. Yeah, good thing though, I would say, those of them, they are on defense. They will set up the structure, the problems of phase they have to solve. And I would say, when the pressure is like this, that's where you want to be. You make the enemy make the first move. You make them feel the pressure because the star right now is also phase. They might just lose okay. this map. Oh. Oh. Now that was a, a half-hearted swing. Didn't want to overcommit. Exactly. And, and to be fair, nothing wrong with that. It's more of a close angle check, I think, more than anything. 90 seconds left in the round. How quickly the time can dissipate for FaZe. That's okay, they still got five players up, but for W7M, they've given up that map control. Firmly on site, down in basement, and it all comes down to this round now to see whether we go to overtime. Denial is there for W7M in terms of the plan. One Nitro Salt, that's for Lee Pox, the three gas pavers of Nade, and that's basically it. They don't have much else on the defense to deny a server push. And we're back to classic FaZe. It's the calm before the storm. A five versus five, a ton of utility still available for both teams as we close into the last 60 seconds. Will we go to overtime? So, 50 seconds left and still a five versus five. Who can create the opening punch that could have such devastating ramifications? Cyber through blue, and a mute chairman for good measure as he gets rid of that keeper barrier. Time the biggest factor. It's an ally now for W7M. Still two gas babes needs to be dealt with. How do you do that? You probably push through the rotate in deep towards site. Planted the bomb chassis. Could even drop hatch if need be, but Souls is not there with the kit. Now running up blue. They're opting for a change up with 20 seconds left in the round. They have now gone for a hatch drop through Souls. The incendiary bolt to clear oh, out. Oh, right there. You could have just shot him with your gun. It's Davey that gets the open to kill. Suddenly it's falling apart the face. The drop is unsuccessful. It's advantage for W7M. Time the biggest factor. Souls has the second inside of the plan. That just out doesn't hit the mark. Drop down KDS. Getting by the kill. He has to the kill. Are you kidding me? Listen to Brazil. As their local team gets a map in this grand stage of six invitational grand finals. You respond deadly from W7M. They're not going to overtime, they're gonna lock it out 7 5. They're here to play, they want it, and now the crowd reacting this way. They also know they have to support despite that like sloppy start. Yeah, 16 kills. What a performance, and what a map. W7M, they've tied it all up. 1 1, back to the desk. We have a game on our hands. Guns, that I expect you, thank you very much. And what a comeback. We almost went into overtime. And a reminder for everybody, it is unlimited overtime on every single map of this best of five series. And we almost had it on map two. But you know what? We got at the end of it a tie one to one. Welcome to the analyst desk. I'm Mel Medic. With me are Fresh, Fabian, and Anlan. Let's get straight into it. Attack information, W7M bring it back. Yeah, W7M, of course, we talked about they had to start on attack on this map, and they had an amazing start to this map. But I think that moment mainly came down to the fact that they had the information on these roamers. They had the right utility to deal with the setup that Face was bringing out as well. They had the Twitch to make sure they could deal with the Goyo canisters. They had the IQ to make sure that they could deal with the information that was coming out from Face. They were bringing the right things, and their players were stepping up too. The players were stepping up massively. They were just playing a lot better than what they were on the first map, and it clearly, clearly shows. And I think there's a reason for that. I think the reason for that is the fact that they are so familiar yep. and comfortable with the map of Bank. They've obviously just been spanked on Oregon. They get onto Bank and they're thinking, right, what can we do? We're on a familiar map. We've got good information. Cool. That's allowed their players to settle down and settle into that process. I said on Oregon we didn't see the multi-kills coming out of JV, out of KZ. That's what we saw on this map. We saw all three of their frontline fraggers bringing in big multi-kills, one after the other after the other, and that's because of all of those factors coming together. 
And Hertz was incredible, Fabian. Let's highlight yeah. our player and talk about him. I mean, Hertz just stepped up massively, especially in the first half. He went absolutely insane. And you talked about the multi-kills, Jack. Yeah. He just killed everybody. Anything that came into his scope was dead the second they stepped into it. And if, if, you, if you have a game like this, there's nothing that's going to stop you. Like, he just hits everything. On top of this, I think that we need to highlight, not maybe on the graf graphic, but Casey's map as well was yeah. incredible. It's just, when you have players to step up in the comfortable zone, where they feel like, okay, we're at home in this map, you add on top of that gun skill, that gun skill what's to stop them? Getting an ace in the round and the highlight that we see, that signifies a lot of comfort. Is that the case for this entire team here at W7M Fresh? Yeah, I think so. I think, like you say, you get them on the map pick, you get comfortable, and once you get over that line, they didn't really play Oregon at all. Let's be honest. It's yeah, yeah. Seven they, they didn't. Once they get over that line, and each individual player had a big moment in that game on that front line. The win condition for W7M is the gun skill. It's the fact they get these rounds over the line by playing the man advantages, stringing these kills together, and that's what happened on back. Each player had a moment. JV had a 4K, Hertz had an ace, KZ had consistent... 3Ks on top of 3Ks. Once they, they've got that hoodoo off their backs, they look so much more comfortable. Especially on the first one, they had a bit of a slower one, really dying on those entry engagements. But maybe in this case, they're more like those diesel engines that need a little bit of time, like you said, more so comfort on that second map as well to make sure they really could step up for the team. I think now we've seen the first two maps, we have seen both the maps that the team wanted for themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. I think if we look at it still a little bit objectively, FaZe absolutely demolished W7M on the map that they wanted. Now we had it to what FaZe or what W7M wanted themselves, and I don't think the demolishment was as close. I think that even if you look at the last round, FaZe execution on that round was pretty poor, and if that's how close it is when they're still playing pretty poor. I want to see when we go back to FaZe's map if they can come back to that demolishing round. Reminder that FaZe Clan came in from the top seed, which gave them that map ban advantage, which is how they got on Oregon and were able to execute so well. And Fabian Fresh, thank you very much. That is our post map for map number two. Alpha Mado is standing up for a Talistration section. Explain. Take a look now at how W7M is able to roam clear on bank. Now, we're taking a look at the defense from phase on open space, but extending here on the top floor. Now, how do you do that? You need two entries. That's W7M pressuring the roamers here by preventing them to go into CEO and meeting. At the same time, now you've got two cutoffs. The first one from main is preventing main retake, and at the same time, punishing any rotation from meeting to the staircase. The fourth cutoff is very powerful. Through a long angle, through meeting stock, uh, and stock walls, is pressuring meeting. Now, basically, one and two, they create pressure. Three and four, they punish pressure. That's exactly what it's going to look like when we take a look at the round. Casey, Felipox pressuring from the entries, and this is her, it's holding a long angle onto meeting. He will get a first pick of movement created by the entries. And the second cutoff here on main will punish via the long angle the roamer onto the staircase. Really clean, roam clear from W7M, but it's not finished. They need to finish the round here. It's a 5v3. How do you execute? Your rappel on main needs to go through main and pressure the elevator hallway. At the same time, the rest of the team, the core here, is preparing the execute with the two hatches and especially the Grim that will send the swarm, the swarm bees onto the bomb site. And Hertz will come back through open space window. We let the round play route here. JV pressuring from main gets the first pick on the anchor and at the same time the pick on his trade. At this point, it's a five v one. It's going at the same time with the execute. The swarmings are, are preventing anyone from being in the defense on the site. Easy collapse from W7M, really strong room clear, really strong execute. That's W7M in attack for you on bank. If you want to see more from W7M versus phase, map three is coming after a short break.
Welcome back, everybody, to Six Invitational 2024. Map number three is upon us, and that is Skyscraper. I'll be honest, I think all the way up at that building, they can hear the crowd here. Hundreds of stories all the way in South Korea. They can still hear 10,000 fans in Brazil and over 350,000 of you watching and screaming at home. We've broken records, so many of them here at SI, and we have some more to break through. Ceilings, they don't exist in Rainbow Six. Welcome back. Map number three about to begin. I'm Elsa Medic, your host. With me are Fresh, Fabian, and Anne, and let's get it started immediately. These teams, Skyscraper, what's their record looking like? Well, something else is going to get broken here for sure, because both these teams have been unbeaten on this map since September. But for one team, of course, that is going to change here. This is FaZe's map pick, the opportunity for them to bring it back into the lead and they almost bought up to overtime last time on the bank though and something that they were doing very well was sometimes on the defense of w7m when they were cheeking for these opportunities or they were trying to sneak past the attacking line face was able to punish them for that very well Fabian, play style on Skyscraper, how does it look like? So I think that the map in itself plays out a little bit different because I think there are more hard corners and hard covers in defense that they can be used like. We've seen a very attacker favorite bo or maps so far. Both maps have been very much dominated by, I would say, very good attacks. But I think it's harder on Skyscraper. More crossfires available. It's harder to enter the building to begin with. So I think we're going to see more defense wins on this map. And this is where we will see the play style differences between the two teams. This map layers it perfectly. As for being said, defense is a layer. Now, the biggest thing for that is W7M tend to just go through the layers. Would that be good skill or utility? Base, they might look to go around those layers. Closing thoughts, Anne. Something I'm looking forward to is seeing Cyber on the buck. I mean, Jesse mentioned it during the call-in of that second map as well. He can really shine on that on the entry with the shotgun, with the close range, long range engagements. That's something I want to see from FaZe on their attacking half. Well, friends, thank you. Thank you so very much, Anne, Fresh, and Fabian. Who takes it here? Will we have extra maps? How is it going to go? Are we feeling W7M or FaZe? W7M? Yo. I think FaZe will take it, that's for, that's what in my book. Because I just think the map fits their playstyle better, more crossfires, and I think they're a more technical team. WCMM are more gun heavy, and I don't think the map fits, the map fits that well into that. Plays up. <laughs> yeah, that's it's an easy one to go for. Actually, since you say this, we actually got an extra couple of minutes to talk oh, about things. So we thank production for that. Jack, I'm sorry I cut you off. You This crowd just got so loud. Would you mind repeating? Well, you had a point on Skyscraper. I had to cut you yeah. off, unfortunately, but please go so, ahead. So, W7M never picked Skyscraper. It's not, uh, by preference, it's not a high preference map. However, they always leave it open. They're always happy to go there. And the reason, there's two things for that. One, the map actually suits the way that they, you know, they attack with the, the split attacks because of the way that you can cut off between the terrace window and the shrine window, and then you can segment the map. And two, as Fabian said, it should be a defender-sided map because those who can't attack in that style struggle with the sweeps from across. So W7M actually love to play the map. It's just not a high preference for them. G2 yesterday picked into W7M and they found out why. Well, and you talked about Bucks specifically here, but Fabian, what do you think we can see operator-wise on this map and who is the player to watch for those specific ops? I mean, what we've seen a lot of from W7M is Clash and Monty. This is a map where Monty plays in really well, so FaZe might want to get rid of that. I'm also a little bit worried for Ying. Ying is such a good operator to clear out all these hard corner obstacles or hard to enter positions where you just Ying inside and you get past all of that cover because, well, they can't see you coming in. Who do you have to watch on the other side of phase and I mean, I mentioned Cyber, you're definitely going to have to watch him. Souls has been amazing on those yeah. entries as well. Something I just remembered, though, during a Yunjiping Major, W7M actually beat Liquid, another team from Brazil, 7-0 on this map. So they're definitely wow. going to feel comfortable on this one. All right, my friends, we are ready for our third map. Fresh, Fabian, and... You know, yeah. you know, yes, I okay. have a third team. I think Jinx is going to win this game. Oh, God, here oh, he is. Oh, no, okay. Here he is. Thank you very much for that, friends. Uh, let's toss it back to our casters. Map number three. Yeah, and clearly a very defensive-sided map, Skyscraper. Very much the most defensive-sided map that we have at the tournament thus far. But so far, these two teams have been attacking really, really well. So I'm curious to see what's going to prevail, attack or defense? I mean, W7M have awoken from their little slumber on map number one. Herds as well, yeah. out of hibernation. And this third map is going to be absolutely wild. I really think the opening duels, that first kill will define so many of these rounds. And it's going to be on the attack to decide the better attacking team, they will likely take this map. 
As we head into the third map, by the end of it, one team will find themselves one map away from winning this six invitational. As we head into Skyscraper, FaZe Clan and W7M go toe-to-toe -to -toe once again. So far, 1-2-1, one, one, taking their own respective map picks. Again, though, now for FaZe, they go to a comfort map. They go to Skyscraper. But they begin on the attack in what is the most defender-sided map we have. So I really want to talk about the Opera events. Fabian cannot briefly touch the word. Ying, Monty, very crucial. Could definitely be the operators we banned out. No, Ying Grim actually, still two meta operators. I will say this though. We spoke about Clash in Oregon. It was not played. It was not shown on bank. It can be played on Skyscraper. Of course, FaZe would not better themselves. They'll again work around the intel and the counter intel. WCM, the final ban in the call. It's going to be a defender. W7M have been quite varied in their bans throughout this event. Oh, okay. Fenrir the most banned, but it's Kaid, interestingly enough, this time around. So Bandit Mute will now be priority for wall denial. But as you alluded to as well, the clash has snuck through. So we're seeing a lot of the same kind of bans throughout this tournament, Nick, where the Grim Ying got banned out on Oregon, again here on Skyscraper, the Ying as well back on bank that we just had, and also the same defensive operator bands too, the Solas and the Kaid. So clearly, at least for these teams, they're quite comfortable with these bands. I think they will be very prevalent for the remainder of this grand final. Yeah, I was going to say, no new bands from either of these two teams, but one thing to note here is that WCM, they have played 27 maps so far before this grand final started. They have banned 18 different operators. However, FaZe have played 19 maps, they've been 16. My point is that both of these two teams throughout the entirety of SI24 have been banning very different operators based on their opponent. But this is a best of five against the same team. So of course, it's not a big surprise we're going to see the same kind of operators being banned out because that's what yeah, the enemy team would like to play. So away we go, third map of the grand final. FaZe and W7M so far giving us a spectacle that is very much befitting of SI24 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, with 10,000 strong watching inside of the arena, with viewership records being broken around the world. One to one, but by the end of this one, one of these two teams will find themselves one map away from writing their names in the history books. Over to T, karaoke we go then for round one. As mentioned, Kaid banned out. So it's the mute then for Waldenar here on top of drones as well for W7M. Perhaps a preset play brewing here though from FaZe. Keep in mind, Valkyrie in play. So info the name of the game, oh. Cyber. Able to time KZ, but unable to find the kill. Damage matters though. No duck being played, no Thunder Red either. Not really present in the current meta game. So KZ, who's a very offensive player, will be, you know, playing a little bit further back. Go to side, kill things up, use your default caps, etc. Because when you have half health, one or two bullets is enough to take you down. So WCM, not the greatest start for them. But they got fallback options. They got one C4. They got those valve cameras. And I'm looking at this attacking structure from base. Handy is the only player lurking on the other side of the map currently. So it might be a more forceful take here through Geisha. A little bit more direct from FaZe as opposed to taking full map control. Yeah, and FaZe of course have been quite direct in their approach and their attack so far throughout the first few maps that we've seen. We saw how dominant they were on Oregon, yeah. clearly as well on Bank. And I may be expecting that as well on Skyscraper. There's two ways you can go, Nick. Direct or that sweep across. Right now, a lot of pressure on that Geisha position. They can still go for a rotate later on. The good thing about Skyscraper, I think at least for FaZe, that plays into their strengths. Slow approach, concise, and then eventually hit slight fast. I agree with you. I do think this favor is their play style. It's all about that middle round. Early, you should only find kills on the attack if defenders are running at you taking those fights. It's all about that last minute. We're entering that territory right now. Handy up a staircase, looking for what could be a great flank. He's been lurking for some time as the kills will light up that feed. 60 seconds on the clock for Lee Pox. Can he hold this position? Ooh. A little bit of timing there. Vidiking might have an opening, but FaZe playing from behind. Yeah, looks away momentarily, slips in towards the mezzanine. Vidiking still on that balcony. 45 seconds, KDS up towards the black stairs. IQ as well to get rid of this information. That is still prevalent because of that Valkyrie. The counter, of course, is the IQ. Two Nitro Cells available. In the back pockets of W7M, very much will be required here, despite the four on three. There's one. 
point somewhere along the map but clearly to no real avail. KDS now trying to push up through Sushi, and now taking that fight, can't get into a Keisha. The defense is perfect from W7M thus far to begin on Skyscraper. There's a very defensive side of map. KDS not expecting a very forward position from Herds. And this is why it's so hard to attack on Skyscraper. You go find people one side, you have no split pressure. You spread across, lose a couple of gunfires, and you fall apart. Face. The cat didn't have a leg to stand on there. Very early on, it just went sideways for them. I mean, again, right, it was pretty classic phase. They initiated the attack direct. Good pressure through Geisha, as you mentioned. They did try and lurk their way on the other side of the map. Handy was down below for yeah. quite some time. Cyber then came across late to try and aid. But then the transition at that midway point of the map, where we so often see the attack break down, that was exactly what happened. Fantastic kills, lighting up that feed from W7M, and they've kicked it off nicely here. Yeah, I mean, we didn't get to see a classic round of Skyscraper where a tankers get stuck somewhere, trying to, like, utility clear and break that middle ground. Instead, it was faced, like you said, kind of across the map, trying to find openings, but W7M actually recognizing, hey, we don't got to make a play here, we can relax. Yeah, and on this map as well, this is where we probably don't get too excited in terms of the first half. I think the expectations might just shift a little bit as we continue on in this grand final. Skyscraper, very much the most defender side of map that we have at this tournament. So there are massive expectations for W7M to do well in this first half. Them doing so, yes, is great, relieves the pressure for them going into the second half, knowing that they've done that job. If they fail in this first half and FaZe start getting a massive amount of attacking rounds, then we will change our tune. But as of right now, largely, W7M should be looking for quite literally four to five rounds, Nick. I agree with you. There is one thing, though, that I want to see from the attacker, especially FaZe. I want to see more of those spicy operators, those fle that flexibility. I want to see the Monty, see an Osa, see some smokes being used, maybe a glass, because so far, FaZe, they've been very vanilla throughout this series, and while they're not like the craziest rush team, per se, we know they can play those style of operators, and it's not been the case so far. First round, they lose the opening, second round as well. It's JV taking down Handy. JV92 continues to be that guy in this tournament. Single wall opened up. W7M with the man advantage on such a defender-sided map. They're living up to expectation. Life being a little difficult right now for FaZe, stuck out on the balcony, unable to really get a good foothold. Oh, Nate, oh. very aggressive, doesn't have the angle though. And honestly, a vault over there would have been super aggressive. Rightfully doesn't go for it, wants to still maintain good position close to the site. Five versus four. And right now, W7M playing this the right way. Make these entries difficult. Force them to stay on that balcony. Force them to really think about taking a step inside of the map. Well, that's exactly what Cadius has done. Through that single wall in towards VIP, maybe anticipating the push up oh. through the stairs. Casey had no idea. A response from KDS is so swift along with Souls. They've compounded in towards VIP. Strong map position now for FaZe and suddenly very prevalent on the attack in the three versus three. And KDS will fall though. Response from Felipox is perfectly timed. And a fast round now here in the second round of Office and Exhibition. But again, trades coming through. Down to just Vinicking. Gets shot in the back, comes his way back over. The goal line has to be taken out. As soon as he stepped on that goo, his life was forfeited. That's tough. Fight back, Guman takes you out. Take out the goo mine. Somebody will swing you regardless. There's no way out in that round. Now, we can talk about defense being one-sided. You know, defenders should go up 4-2, 5-1, whatever. And that's one side of the story. The other one is confidence. The issue with picking Skyscraper is that you will start an attack, and your opponent will feel really strong about themselves and their ability. So when the side swap comes through, I would not be surprised if those of them could be more aggressive than that of face right now. And you can hear the crowd, the W7M fans getting very, very chirpy, perhaps outnumbering their phase counterparts both in number and now in sound. As we look back at that round, JV92, very nice kill through that vertical for Lee Pox to double down, perhaps sound cue on that karaoke rappel. Then they compounded nicely and Bitter King unfortunately trapped in that goo mine. Now two things here as well. Early on, firstly, again, we don't want to get too overexcited. It's defense here on Skyscraper. Let's again remind everyone. But more importantly, this is FaZe's map pick. Yeah. And obviously, for W7M, you win bank. If you steal this, you're one map away. It's not only one map away, it's then your map. 
and that momentum you would then be taking into said map would be having won two maps in a row. So while this is not do or die for FaZe, it's certainly a very pivotal moment in this grand final that they can take their map of Skyscraper, giving them the edge, then going into Porter. It certainly has a snowball effect, and it's also why when FaZe is going to pick Skyscraper, they know they start attack. I, again, I expect more flexibility. Show me those operators. Show me you can do it. KDS on Thatcher, he's the injured player walking through a breach. That was the only success that FaZe found in that previous round, and it came off an individual player with a little bit of help behind him, of course. We've yet to see FaZe being activated as a team, playing closely together. They're playing so spread apart, but right now, that style isn't working. So a little bit more split here from FaZe, right? The Habana of Vidiking investing Util for the map sweep. Souls on the other hard breach roll would now work Geisha handy as well. We'll have Summers and they could be necessary as well later on. Keeping in mind that this is a kitchen defense. For Lee Pox, he's posted up above, holding this for as long as he possibly can, installing out this attack. Yeah, again for FaZe as well. This time they're kind of combining. Yeah, they got a bit of that Geisha pressure. You want to take that, get that vert advantage, but also sweeping across that we've seen them really clear out off as an exhibition as well. Mind you, Skyscraper is the kind of map, regardless of the site, you can play just about anywhere and defend just about in any way, shape, or form. 90 seconds left in this round already, though, and again, the time for FaZe in terms of their pacing is still quite slow. That doesn't necessarily mean bad, but clearly finding it difficult to get inside the map, get good map control. I do agree it's slow, but the important note is that they're slowly making progress. They're not standing still waiting for things, they're just very slow at getting through it, but they're alive, they're upright. This is 5v5, this is where FaZe excel. Who will step up to the mark? What? It's KZ! No trade in sight for FaZe, and he holds down the line. The flashbang's now to come through. Oh. And he gets no, it! Right. I think he was seeing what? But I tell you what, FaZe might be oh, seeing the grey. Well, it's still time. 60 seconds. Three versus four. And the chance again! Oh. And all the entries tonight! Difficult, difficult scenario. But you never count these players out. Not at this level. One down, three to go. Default shot out and drum control. But the kit is not really close. And being watched on the other side of the mezzanine. It's Nade. The flash from Cyber is decent. And it forces back a couple of players, but he loses that battle. And once again, FaZe lose another round. Stalwart defense from W7M on the map pick of phase. Strong start halfway through this opening round. This is so unlike FaZe. I said they excel in these 5v5 scenarios. What happens next? Well, they just walk in and they don't do it together. Handy on the ace, walks in first, dies. Vidiking on the Ibana in the other room of Terrace swings way later. The this sink, the miss, like the disconnect, I guess, essentially, from FaZe. So unlike them. And then calling a tactical timeout, I think this proves the point. Something's not going right. So the FaZe tactical almost coming now to an end. They sense that these attacking rounds are key. W7M looking very difficult to take down at the moment. Yeah, certainly are. I, I think FaZe are more than capable of replicating this though, Nick. I, I certainly feel like this is not a case of W7M uh, are in such a massive advantageous position. To be fair though, they're playing really good Siege. And they are making these rounds quite convincing. That's the only real startling fact for FaZe. And yeah, indeed, KZ was seeing white, completely blinded by the light, but still was able to manage to find that kill. Philippe Ox, again, these key positions, they're just struggling. When you kind of look at these POVs, it's balcony versus play inside. The play inside is constantly winning. Three nothing start, timeout called by FaZe, done. Dissipated, into the fourth round we go. And we return to Tea Room and Karaoke. FaZe don't need that many rounds. It can change so quickly in the blink of an eye. While well, the W7M fans are starting to make their noise absolutely heard inside of the arena. All it takes, one to two rounds for FaZe, and suddenly they're back in a good position. That's exactly it. One is the bare minimum, two is a great outcome, I would say, or a good one at least. And FaZe, they will finally, on the fourth round, after a tactical timeout, bring out the things we know they can do, like the Montedro extended shield, Vidiking, 
The reason why this is so strong for him, he's the IGL, the in-game leader, the captain for his team. When you play the Monty, you can extend that shield. You can't really die. You can walk around while consciously think, oh, my teammate should be here. Cover this angle. Hey, drone this area. And it gives so much freedom mentally for the leader. But again, we'll call the shots. He'll lead the charge for his team through up here. And he'll push to now over towards this map clear. We'll see if FaZe can find some success in the early portions of round number four. Oh. It's KZ to hold down the line to Keepers in the pocket. Is he going to commit? He does have herds alongside, and we know how true these deadly how deadly these two are, however. They're more than happy to back off and give that space to FaZe. Yeah, really smart there for W7M. I think they're really good at so far being able to say, okay, we don't really need to challenge too over-aggressive in nature. We'll pick our fights. So far, they've done a great job of that through the opening three rounds. My question though here, Nick, is very much Vidikin on that Montaigne. Can he allow them to win these chokehold battles towards Drum at the mezzanine and then eventually in towards Hero Karaoke? He could be a real big win condition now for FaZe. I think so. I do think that they're playing into their strength now as a team. The one thing we gotta see, those guns, they gotta come alive. Handy was huge organ. He was there on bank. Right now he's 0-3. Whoever's following behind Vidikin and Lorenzi has to hit their shots. Well, the smoke canisters now come into play from Nade. Stalling things out a little bit in combination with the Fender. It's a double peak from the defense and Hurts will find the first. The Monte can't protect from that. And now Vidiking under fire. Yeah, I mean, this is not exactly what FaZe wanted to lose that initial battle on the offset. You want to play behind that shield, get kills from peeking behind it. But it went back the other way. <laughs> Nicely done. And Casey's just going to reinforce that off. Now forces Vidiking through the doorway. Fortunately, of course, that Montaigne pretty good at doing just that. Still a Nitro Cell as well, available for W7M in the hands of JV92. Vidikin is very low. Also, mind you, because Henny died, he was a happy job face. Because we enforced that wall, that's one less way in, one less angle for pressure. This favors defense. Vidikin so low, JV92 still with a Nitro. That could be huge for the defense. Final 30 seconds of this fourth round, the crucial one for Faye. Certainly winnable, but not going to be easy. Still will need to dislodge JV92 inside a Geisha. Souls won't go for it, not just yet. Again, down to 20 seconds on the repel. Outside of karaoke. T room, stacks, double defense. Felipox, good angle, gets rid of the Montag. They're just struggling to find a foothold in towards the site. Kick down over at the stairs. Into red time we go. Where's the response? No! The gap was through. JV92! in sight, not even really tested, even despite the Montaigne. What can FaZe do to crack this ever-present defense of W7M? We're back to prime W7M, where we think, where are the gaps? Where are the weaknesses? What should the enemy do? Because when you look at it, there's so few things that could have changed that round, and it's such micro-adjustments. Vidiking on the Munti early on, Handy walks behind him, he dies. Okay, if you let Vidiking walk up further with the Munti and take some of that space, maybe Handy can win the gunfight. But outside of that, this is just one team playing better Siege than the other, and of course, defense being a lot easier. We see JV seizing that moment after getting the 2K. Many players, they dream of this opportunity, and they're living in it right now. I think the main issue there for FaZe was that their split pressure, or whatever you want to call it in this current <laughs> meta, didn't quite work out. It was KDS on the karaoke repel. He gets tired. He gets slain. There's no counter pressure there from the attack to make JV90 to feel like he's under the pump. He's just able to sit there, play around the reinforcement, has perfect view of that push, and he doesn't miss his shots. He closes it out. We see this is the issue. Face the first three rounds, they are playing that split pressure where they're coming from many different directions. That didn't work. They play the Monty, they come mostly from the same side. Also doesn't work. So gosh, yeah, that's the problem. But what they did before, which was the solution, also did not work. And it leaves you with this wonder with your face. Guys, what is the actual game plan going to be now? This is hard. Offers an exhibition, fifth round. And the third map of what's turned into a very tantalizing grand final here to close out. A campaign of Siege that has seen it reach new heights. The Montang again, brought by Vidiking. Again into a site where it can be so pivotal. Secondary EMPs also available to try and open up this vault. Will do so successfully, and an entry point can be established now for FaZe. 
And assuming FaZe are able to get map control, which, to be fair, is being contested by Felipox. It is, again, likely going to come down to the contest oh. through Drum. But perhaps that map control will be a little bit easier now. FaZe can lean into the man advantage. As Handy will find the first kill. Keep an eye on KZ, though. This mirror window will make or break the defense. But this is better for FaZe. They got Monty horizontally, bucked down below vertically, and they're actually making pressure from multiple fours now for the first time. They get the opening as well. The pacing, 1 minute 30, is excellent. Monty full HP. This is the best round for face so far. Shots towards the Montang of Vidiking, trying to make his way in. Still a long way to go. He's knocked over towards the hallway of T-Romy and Karaoke. Of course, it's off the next mission. Lots of forward presence here. Oh, oh, that was A three versus three with 60 seconds left in the round, but we've been in this position before. FaZe have found themselves with a chance late in the round where it looks like it's an even man advantage, and every single time W7M have been able to get over the line. Cyber now to sneak forward. A phenomenal player from KEZ who sends the oh. moment and he finds the third. 40 seconds on the clock. Can FaZe respond? KEZ continues to pass the TV. For Soul, the nice, the ace, oh. it's the headshot, he's got three of his own! One versus one, for the massive round, an attacking round would be so crucial for FaZe, they need it, they desire it, he's gonna will his way against Dave, no! Oh. What a round! It flipped so many times. A huge clutch, but tracking back. What a play from KZ. Yeah. The attack. Vidiking had full eyes on that push, yet he timed it to perfection. Got his team back into the round, retreated to the shield, almost got the ace. Did it, but it didn't matter in the end. They needed that round phase. In that moment, one versus one, even a, even a three versus three with under a minute left, that was one of the better opportunities yes. that they have had so far in this half. They get to go for the kill, you start to think they can get map control. Unfortunately, KZ changes that round. The complexion of it with those footholds, with those angles, falls back. Towards Dragon, gets a quad. I mean, what a sensational round from KZ. And with that, it came down to Nade to finish off his good work. W7M up five to nothing. But even still, I can't believe I'm saying this, <laughs> one attacking round could be enough for FaZe. This is how defender side of this map is. Yeah, they just need that little bit of wiggle room, and that side swap comes through. But the issue right now is when you're up against him, Mike like W7M, it's not like Casey and Hertz are just the good players that pops off around again. No, every player, all five, are so capable. We've seen it here so far. Felly Pox, he's now 7-2. Nade winning in one versus one. That's a round in your pocket in a single kills effort, basically. FaZe, yeah, shut down the star player. Well, how about you? You gotta shut down all five. It's an impossible task. Well, we'll see now. Can FaZe make the impossible possible? To keep this map alive, they must win a round. It's possible for them to make the comeback on defense, but it's going to be one hell of a challenge regardless. KZ lit up early, playing in towards Dragon. It's a bedroom, bathroom defense for the final round of the half, and W7M, as expected, will invest up above. Brazil, one of the only regions that plays this bomb side domestically. We rarely ever see it in the international play. It's been tried by two or three separate teams at this event, and it has a good defensive win rate, I believe. But the issue is, it's hard to attack against it because you don't have a lot of experience. It's that fourth bomb side that you rarely see in practice. We see now WCM, they're changing the strat, going for a fake reinforcement, maybe a run here from KC and Hurt, trying to go on the offense. Trying to deny that entry that they've done so well in this half, keep a barrier, but a nice little hole as well on the bottom left side of it from KZ. Trying to just get some shots onto Vidiking as he demolishes said Kiba Barrier. 90 seconds left in this round. Faze absolutely need to find this. They aggressive oh. though. And on the repel on the ball team from Souls, he is successful. Finds the opening kill again for Faze, but they've been in this position before. Hurts taken out of the picture. And suddenly Faze got a chance. But KZ becomes ever present again. Traded though immediately after he found one kill. In a three on two, Believe Fox brings it back. Are they crumbling again? They very well might. A chance for Filippo, though, falls back down below. 
60 seconds left in a two versus two. They've taken a gamble on this site, W7M. Will it pay off? They've chipped back at the disadvantage. A two versus two. Information should be available. KDS, that could be the drone that wins phase this round. Gotta play together. Try and get that 2v1 scenario because right now, plant is not possible. They're gonna drop for a hatch, walk down the staircase together. One flush available, but a warden on the board. Available for W7M. With 30 seconds left, it's the final logic bomb from Handy. Looking to seek down and track these final members. The oh. drop, yeah, it's successful. Fun. But regardless, KDS lost his life. Handy got the knock down. JV to one on one. Oh. Against Felipe on left side corner. Oh. Yes, Handy's done it. Finally, at the death of phase. An attacking round has been found in the final round of this half. One to five. And Nick, that could be enough. But they've got so much work to do in the second half. This is where. You really gotta show up your face. You gotta prove that you are the team right now in the finals. They get the 1v1 because Philippox looked the wrong way, not having that full information. Oh man. Oh, I mean, what a sensational half. Let's go to Jesse and see what his thoughts are from that opening half of Skyscraper. Hello, Xenox. You just said that one attacking round for FaZe Clan may be enough, and I have some stats to think that it just might be. FaZe Clan are playing on Skyscraper now, and they move to defense for this next round. And Skyscraper just happens to be FaZe Clan's strongest defensive map of the entire pool. They have an 80% defensive win rate at, uh, on Skyscraper throughout this event. They are flawless defending Exhibition Office. They are flawless defending Barbecue Kitchen. They are flawless defending Master, Bedroom, and Bathroom, and they've only lost Tea Room and Karaoke a single time through this event. For me, a big reason for their defensive success has been KDS. He loves roaming on the bottom floor. He loves playing these C4 operators like Capcan, like Mozzie, whatever he can get his hands on. That's going to be the player to watch out for my mind. And although this looks like a tough match for them, watch out and don't count out FaZe Clan yet. Thank you, Jesse. Okay. He's gone. I mean, a very good point. Very elongated point. But at least he backed me up, which is really nice from him. We head to the second half now, guys. And this is where, again, reiterating for FaZe, this is very doable. But they can't make any mistakes. And the earlier a mistake that may happen, and suddenly then it's a lot of map points that need to be overcome. So for W7M, pressure off momentarily here. They've got a couple of rounds. They get a free punch. For FaZe, though, they have to be perfect. They gotta be perfect. Are you right? I mean, they can make one mistake, but that's, you know, as close as it gets here. No, well, right? Perfect. How about the first opening kill? If you want to lift the hammer, you have to be resilient. There are going to be times in the grand final where you need to fight from behind. Yeah. I mean, the stats are one thing, but if you're a player in the server, you look up and you see that you are down 1 5, that's when you need to step up. Can't be looking at that scoreboard. Hurts. Trying to find that kill. Is it down onto Nate? No, he's still alive. That's just a drop down. A little bit of a prone moment here. Hurts can't find this kill. No one can. A lot of low health members yeah, inside of the server as Souls compounds here. Cyber was able to stay alive by the barest of margins. Inside of Exhibition, and Philippe Box is down. Suddenly the round falling apart for W7M. Very early on in the piece, still with 90 seconds. JP falls. Talk about an opening statement to begin this second half for FaZe Clan. It's Herds outside on the repel in a one versus five. Senox, I think you called this one very early on in round number two. Oh. Defense is king. That's one kill for Hertz. The health bar not looking so good. You got Goomans in your path, Frostbats as well, C4 is below. You got a minute, but maybe you gotta talk things through here in a small, like, technical timeout, perhaps. Oh, uh, looks like Hertz is oh, gonna go for it. A snappy second oh. shot. But Cyber responds. And FaZe could cook up something special here on defense. Yeah, I think typically I'd agree with you there, Nick. I, I think you, in that moment, probably want to take a bit of a technical timeout, as you said, where you could kind of just sit outside. You got a minute 20. You're not yeah, going to win on one through. versus five. Very unlikely. But it's an SI Grand Final. You've <laughs> got to go for it in that moment. He gets two kills, creates a one versus three. You never know what could happen. That could be such a differentiating round for the ages. He goes for it, obviously doesn't work out. Nevertheless, he at least tried. Two to five. FaZe answer strongly to begin their defense. And it really does sort of highlight they have already emulated what we saw from W7M. Aggressive, looking to deny the entries at these windows, at these entry points, and making it annoying for the attacking team to even try and get into the building. Yeah. I mean, it just comes down to confidence, right? If you hold on to those strong positions, again, keeping the attackers outside of the building, we see it from both teams now, they're the same, similar style. And I want to have a source here. 
We might think support player, SMG11, Harbridge, whatever. This man is putting up a clinic. He is fighting on the entries, denying them, finding kill after kill. Not your typical support player, but the guy that you need. And it might be some recency bias from my perspective, but okay. I would probably go as far as to say that was the most comprehensive defense we have seen so far. A complete rejection of any map control. And that's exactly the game plan on a map like Skyscraper. So very positive signs from FaZe. I mean, they understand the map, right? They picked it. They wanted to go here. They knew if they can just survive for long enough on attack, get that one or two rounds, that's all they need. They almost got two. Only managed to get the one. And now we see that flexibility. Frost, Garoon, Leash, Mute. All of a sudden, FaZe, they're throwing everything at the wall right now. And it's probably all going to work. Very trap heavy. Very, very trap heavy. So W7M will need to proceed with caution and ensure that they have a time buffer late in the round as well. So, we head into this eighth round. Good start from FaZe. What can they bring in terms of another chance over towards Office and Exhibition? They need to keep this momentum going for as long as possible to deny W7M any kind of chance of map point for all as long as possible. For Leap Fox yeah, with the exothermic charge. And suddenly, FaZe, if they win a couple of rounds, yes, defend decided, but also the momentum could swim back into their favor. Right now, though, for W7M, certainly no real pressure. All it takes is a couple of maybe lucky shots clear out a good position, get the opening two kills, and then look to overwhelm that defense. I was going to say, I want to look at Hertz here in KC, see if they can find those openings, find those gaps. Nate's takes some Guma and damage here, but that's not really a big problem. Big question is, is the drone until there? Oh! The shot down, Vidic, got the staircase, that's huge! Yeah, and the live drone as well doesn't help out. That's the second one. Despite the droning from W7M, they cannot clear these positions. Oh, they're getting slaughtered. Phase, right in their faces. Despite the fact it's off for an exhibition, it's game shot, it's Tira Karaoke. And it's a very strong phase defense to begin this second half. The numbers have so far backed up the story of this very map. It is so excruciatingly difficult to attack. Flawless from phase and very much sets the tone. This is not going to be easy for W7M to finish off the work that they started in that first half. FaZe are cooking on defense. <laughs> and despite W7M getting marginally more map control, if you even want to call it that, they were immediately shut down. Now, perhaps the live drone there, the timing was a little bit off before they confirmed the position on that 0.5 main stairs. However, the execution from FaZe was phenomenal. They are looking rock solid on defense. And I tell you what, Nick, if they win this tertiary site, yeah. It really does look like FaZe are going to bring this one back. You get that perfect rotation right now. I think there's a, a fair argument to be made that both teams on attack are trying to play a normal, fair, standard round of Siege. There might come a point where you got to say, you know what? This ain't working. Let's just do something crazy. Go for a rush. You know, we're talking Blitz. We're talking Live. We're talking in-your-face gameplay. Ying is banned out, so those flashbangs won't go out there and enable you on the entries, but there are other operators available, like I mentioned. Neither team wants to go on that crazy kind of attacking style, but also neither team finding any success really on the attack so far. Attackers are heading out to the fuse of So ninth round. From a 5-0 start for W7M, it's FaZe that have won the last three. And suddenly, the shape of this map changes with every single passing round. The pressure probably still with FaZe momentarily, but that will change the more defensive rounds that they continue to find. W7M, do they change up the approach? Do they look to maybe go for slower or long outside of the map entries to at least just get a foothold? Because right now, going towards site, going towards these more conventional entry points has proven to be difficult for both teams. I will say they have four grenades in this round to launch out those clear positions. So I could see those being utilized here. Gotta try and keep track of it because there are those positions in Geisha, for example, where you're only safe behind the box where Handy's playing right now. If an egg gets tucked in, uncooked, it will force him to move out of that position. You can then act upon that. And if you see the nades on KC, the gridlock, it's there. Nade with a follow-up, wall gets open. They clearly want Geisha control. Eyes on Handy. He's looking to lock down Geisha. A Nitro in hand. This is a key position for him to lock down. Eyes as well on Hertz. He's now lurking around the map, and he is a danger man in this role. Oh, he is, but can he find it? Oh, oh my god, the pre-fire from KDS shuts it down. 
immediately. And that right there, getting the attack. When this happens, you're thinking, oh no, that might just be the round because you really need those openings. Double logic bomb from Philippe Box. He loses his life immediately after that as well. Vidikin continues the good times for FaZe on the defense here. Trying to get through the Soyan K. Broken down. KZ, where's he been? A little bit more quiet in this half. But a couple of kills at least now for W7M. Opens up sight. In a three versus two. Yes, they're down a player. But they can start to at least get some work done up above for KZ and JV92 as the duo. This is the best chance they've had thus far, despite it still not being easy. I mean, Velcro cameras still up. FaZe have a read on where these attackers are currently positioned. And for W7M, only one drone available and neither player alive has theirs. So they're going to have to play reactive, play off one another. This is going to be a tall task for the attack. But it's JV and KC. If a duo could do it, yeah, sure, maybe hurts, but this is a, like a live JV round. They could still win it. So, 40 seconds, two versus three, an opportunity to get a couple of map points here on Skyscraper, the map picker phase. KV, KZ makes his way in. Still with a bit of vert. JV will eventually have to drop and go for the plant, and time, the biggest factor. Needs to, of course, get that plant down within the remaining time. But FaZe have got themselves so many good positions, so many cross sites, and they immediately deny entry through delivery. JV's by himself. What can he realistically expect to do? Straighten up the Goo Mine. It's a three on one with 10 seconds, and a Goo that needs to be taken out. He does do so with a kit in hand. This is one of the more difficult positions you can find yourself in. He gets oh. collapsed upon. Ran out of time. And maybe running out of chances here as FaZe are beginning a comeback on Skyscraper to 4-5. And again, defense proving to be so strong on this map. And FaZe doing such a good job here and making the problem so advanced. It's hard to get in the building. It's hard to take map control. But then you get to bomb side, there's Valkyam spotting you. Bulletproof cameras. Defenders can rotate around. The drone intel from the attack absolutely shot down. No drones to work with whatsoever. I mean, we can see the operators. You guys can't just yet. I was gonna say, what is the answer gonna be? Well, Belly Box right now is hovering Monty. Of course, it can change. The replay's right here. Great shots. We saw that as well from FaZe. They opted to send Vidikin onto the Montag, bring the shield in, try yep. and get these entries. Because again, that's been the biggest differentiating factor between the two teams on their attacking side. Guys, I don't think it did that much, but Vidikin and FaZe, they were eventually able to at least get one round. And that's really all uh, W7M actually need. Just the one round, it then at least guarantees them OT. Yep, can W7M throw something at their opposition? A little bit startled at the moment, and understandably so. A perfect defensive rotation from FaZe. So daunting for any attacking team to recover from. Yeah, I like it, right? Because, like, change is good here. If it ain't working, don't keep forcing the problem. Yep. <laughs> Double thrust on a staircase, okay? Oh, you've got, you've got to be careful on the mods. Uh, you do. I mean, the shield change isn't in just yet. You can't peek to your left and your right. So Felipox really got to make sure that he clears out all those corners and those staircases. Vidiking, when he played the Mountain team, he wasn't really in your face kind of style. He's playing pretty far back, then his teammates do the work. That clearly did not find him any success. So I want to see Felipox be more aggressive and try and gain map control for his team and not sit back because you got that shield. You cannot die to bullets. Use that to your advantage. So then, can Souls and Cyber combine? on this little room that FaZe are cooking up. It's an early Nitro from Souls, who's found 10 kills so far. That won't connect, and Philippox in a moment's time should be in his face. Yeah, Philippox now makes his presence known. Outside of office, the exterior is blown open. Reach available, there's the fake. Oh, oh Jamie Lewis, no! So strong from Souls, despite the fact they've got the human drone behind the shield to provide that information, and then on the repel, a big tag into Herds, it's a big win here from Souls. Denying entry again, but also getting some kills. Oh no! Fleefox! Caught unaware! Shot from behind! And FaZe are about to tie it all up! Souls is unreal. Support player? No, I don't think so. Clutch man, savior of rounds. Gonna put FaZe in the map to a 5-5 most likely here. Holding the roam single-handedly, despite Amonti being on the board. That is absurd. Can W7M cook something up here? It's the two best players on the team, but a very tall task ahead. Pressure mounting. Not really in this round because it's a two on five, now one. 
but pressure mounting in the map itself as FaZe are about to make it five rounds in a row. In response to the opening five rounds, W7M claimed for, them, for themselves on the defense. Herd pick, Swan, another flawless round. We're back at the same point as like five or six rounds ago. What do you do? Both teams, same struggle, unable to find the solution to the problems, and now it's 5-5. Five, five. It's literally just like a best of three in rounds, basically. But the, dif good all time. the difference is, FaZe did find a solution in that final round of the half. As we said, how pivotal that could be. Well, here is the answer. Yeah. FaZe have been able to replicate and emulate what we saw from W7M in those opening five rounds of defense. W7M are into a tactical timeout at 5-5. Five, it's essentially break point. Who can now go on and secure map point? Most likely this tactical timeout is all about a single round, the upcoming. You want to guarantee at the very least overtime, so I wouldn't be surprised if the approach here is guys, they're going to go this side or that side. My statistics say this one. These operators are strong. Go for this strat, go for this issue. You know what to do, but you need to implement it. You get a full minute to strategize and try and nail this upcoming round. I totally agree. Pushing this map to overtime to keep your head above water. Exactly, that's the goal. Infinite overtime. You don't have to worry about starting out on attack in OT. It's not a concern. So for W7M, all of their focus, all of their energy, all of their brain power going into this next round. 5-5. Five, five. Scores tied at 1-1 one, one in the third map of this best of five grand final. And so far, this epic finale living up to the very much setting that we had put on it. That this could very well be one of the best of all time. And so far, Nick, it is living up to that very expectation. I have to agree. Exactly. Both Lucky teams showing very high level, understanding strategically of the game, but also individually, the plays yeah, that are being made, the reading. We see KC always finding the double or three K when they look behind. We see Seoul shutting down every single injury imaginable, and they're just fighting back and forth across the entire map on both bomb sides. Away from the Mon Tank, guys. Didn't yeah. work, and it didn't really work all that much for FaZe either. So honestly, I think they've made the right choice. Driver brought into play, so we'll see if KZ on these clutch drones can have an impact. Default camera dealt with, bottom house stairs. Other pieces of util though, still standing like the Fenrir mines. Unfortunately though, the first clutch is taken down by FaZe. And these rounds are pivotal. Why? Because you've just called a tactical timeout. Statistically, and we have the data, you do have a higher chance yes. of winning a round off the back of a tactical timeout. So whatever was said for W7M, this really does kind of feel like a almost last chance. You lose this round, FaZe have then got map point. It becomes so much more difficult, so much more pressure. The issue is, and Gus said it, when you win your three full bombs at rotation, bomb. it's perfect for defense, right? You'll go through it feeling good, feeling confident. JV down below, finding a lot of intel here, shutting some of it down. Nate uncooked has to land on that shelf perfectly. I believe it does. Takes down the roof camera. So again, intel being denied. Face, they need this intel. So good priority system here from W7M. It's a triple repel from W7M focused around this breach. And it's Cyber to contest. Oh, he's peeking. Uh, How aggressive will he get? Nade has the perfect read, but will reposition Bolt now in hand. But it's also just perceived pressure, right? It kind of slows naturally down. W7M, there's the swing. You've got to be ready. That's kind of the issue, and that's what Cyber's really doing. It's not so much about finding a kill as more so keeping W7M on their toes. That is it. Every second matters right now. And Smokes have been utilized to get the breach opened up. Impact from Cyber went out. It was not successful. Wall is open, but it costs so much utility. The, the one big saving grace, though, Hurts is on Buck, JV on the IQ. They can do damage from below. And Nade, of course, you see him. He's going to lead the charge here. When we see the fire, when we see the smoke, that's going to be the attack going for their play. Can W7M pull off this set play? Nade, he has the key pieces of utility. Hurts oh. the key position down below. Oh. Contested by Vitter King, who wins it out. Again on the front foot for FaZe, constantly moving around the map, ready to swing, ready to take that contact, and they get themselves the opening kill. With 50 seconds left into the round, it becomes a little bit more difficult and testing now. For W7M, off the back of that tactical timeout, KZ entry gets rid of the frost map, but it's Goomite, and he's just getting lit up as well. Player in the doorway hits the headshot, but unfortunately, he's losing teammates. Oh, what a shot from Nade! So pivotal. The F not mine.
obscuring the vision momentarily, but now dissipates. And they can get the plan. The smoke is out. Souls is low. But he can't find the information. Oh, oh it's a double kill. They get rid of themselves. There's the plan. from made outside of the balcony. He's got to play the repel. He's got the, the plan down. He, he can play it from down below. No. It's a double jump out, but it's a success. rounds that we've seen so much clinical siege has been played but in that moment it just comes down to who can clutch up phase map point the chaos was there for the attack i think chaos is needed keep phase in like the blind spot not knowing what's going on exactly but also great shots throughout that round from all the way through both bomb sides we got we got a bathroom and bedroom again <laughs> oh <laughs> All right. I mean, after that double jump out, who blames Exactly. Faith, the confidence is absolutely flowing for these guys at the moment. 6-5, map point for FaZe. You win this round, you are one map away from taking home the hammer. And it started there with the swing from Bitter King. That's what we've seen from FaZe so successful. Not really even just in Skyscraper, but really the series. And I love the play, the double swing. There was only one win condition there for FaZe. They had to go together, shoulder to shoulder. And boy, did they make it a successful save. Yeah, I mean, the impressive part isn't even... They can't look! <laughs> they can't look! Oh, no. Boy, I think there oh, was boy. some prayers made in this map point round. Infinite overtime could very well beckon. It took until the final round of the opening half of phase to get their one and only map, uh, one and only round, I should say. But W7M now need to emulate that. I know you've already seen it, Nick, but look to the right-hand side of screen. The Blitz is being brought out yeah. there as a Hail Mary play for W7M, trying to extend this all the way. This is it. This shows confidence and belief in your team and your system. Saying, hey, we're down on match point. We're going to gamble it all by going on this aggressive, chaotic play. And it almost worked last round. I like this adaptation. I think it might even work. But again, the early engagements, the opening Defender kill will define so much in this round. Well, it's Cyber again in lounge. He'll play a key and pivotal role in denying oh. breach. The clutch drones, perhaps now a little bit more effective for W7M. Good response to the Maestro. These evil eyes can now feed information to the attack. That's huge. A great start. But mind you, they're not going to send it straight to the bomb such as yet. They still want to set up and gain a bit of map control, keep the defenders guessing. A run out here gets punished for the out jab, but nothing happens from that. Able to survive. KZ now to push oh. forward, and it's W7M on the attack. They finally get a pick, oh, and oh. Nade is deep. He's into sight, pulls out a pistol. No, KDS in response, able to rip off his head. Brings it back to a four on four. Suddenly, it's all even and tied up. 90 seconds left, KDS, no, JV again. The smoke goes yeah, out, skewers the vision, and JV's down. The trades are coming through, FaZe standing strong. In a two versus two, looking to take the third map the for themselves. The Where's Hurt? They lose the leap off. It's only down to Hurt here in this moment. He's got two flashes in a one versus two, with a lot of time still remaining, but he's spun and shot. Oh, yeah. and for them. They were tested in that final round. They lost the first pick, but they continued to fight seven rounds in a row. Seven. Seven rounds in a row for FaZe. Nick is exactly why in that opening half, even at 5 nothing to W7M, we repeatedly said that FaZe are more than capable of not only emulating that, but potentially bettering that. That final round of the first half was the difference maker. That is exactly why now FaZe are one map away from glory. You know, in the pre-game interview, it was said that FaZe, they choked those finals. Right now, no, that's not the case. Oh, all right, we need a moment. We need a moment to breathe. <laughs> but don't go too far. Straight to the desk as they dissect that map. Thank you very much, friends. What a game and what a map number three. Skyscraper could have gone to OT, but again, so close. These two teams are neck and neck, and I cannot wait to get to the next piece, but we still have to break down Skyscraper. Welcome back to the Analyst Desk. I'm Milos with me, our fresh Fabian and Anne.
first of all, Fabian, looks like the defense was quite favored on here. You know, sometimes a three-time world champion can be correct too yeah. when it comes to predicting how the gameplay will play out. However, it's not as... I didn't expect to be this defender favored. I think both sides, they were actually very smart. They both swapped after three fail attacks to Monte. That didn't pay off. I think Vita King mispositioned himself for face a little bit, and he just didn't want to play off at all for W7M. But other than that, I think the map kind of played out to mostly what I was expecting. Something that faced it very well, in my opinion, was really delaying that push on W7M. Yeah. There were so many times where one minute left, W7M was still outside the building. I think a person that played a huge factor in that was Souls playing some of these trap operators as well, really shining on that part. He's been very consistent as well over these last three reps, getting active on that entry, but also just making sure he puts up that performance consistently for us. And actually, let's follow up with that Souls player highlight fresh. Walk us through him. Yeah, I think he's just such a confident player inside of this system. Um, you know, you might know him as a support player. He's very far from a support player because he'll get aggressive exactly when needed. He isn't afraid of going in and taking those gunfights. What he does mostly is he doesn't make mistakes. Ah. When he moves in defense especially, what I see from him is super, super intelligent movement. And it's small moving, like changing small position. Not like you move out to a different room, but how he positions himself inside the area that he's responsible for holding. He rarely makes any mistakes in his positioning, and that's super, super important. And that was making it really difficult for W7M, because if you yeah. have these players that continuously move around and continuously pressure you when you're trying to attack the building, it makes it really difficult. And finally, Handy. Fresh, yeah. there's a clutch. Please take it away. There is. The one attacking round one inside of the map was obviously FaZe Clan. They got it done 7-5, and it's just a 2v2, and I think Handy is the guy that has stepped up and made those plays for phase, especially in those clutch moments. That's what you want in a grand final. That's ultimately what wins you a map in a grand final. Now, to add on to Fabian's point earlier, where he said about the defender sided, we talked in the pre-match about how FaZe might go around it and how W7M could go through it. Well, FaZe couldn't go around it. W7M couldn't go through it in terms of the utility on the defense. And it came down to a 2v2, a 1 versus 2 for Handy to be the man to step up and just make the play happen. He did that, and that's what won the round. You know, I've fallen so much in love with this FaZe team just because of how flexible they are. And I just love to see that they always have the solution. Sure, now maybe the attacks didn't go perfectly, but just that we have players like Handy, Souls, KDS. I mean, even Vita King stepped up massively, I think, especially on the defending side. I just love watching them play because they are all so good players. They might not be able to back up W7M's gun skill, but they are just so intelligent and they are so coordinated and just play so well of each other. It also means that FaZe remain unbeaten on this map ever since September. They've yeah. now got five game win streak on this map, whereas W7M won two, but lost one today. Do you know what? If we'd have gone through overtime, we might have been playing till next September because <laughs> nobody was winning an attack. So in a way, I'm kind of glad we got it done 7-5 there because unlimited OT with the way these two teams were defending on that map, It'd have been a long time. It would be a happy day if we get one, one map just to go to unlimited OT. It's very difficult to get to overtime when teams are so close like this. Getting to a point where you're just trading bullets one after the other, after the other, you need like the perfect map, the perfect situation for all of it to follow up. But that was our third map in the series, Skyscraper. Other than that, when we talked to defense, kind of expected any big surprises before we close this map out, Fabian? No, I, as I said, I think the map played out kind of like expected. And with the Ying ban, it's very, very hard to be able to pick apart these entry points. And that's what we saw. They maybe got into the first room or into the first hallway, but very rarely did there be an effective attack where we walk with manpower advantage to the next step. And that's kind of what you need sometimes. You need a manpower advantage because the onion that I call every layer of the defense it's so impenetrable with all skyscrapers. Thank you, Shrek. I'm not Shrek, Donkey. <laughs> Get out Fair of enough. swamp. Fair enough. And it's like when you don't have that yin, you can't go for these fast explosive takes that we've been seeing so much in this tournament so far. What's been really standing out? Because we talked about it in the pre-game or the pre-desk, how you know planting is really nice. It can be a really big win factor. But if you have these explosive takes, it can be a way bigger win factor. I just, in a map like this, where they're, they're so equally matched, right, these two teams, the strategy, the map, everything, it's just about moments where players step up. Yeah. Andy got it in that map, and it's just been incredible. Well, 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 there's over 370,000 of you that are watching this, plus the 10K here, and also a wonderful bunch of people in Montreal. The development team sat down and watched and had all the predictions. Let's see what they did. They love this game just as much as you do. Hey, everyone. 
Unfortunately, this year, not all of the devs were able to make it to Sao Paulo. However, we are still watching the games here in Montreal with you. Thank you, every single one of you, for making this game so incredible. We are one big team. Bye, Brazil! Hi, everyone. My name is Renal, and here is my prediction for Sonics against W7M. I would say W7M 2 to 1. Let's go, Brazil! W7M is going to win. W7M will win. Go, Sonics! I think it's gonna be W7M, the two times major champions, W7M. W7M crushed the Sonics, GG to them. I was wrong again, you should probably bet against me if you hear me make a prediction. I was right. GG. Face Clan versus Virtus Pro match. My prediction is a Face Clan win. I think Face Clan will win 2 0. Face is gonna crush them all. I think FaZe is going to win 2 0. I really want to see a great Brazilian vibe, so let's go FaZe. Let's go FaZe. I was right. FaZe won the game, but congrats to both teams. Yes, I was right again. It was tough, it was really, really tough, but they managed to do it. GG. Easy. Easy. I will be rooting for them in the final. Let's go, Brazil!
Welcome back, everybody, to Six Invitational 2024. We have broken more records. 400,000 people are watching Rainbow Six right now. This Invitational has broken so much, and we hope that you'll stick around for the rest of it because you, right now, are part of history. Welcome back to the Analyst Desk. I'm Elsta Medic with me, our fresh Fabian and Anne. My friends, and map number three is done. That is Face Clan with the advantage. What can we do on our third map border? That's the next piece of conversation. But first, an update on what has gone down between the two brothers. Handy versus Nade. Jackers, please. Yes, yeah, so this is the big one that you all want to know about. It's not the grand final. It's not the talk of potential de uh, destiny. It's which brother is getting the better of the other brother in direct gun kills. This is across the first three maps. They've been in seven engagements. Handy has been winning in the mount five to two. That's the only important duel in this game, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you start with a big hug at the start of the game, right? Big hug, brotherly bug, brotherly hug, a bit of trash talk, but you know what? There's a lot of love in between them. In the server, love even between brothers has to be put aside. And now on to map number four. Border, anybody with an advantage here numbers wise, and Well, I mean, if we talk about phase on this map, it's not been a great map for them historically. The last time they played it was picked against them by two, G2, but they actually won that map. Now for W7M, they played this map yesterday, and that match had everything. The full-on OT against Rispro, the comeback, the crowd buff. It's definitely a map that they'll feel way more confident on. Yeah, it's definitely a map they're going to feel comfortable on. And it's very different of a map than Skyscraper, because this one, we're going back to that attacker favorite side. Yeah. Even if the defense rate has more win rate on it, I still don't think that that is what is going to happen between these two teams because of how good they are at attacking. We're going to go closer to these aggressive individual plays, which W7M have a slight edge on. So I, th I think the map fits them a lot better. Comfortability, to say, and going to be a lot higher. It's going to be a really good game, though. The curious thing for me is how W7M are going to back up going up against Vatas Pro on this map yesterday. Yeah. Uh, kind of slow, more, much more methodical team. And then going back against FaZe today, they're obviously going to be faster, a little bit more aggression and in the face, which is what W7 will be used to. But obviously, they had to change things around for that border yesterday. And I think one of the big things is that, realistically, the, the, the big win condition for me is, can W7 get over the line on those individual multi-kills? Or can FaZe work as a, as a coherent unit, as all five together at once? It's the map in itself, it's, it plays out like kind of like Bank in a certain extent, you know? Because we only have the first room to defend, and then there's going to be the bomb site, And that's pretty much every single bomb site in the yeah. entire map. So we're going to see so much contesting from W7M. As soon as FaZe gets close to the walls outside, the windows, the doors, there's going to be a W7M player waiting right inside of it. You would hope that W7M can bring it back, though, because this is their last dance with their org, something we haven't really spoken about all too much here. But, you know, they're facing a potential map match point against them, map point against them, rather. So they really want to make sure they push it all the way to that final so they can enjoy this last dance for as long as they possibly can. Absolutely. And actually, since we're talking about playstyle on Bank, and you like, or sorry, on Border, you likened it to Bank. Vertical play is incredibly important on board and has been forever, Jack. What can we expect? Oh, I mean, well, it's Cyber, we're gonna, he's become synonymous with the book in terms of the operator. He's absolutely loving it. I think, you know, the, the way that both teams will play it is they will utilize both the horizontal aspect and the vertical aspect together at once when they're attacking it. But obviously that creates gaps in where people are and refresh situations. So it's all about reading them when you're inside the map. There is one thing I want to put my finger at right now. And that's the pressure that w 7 m is going to feel in this map. Because we're heading into, will they be able to start their dynasty for real? Or will they fall short? And at this point in time, a map where you need the individual performances as border, that's going to be very hard because now the pressure is going to come to them. They might miss shots they never missed before. And it's so, so important that they don't. And we saw that yesterday with VP after two or three rounds. It, the nerves started kicking in because it was the elimination match and it relies on individuals. We saw uh, like three or four big whiffs from their players. So it's important they don't fall that today because FaZe might well punish them. Something I want to see though, one of the most creative things we've seen so far in this tournament is those plays with Capital and the Absolutely. bullet holes. We've seen that before in Cease to be to force Cyber out of his position behind that banana desk. So that's something I would really want to see that kind of creativity as well. There is one thing with Border that is not going to work so well for either of these teams. We saw Skyscraper after three attacks, both of the teams, when they had done three attacks, they all failed miserably. Both teams decided to go for a Monty pick to three. Can we unlock our opponents by forcing them out with pressure for Monty? 
border is not that map at all. You can't really do it. We did see it from W7M, but I don't think that Monty is great on this map. Will we get an extra map or not? Our game's ready. Yes, every team's won their map. Pick me, lost, no different. <laughs> Fabian? No, FaZe is going to end this out with 3-1 here. Yes, I want it for the final dance, the last dance of W7M. Fair enough. Then hopefully we get to see a map number five. Thank you very much, my friends. It is time to toss it back to our casters. Way up there, got Zemax Pengu. Take it away. Yeah, all year long, it has been the story of W7M. Two majors have been won, and two hurdles have been collapsed, unfortunately, for FaZe in both of those majors. That final hurdle, once again, ever present in front of them this time around. Can they get over it? Seven rounds in a row to close out that previous map. They look indomitable at the moment, but Border, W7M will thrive on this map. So I can't help but feel that a fifth map is brewing. But what happens when you put an animal up against the corner, locked in, they're gonna lash out, they're gonna go for those picks. Fabian said it, Border is the map for aggression. W7M, they are that team. I still think they have an edge. Are we going to map five? I think we are. Give it to me. All five. I would love nothing more than to go all five maps. FaZe, though, would love nothing more than to claim the hammer for themselves. Well, is this last dance about to have itself a nightmare finish for W7M? Now on the brink of succumbing. Talks of dynasties and legacies forged and created here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, only to be denied by the team that has been in their shadow all year long. Semi-final after semi-final, loss after loss for FaZe Clan, but now find themselves one map away from the ultimate glory. One map away. One team feeling the hammer getting so much closer, and one team feeling like it's slipping away. We spoke earlier about target bands. We didn't see a whole lot of them so far, but now things, as this best of five is progressing, are getting a bit spicy. The first Twitch ban from W7M, the first glass ban from FaZe, now these target styles are coming through. Border is not like most of the maps. Typically, you can play your normal pace where you go through the round at the expected, you know, speed. On most maps, you can then slow things down, play cautiously, very nice and safe. Typically on border, you will go faster, if anything else. That's where the glass band comes into play. You cannot play Blitz, Glass, Ying, and go absolutely nuclear. There are a bit more limitations now if you want to go for that chaotic play style. Totally agree. Valkyrie ban as well in play. We have seen a ton of Valkyrie in this series. And you think about the amount of information that she's typically allowed to feed on a map like Border, where vertical play can sometimes be supreme. So the stage now has been set. Let's jump into round number one. Well, FaZe Clan, job done. They've won their own map picks twice now for W7M. An opportunity to do the same here on Border and send us to a decisive fifth and final map of Night Haven Labs. They must win this map of Border. If they are to begin a dynasty, they need to now fight from the brink of elimination. The biggest task for this year's biggest team, and dare I say, one of the biggest teams for a very, very long time. This kind of dominance is rare to see and rare to come by. Base to start on defense, set things up. We see them here, the castle barricades, the of, of unfortunately missed key the barrier by Cyber, but w and m we see their lineup. It has aggression, it has soft destruction, but still also JV on the Nomad wanting to lim limitate, or limit rather, how much aggression FaZe can apply on defense by playing Nomad. Questions though posed, how did W7M get into the map? So often it's a challenge here on border, but Felipox is already probing down below. With the skeleton key, he flushes out handy, and that's at least a small win for the attack. Now remember as well for W7M, they're a very fast-paced team when it comes to entry. Yeah. Border does... Oh, oh. oh! I thought that for a second was maybe hurt, but it was JV. Nevertheless, the same result. Still, the peaks do continue to come through for FaZe. We saw a lot of this aggressive defense from FaZe on other maps. It's a bit more difficult on board, though. More opportunities are there for the attacking teams. It's Vidikin. Over to watch Death, trying to take this very early contact fight again. Cyber, top metal, lost his fight as well. W7M, I'm not here to mess around on border. Souls in a one versus three. Does almost get the kill onto Hurt, but more coming. And more surrounding his location. 
Anderson. Oh, talk about a statement to begin the fourth map. And the round streak put to rest. Phenomenal from W7M. We posed the question, right? How do they get in the map? How do they apply pressure? How do they get that entry kill? An almost immediate response compounds into a round win. I mean, it's been said already on this broadcast. W7M certainly have got more fans in this arena. Yeah. But even more so now, the neutrals are probably wanting to see them complete the comeback from this position down to one. Simply for the fact that we want more seeds. We want a map five. We want to create history. That's the thing. You can be a fan of either team, but no matter which one you support, you will, we will all be a fan of Siege. There was a big break we had there between Skyscraper and now here in Border. You're thinking, okay, maybe teams will gotta get back into it, warm back up. No, 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 no. Off the rip, less than 60 seconds in, kills are happening, but it's so one-sided. If you watch w 7 m take on Virtus Pro on Border, you know that this is exactly how the series ended in Max Overtime, with WCM storming through the building without a care in the world. They have what it takes to just take Border by storm every single attack amount if they want to. Bob. You've teased me, lads. I was going to save this fun <laughs> fact for a little bit later. Aww. But with the introduction of Decider maps, it has been a long wait for all five maps to be played at a six Invitational Grand Final. The last time it happened, the infamous event of 2018. We all know how that one ended. Perhaps there's another coming. I mean, if we're breaking records, let's break some more, right? Let's make it happen again. W7M, again, very quick to the punch. 30 seconds, EMP, Selma charges, opening up that mirror window, shutting down FaZe's structure, where what they care about, that's been taken away from them. Oh, okay. So just over two minutes on the clock then, and Herds will continue. He's march forward, always looking dangerous, but it's elsewhere. Oh. Vidiking, detention, his will contest, oh. and it's detention where he will die. It's the pistol as well from KZ. Yeah. Drone work good from Herds. Lots of information in this upward hole over towards Armory. KDS wanting to get aggressive over towards that desk position and locked in on the backside of that particular area is handy. Tucked in deep, trying to maybe get Miss Drone and try and catch someone off guard from W7M if they make the entry. Reloaded. Down below, KZ's on 6 and 0 to begin in the opening two rounds. Hurts though, slowing the approach through the doorway. Did not account for Handy, did not account for the fact he was tucked in towards the back of Armory. And from above as well, KDS! Oh, he can't hit all of the shots, only half health. Damage onto Nade confirmed. Over a minute remaining in the three versus three. Such a good ride, KDS there. He knows the killer's gonna be there. Let's go on, can't get flies off. And Casey, he's inside now. Oh, he can't. Oh! Should it happen? Should never have happened. But he makes it happen. And these pivotal moments can be so decisive. What? Does he see him? The gets the kill. The plant will go down. And W7M will find his second round. Unless Handy gets one of the bigger clutches here that we've had in this grand final. It's a to be. There's one, two to go. And that's KZ down the danger man. Handy will be forced to drop. Have eyes on the His brother on the other the side, team. coupled with Philippe Box. This is a Candela time. 20 seconds of which is all that remains. Spotted down the corridor. The first shots. Oh. And then the final shot from Philippe Box. Nay didn't even have to get involved. The perfect start for W7M in this fourth map. 2 nothing. It is incredible to watch what kind of team performance W7M can put up when they're on a map that they're familiar with, that they love, that they thrive on. When they first came to the Tier 1 space, they revolutionized how every single team they play at Chalet. The style we see today in Chalet, W7M, they started it. Now here in Border, the way they are playing, I could imagine long term, that is how all the teams would approach it. Phase to feel the pressure. Only two rounds played, yet a tactical timeout. What do you think about that? Is it too early? No, I, I am the biggest fanboy of early timeouts. Get ahead of the problem. Yeah, sure, attack are favored. We're expecting W7 to win maybe four or five attacking rounds, but that doesn't mean that they should. It doesn't mean you should allow them. And also, mentally, if you're a coach and you feel, guys, 
We're playing a little bit passive here, scared of losing that hammer, right? Because you're one map away. Yeah, I mean, you say attack a side, but it's not really. It's technically still in favor of the defense. It just statistically. Leans, it just leans itself to be a little bit more favorable for the attackers in comparison to, say, a skyscraper that we just saw. In terms of what we expect, really, W7M, two attacking rounds already early on, is so far already quite significant and puts the pressure on phase. Nighthaven Labs would be the final map if we get there. For now, though, our focus still remains on border, but for the fans, there is so much hope in their hearts that W7M can go the distance and force us to that fifth and final map. There has been five maps played in an SI since 2018, but the default nature of those opening rounds meant that we haven't had all five maps played logistically since 2018. This would be history yeah, made. Flat. When WCM played VP on this exact map that ended in max overtime, 8-7 in favor of WCM, it was a tight half, 3-3. Three, three. I'm not saying that should be the expectations here, but it means that both defense and attack are equally positioned in case when WCM are involved. It comes down to execution. Will FaZe be able to shut down KZ? It's been so damn dangerous so far. I can't far. hear anything. Hurt hasn't even gotten a kill. Hurt has not even gotten a single kill in the first two rounds. And W7M look difficult to beat. And I said it before as well, this crowd's going to get behind W7M for the comeback. They want to see that fifth map. More importantly, it's the local team between the two. And you can hear how loud they are already getting behind that team. Cyber. In break, looking top east stairs, and JV92 keeps his life intact because Cyber falls off. But he holds a different angle, and I like that little angle that has been opened up. So far, pressure though from W7M coming from that top east stairs position on the map. Big thing here, I think, if you can shut down Casey's confidence, that'll be key for FaZe. Right now, he is in a world championship Casey form. He's breaking records in terms of kills. Seven kills in two rounds. He is feeling himself. He's going to go for every engagement possible. Oh, Nitro over the top. Doesn't land. Meanwhile, JV92, almost someone's really effective. Creates lines of sight. Able to do it with the castle barricades. Opening up opportunities for the attack. I will say, though, they haven't really got a lot of map control right now. Still around that balcony business. Only just now, Hurt has made his way into break, I think, or maybe down below. Never mind. Oh, oh, the timing! He just went to throw a knife in that man's head! Hurt's not had the bullet! But a trade immediately from Vinniking. Able to bring it back, and then Kaniesto loses out to KZ. They make entry, they've got security control. Suddenly, corridor control. Three left on site for FaZe, and Vinniking very low. They cut off the bomb side because they got break of control. Now to him, you gotta pick a side. Arca, JV. JV. Oh, he oh, loses that. No way, stop. Fragment is on as well. Gets away. Are you kidding? FaZe have turned the round on its head. Seemingly out of nowhere. Nate now. A one versus three. He has it's much doable. potential. It is doable. Two players low for FaZe. But this would be a very monumental moment if Nade is able to pull off the impossible. 40 seconds, one, close right, tucked in, prone. Does he clear it? Nade, full white, on his own flash. No response initially from Souls. Now he gets up, position known from Nade, goes prone. The vault over, it's clean. That was a very low HP, Souls, and so is Vinniking. Still time. Kit in hand as well. It's something. The Goo Mine stepped off momentarily, dislodges his position. Two impacts from Vidiking. And look who's still alive on the other side. It's his brother, Handy. Nate. Oh! No, he shuts down his brother! Oh! Clutch. I mean, that's why you kind of look at the situation, Nick. Two players low help. Yeah. He had that information. He had time. He had the kid. You go for it. And boy, was he clean. Never rusted. That's the thing. The question asked, are those them feeling it's that so loud in here? Oh, no. Let's just listen for a second. That's the big thing oh. for us, right? Coming into this, losing Skyscraper the way they did, do they feel the pressure? Are they gonna be more slow, less aggressive? No, Nade 
he didn't slow down at all. That W key on the keyboard held down the entire time. Shift sometimes as well, going forward, isolating kills, and again, the perfect read on every engagement. Look at the passion of these oh. fans. 10,000 of them strong in this arena. 10,000 of them, it feels like now, chanting for W7M. And as we look down at that stage, you can see the hammer front and center. But I tell you what, after a round like that, it feels like it's just slowly gravitating back towards W7M. But we've already seen momentum swing so far in this series. Think back to Skyscraper, 5 nothing start, W7M. Yes, it was defensive sided. But you can make the argument that here on border, attack is prevalent. So Faith will still have opportunity and chances, but it needs to begin now. The longer this continues, it's not going to be the same as Skyscraper. Four or five attacking rounds here could be lethal for Faze. That's exactly it. Faze Clan, you know, not playing bad in these rounds, not at all. I mean, they won the last one, technically speaking, but then they didn't. They're holding that same thing, but Hurts looking to advance. Candela's flying in, but we see the silhouettes. Faze, they've left the area. They don't want to take this fight. I mean, do you blame them? Who would want to take on this fight? <laughs> you have to be very confident. It's KZ now, dueling with Fitter King. Inside of Founds, and Fitter King exposing his elbow. Keys to hold down the line with the LLG. Oh, my God. Oh. at this grand final. I want overtime, but we're not getting it right now. There is no way. I don't want to count that face by any means, but this looks like an unbeatable attack inside from WCMM. The aggression, the confidence, the coordination, the going, the throw, clutches, hurts, and Dallas, everything. You see, I mean, this is a 2v1. Does he take damage? Oh! <laughs> They're everywhere, double up. Drop down, double up, not a single 1v1 here. This feels like their map. The way they are controlling the pacing, Absolutely. the way they are moving around. Four to zero. And yeah, not much that FaZe can do right now. Oh! Oh, there you go, switch it up, why don't you? Because you know what, at the end of the day, Brazil is lifting that hammer. It's still yet though a question as to which of these two teams will be the one to do so. You know, there was, was always that big question in Grand Finals for Brazil on home turf. They would fall to European teams every single time. What better way to ensure the hammer than a double Brazil matchup, right? The fans will be happy either way. The other thing to remember as well for Tommy 7 m they played yesterday. They did. In a grueling best of three, where it went all the way. And obviously now still have enough reserves left in the tank to try and send this one the best one and the biggest one all the way. Three more rounds required to send us to a fifth map. They were knocked out in round one of the upper bracket. This yep. would be a remarkable Cyber. bounce back. A remarkable Cyber. response for Lee Poxful Fall. Needed to FaZe are just trying to keep their head above water again. They, they have to back themselves in now, FaZe, on the defense. You cannot shy away. You fall back on a map like Border, you give them map control, and that's something you do not want to allow. Oh, we got in! Push hurt! Got traded, got the kill! Four versus three. Still, just we a one-player advantage for FaZe. You walk straight to the key bow, right in the timing, so the thought, there's no way he's gonna be there, but again, the trade is there from FaZe. Cyber might be dead, but he's been so good at denying those early engagements on defense so far. It's a worthy trade-off, though. Fellow Hurts them in the grave. That's your floors and ace. They don't have all that much strong utility to win this round for their team. Right now, though, still alive for W7M. That's the key fragger in KZ. 10 and 2, and also the clutch god himself in Nade 5 and 1. With JV there for support. Still over 90 seconds left. KDS holding a very pivotal position over towards security. He could get overwhelmed. The numbers for W7M momentarily could be in their favor, but overall, it is still with FaZe, shot through the window, flash goes out. KDS feeling the pressure, the pinch. Despite the fact there's still so much time, full white, but no shots to come through successfully, only from Handy. And again, we continue this trade game. Down to Nade in a one versus three, and I've seen this story before. 
with a kit in hand, he gets one. The script has already been written, wrote, and seen. Do we see it again? No way. Nade should not be able to break this cross. You lose this round, you are not coming back. Nade, with belief in his heart, he spots one on the shoulder peak. That's the one. Oh. Swing handy! What a cheeky, cheeky brother! What a cheeky moment, and what a round for FaZe needed it desperately. There they did. It comes down to Cyber. I really think he was a hero in that round. Just his early aggression, not giving up, saying, okay, we're down 0 4. Obviously, they're putting on a heat of performance for W7M. I'm not going to stop swinging. I'm not going to stop taking that map control. I'm not going to stop fighting for the ground that should be ours for a little bit longer. He finds Philippox early and he gets traded inside our security as well. And that put his team in their favorable position. Well, FaZe now, they've finally been able to mount something on that scoreboard, which has looked dire for quite some time. Their fans now will rise from their seats to cheer their team forward onto a second defensive round. We look back at the replay package, and you can see there from FaZe, formidable, not backing down without a fight. Striking similarities a little to Skyscraper here, slowly maybe forming with that round win for FaZe. You think maybe. back to Skyscraper, 5 nothing start. W7M and then a very crucial final round in that half. Well, it does have a sense of deja vu that for FaZe, that becomes a very crucial round. Can they double down, find a second, and suddenly the script starts to flip back a little bit. Massive round coming up for W7M. I mean, a massive decision here by FaZe. We're going to customs for their final defense. Oh my. This is a bomb side that even way back in the day, if we play once in a blue moon, usually it'll be a troll it's pick. Absurd. There's no one that's legit, but this is a grand finals. No one's trolling here. It's only been played so far nine times, this six invitational. It actually has the best attacking win rate. Cyber, though, gets the opening kill on the JB92. Takes out one of the two hard breaches that W7M have brought to the round. Great start phase, and clearly understanding what they need to do in this round. There it is. Again, Cyber, world-class player, right? Always putting off that fight, never backing down. And again, WCM slowing things down. Lost one half breacher, still got another one hurts, though. KZ is probing. He's fallen off that heater. Just a touch from the start, but still 10 kills in five rounds, not to be understated. A mighty effort. To be fair, now he's playing Flores and Brava, right? Yeah. If he's entering, give him entry Reloading. operators. Make him shine, because right now, you're slowing yourself down by making him the guy on drones. I don't get that. Now they're going to fight from behind without that entry power. Yeah. Four versus five, and it's Cyber to lock down that position for a second. Oh, he's got some more. Expecting okay. that throw from Philippe Smart. And to oh, no! What have I just seen? Nate walked in front of Philippe Pox. How crucial of a moment could that be in this grand final? Momentary mistake. And now up to phase to punish it. All you can do there is say, sorry, apologize. That was not intentional. Going for the pre-fire, thinking there was a player there. But unfortunately, Nate walks in front. Belly box, shotgun in hand, making a rotate, hurts. There's a player in security, he has no idea. KDS just has to hold this angle and wins nope. it out. That's gonna be the round for phase, two in a row. Sorry for Lee Box, but the dream is not gonna come through. FaZe have responded to close that half when it looked for all intents and purposes to be W7M's moment. And suddenly, Oh, just suddenly, that grip on the hammer for FaZe starts to tighten. Super clean defensively there, particularly on entry from FaZe. They aggress, they mixed it up. Let's go and have a listen to Jesse and his thoughts here on the first half of Border. With some fun facts for the Blackbeard mains in chat, because oh. we are watching Border right now, and in fact, we're watching Cyber play Border. He's been heating up the last couple of rounds, and his favorite operator on this map happens to be the Blackbeard. He's picked it 50% of the rounds that he's played on Border through the Six Invitational. He loves to play it around the security window to try to get players out of that tough spot. He'll play it front door sometimes. He really enjoys this operator. So if you're one of the 12 Blackbeard mains in chat, pay attention to the second half. Although Cyber's been doing better, I expect W7M to close this out and to push it to a map five. But there's at least something if you're looking for some neat new operators. Well, Jesse, I have a very simple question for you. Do you believe that Cyber is right now one of the best players to do it? 
I absolutely believe it. He's here for a reason, and he's going to lead his team to a close Thank game four. But ultimately, again, I think this is going five. Thank you very much, Jesse. We'll see you off here as we get into the second half. Three rounds away for W7M to send us to the fifth and final map, which would be Nighthaven Labs. Faze now on the attack themselves to see if they can break down this W7M defense and look to claim the hammer for themselves. We take a breath. Yeah. Just relax Please. a little bit. We don't want to run out of steam too early if it goes to a fifth map. But FaZe are charging back. Speaking of breaths, it's been a very long event in lower bracket for Dolly them. They have played 27 maps for this grand finals compared to FaZe on 19. An eight map difference between them speaks to the energy required and spent by one team, yet they're still here fighting map number four, trying to get there to that fifth map to have an even best of one for the hammer. The entire crowd is lit up. You guys can't see it at home. Maybe you can actually through the player cams as the wonderful 10,000 strong crowd shows their appreciation for this epic finale to this very epic tournament. W7M are on the defense, more than capable here on border. Armory and Archives are very strong sight. Can they find a way to maybe put a dent into this ever-present momentum that FaZe is slowly building? Cyber was the main guy for FaZe on the defensive side, finding those openings and shutting things down. I also think here, because he plays the buck, he has to be the initiator for a lot of these opening duels and pushes. Open soft walls, do vertical play, but the gun skill, of course, that's where he really matches W7M one-to-one. -one. Importantly for FaZe, this setup hasn't been disrupted a lot by W7M. You think back to the last two rounds, where FaZe aggressed, they get the opening pick, the attack fell apart. So for FaZe at the moment, they're doing Andy. a good job, and Handy has aggressed. Oh, oh dear. In. No! Through the doorway! Nade again! It's like it's written in the stars! Stops that little push that Handy was trying to create in towards Archives and it keeps that position held strong. Now, for the side of W7M, Cyber though, gets the kill on the KZ, trades continue to come through, over towards 90, and it's for W7M. Slowly still the advantage in their favour. KDS, top waiting, tries to find a long angle. And Hurt still has a hold in security, so he should be good here to shut this down. Hurts to try and stop the last two players. Oh. oh, the head was there. It could have been taken instead, though it wasn't, and now Hurts repays the favor by shutting down KDS, and they now know where Salt is located in break. Oh. It's a long spray. It is, as he goes down, he brings himself back up. Only 20 seconds, though. And not much health. Can Souls pull off another miraculous clutch in this map? Well, there's no time. There's no time. Ten seconds left. He picks up the kit. They're both holding sight. They have the angles. No way in which he should be able to win this. Not from this position. W7M to find the fifth round. They will get it. We will get it. And this crowd is getting exactly what they want. Ever so closer to a map five we go. Face that look mighty close in that round, but they know the close is not good enough. Cyber spinning down the long corridor, looking for the right moment, but Philly Park swings up first. He sees it. The bigger shutdown, though, is the open engagement. Handy found himself on the bottom side, out of nowhere, somehow, someway, Nate. He has a tingling feeling, something is not quite right, turns around and finds that kill. And don't forget, FaZe, they took that time out very early on, they I think did, after yeah. three rounds, so they don't have that, that's not in the back pocket anymore. And now you find yourself three rounds down, five to two. Moments were certainly there for FaZe, but ultimately W7M better in the later portion of that round, and now just two rounds away. And you can see the passion from the fans, I mean, it is absolutely insane as the Bulls continue their rage forward. Round number eight looming. Can FaZe find a response? We'll wait and see. There was a zero initially teased on the attacker repick. I thought, hey, we might get some zero play. A lot of opportunities to employ him on border, but it won't be the case. You know, I came into this tournament thinking how many fans would a team like w actually have in Brazil? They're such a new organization, a new name to the seed space in Tier 1, but they've done really well. We got the likes of FaZe, Liquid, Lowe's, etc. that's been at this for more time than them. And then you're thinking, okay, what's it gonna be like? FaZe, W7M, who do you think has more fans doing for them? It's the new boys. W7M, they have been trendsetting so many different ways. 
for two years straight. And the fans have been loving it every step of the way. It's the local team, the team that also has already shown so far over the last 12 months that they should be regarded as the best. But everyone keeps saying they still need that hammer to fill out that trophy cabinet, which is stocked with two major trophies, back-to-back -back major trophies. They're looking for the third. They're looking now for two more rounds to send us to Nuthaven Labs. Handy and again. Oh, oh, another my God. Will it work out? Oh, no. He gets by. Momentarily still alive. Oh, again. The second round in a row. He goes for the lock push. And the second round in a row, no, he is denied. I think FaZe there wanting to maybe give up on the push top east stairs, instead finding another avenue into the map to try and unlock it. Clearly though, W7M read into it, they respond and they hit their shots. I really think that if, if, if Handy had done that play and gotten that kill, W7M will respond by fighting back. That'll lead the horse on the push into bombs on the face. But because Handy dies, the entire push has been destroyed. You need to flip it now, pick out a new avenue, a new pathway, because the plan is done for. Who's gonna stand up for FaZe? Down three rounds. Who can make their moment known? Minute and 15 seconds. Time so far has been a real influence on oh. border. Teams not really able to get oh. plans. Vidiking, massive kill yeah, onto JV, but Nada responds pretty much immediately. Again, that slow lurk from Cyber through Armory. Takes a couple of shots, but again, it's Hurts that's now down. Three versus three with 60 seconds left. Faze are slowly making a round formulate before their eyes. Really solid work, and now through Workshop for Vidiking. Diffuser in hand, 45 seconds inside of Workshop. Souls alongside, oh. two nades in the pocket. Can these two combine and unlock the objective? W7M still got vert control, something to consider for long portion of this round. With 30 seconds left, KZ gets a very critical kill. W7M now advantageous. Vidiking through lobby. Oh. Back and forth they go. He finds the kill. Opens up sight. He's got Kit. And now on sight itself, it's Nay, and he's been so good in the clutch. This is no support player. He is the clutch king at the moment. Cyber with a pistol. Oh, Nate's done it. Three pops has done it. And W7M now find themselves one round away from sending us to the fifth and final map. There was a yellow ping on that position the entire time and FaZe throwing everything they had to try and clear that half wall position, now left scratching their heads. If you feel like the only thing you can do is to contribute to a round of Siege, watch that back, please. Nade barely moved the entire round. Yet they found three kills around him. The hatch play, both in archives and the bathroom, with Handy being that pillar in the middle of his team, working around together. And Handy being shot down two rounds in a row, the exact same spot. I love this match. I love this game. I love this crowd. And boy, are we just so fortunate. Six to two, four map points for W7M. Nighthaven Labs on the other side for what could be one of the most epic conclusions that we've seen in such a long, long time. You know, when or if W7M they take this map, they'll have won more maps against FaZe, essentially, today in the last two and a half slash three years combined. Wow. This is them putting up a performance against a team that usually takes them down. It was said on the main stage at the start of the day, yes, FaZe is strong locally, but it's the grand stage that W7M shine, and they are shining ever bright here with a four-round lead. Now on the verge of creating and cementing history, that fifth map is beckoning. But FaZe are not counted out. How are FaZe going to get into the map? Last time Top East was occupied, this time KDS will fill that space. Contested over what's 90, it's KZ on Solus, oh. and he gets caught off guard. Cyber's found himself bot metal. Fight opened up as well. And a very sneaky push from Cyber because he obviously had to run past the site itself to go up towards top metal stairs. Something that W7M would not have been anticipating. That's an off pace play. He's not supposed to be there in that moment. Casey, of course, thinks it's clear the beat boop here gets the way handy. The third time in Arkham, surely he won't go for it because the last two times he was shut down. He'll back off. 
back away, stay alive. You got the kill you wanted that you needed. Slow things down for face plan. Take a breath. Start doing your droning. Reach your windows, hard destructible walls, and then advance towards that top floor above the bomb site. Two Nitro Cells available for W7. Hey, what a shot from Souls! Massive from Break. And starting to break this defense as well. Shots back though from Nade. He's been so clutch. Can he continue to do so here? Oh. At the closing stages of this fourth map. So low wanted to go for the drop. Couldn't find it now to one versus three. Oh. For JB92. Player close left. Tag onto Cyber. Does come in. Vinikin going for the plant through the window. Does get the peak. JB92. Oh! Oh! Now in the one versus one with red ping information. But he's so low on HP. Vidikin can sit outside and play the post. He's got time, but not a lot of it. On the outside, Vidikin low. Davey can't win the clutch. No, Vidikin wins out defensively. Sound in the post plant. Outside of the building, low on health. He holds strong for phase, and that map point is held off momentarily. You can tell how much both teams and both players in the one one they want that moment. It's not about diffusing and hoping to make a mistake. It's not about playing far at the building and waiting for that perfect moment. It's about taking the fight to them, showing that you have what it takes, fighting every single gunfight imaginable, believing that you are or will be the victor. Well, it was successful for him. No, that time around. He did a good job getting inside of our guys. That has been his arch nemesis throughout this map so far. The overpeak there, punished by JV92. Damn. The trade from Handy not landing enough damage, but Vidiking able to sit outside. He had a three flashbangs available as well. Played it very, very well. So, three more map points, though, still for FaZe. Keep that in the back of the mind. It's a very, very torturously long journey that they still need to overcome three more map points. Oh, boy. We're slowly starting to see this chain shop from FaZe. You guys will see it in a second. I won't spoil it just now, but they're a tanker repeg onto different operators for the first time here on border. And I'm not sure how I feel about it because when Vida King played Monty on Skyscraper all the way back on the second map, it really did not play out the way that anybody expected. So still three more map points for W7M. Vida King now on the Montang. As you pointed out, Nick. But it's really strong at being able to get positions like top east stairs. KDS though, shot through the window. Of top waiting and taken very low, but didn't lose his life. Of course, Vida King does also need to be careful of these backwards angles as he does push forward. This has been the issue though. Vida King, while he's very safe because of extended shield, wherever he's behind him takes a lot of damage. Skyscraper, the third map, sorry, that's what happened there as well. Vida King is not establishing enough presence to allow the people behind him to succeed. A 43% win rate for Monty at this event. Not an outlier, very solid, but you must find value. You must play around it correctly. Vida King is again playing it at range. We saw that from Skyscraper. He's not getting in the face of the opposition, exactly. at least not yet. He's gotta get in there, toe to toe, basically melee confrontation, you know, basically pressure at hip fire or melee from the Monty Shield. That's the strength. W S N M, the holding security with hurts. He got 90 in control. That's where FaZe likely want to try and fight back. So, just over 90 seconds and a lot of emphasis clearly on this one tank in allowing the push forward to get some control. Four phase, oh. herds under an immense amount of pressure, blocks that window with the keeper barrier, now goes prone. Will there be help? Because there's a man with a shield making his way in towards security. Herds is calming this, Herds. KZ trying to get into an angle, almost found the back foot of that Montang in Vidiki. Now down towards Top East on the other side of this corridor. The swings are coming through. Souls clean into security. The train eventually person's outside of the map. on the balcony. What is he doing? He's playing from outside the map. How can he get away with this though? No! Drop shot from KDS. FaZe have been able to overcome another map point here. I didn't think that was possible. I thought they got blundered, but no, that's up to Nade and 1v4. There's one, three to go for Nade. I mean, at this point, I back him in with the way he's been playing, but Montag in his way. That becomes the biggest factor in all. Oh, oh. it's clutch almost for a moment. The guard break is strong. Good to die. He couldn't get the kill. And FaZe have done it again. Two more to go for them. What the hell was that <laughs> jump out from the Azami? 
I was looking at Cross at our overhead. He got flamed out from that position. Didn't have anywhere else to go. Hops out the window, able to flank from behind outside. Pure chaos over towards security, but it's FaZe ultimately who win out. And a timeout has been now utilized by W7M, starting to maybe think that a momentum circuit breaker is required. Two rounds in a row for FaZe Clan. They want to talk things over for the next two opportunities to close this map out. Yeah, that's exactly it. You don't want to risk anything here. Although I would love an overtime on my hands. I want my five, Nick. <laughs> okay, yeah, right, all the way. But if you're seven m again, we got to talk about the energy. Very long tournament in lower bracket. JV said they won. We want the lower bracket magic. And while that sounds like such a cool statement, and then actually you're doing it right here live in the arena, it also means it takes a massive toll on you long term. So the more rounds you play through, the less energy, the more tired you get. I'm starting to feel that tiredness as well. This has been such a grueling match. You cannot imagine what these players would be going through themselves out on that stage. 10,000 strong chanting for and against them. But it's FaZe that have been able to offset this disadvantage they found themselves in, and credit to them for doing just that. The mental dexterity, when you understand how far behind it seemed and how difficult of a task that they had found themselves in. Down 6-2 and you think, okay, this one's done. Yeah. No, they fight back two rounds in a row, and suddenly you've done it once, you do it again, and it's OT. And that's the thing. It's been so close, even in, like, throughout the entire series, you're always thinking one player can just completely change the outcome of a round. So even if it's one versus three, one versus two, you're thinking there is still always a chance. And I mean, the scoreboard, we can't see it right now, but I saw it before we went to the player camps, very even from both sides. No player is falling behind. I think it was phase eight kills on top, six kills on bottom, very, very close to each other. Well, adaptation is the name of the game for FaZe. Yeah. We expected that heading into this event, heading into this grand final. And adaptation they must have if they're to win the next two rounds, push this map into overtime if they want to close it out here on border. Now you got to remember as well, in tech pauses, you can't talk, you can't communicate. Ooh. So it's a really big factor here. But in saying that, off the back of that tactical timeout from W7M, they were able to talk Nick. So they were able to formulate a plan. Now they can all kind of just sit, stew over, and think over it during this tech pause. And I also think the extended break, again, probably is that circuit breaker of momentum that FaZe was slowly building. That is exactly it, and it comes down to which team has the bigger brain right now, because you can utilize this, as you said, sit for yourself and think, okay, what are the issues? What could the solutions be? Anything we got up our sleeves. One thing we've not seen that much of in this entire place of fire so far are those one-off pocket strats. We saw in bank, FaZe, flying up the hatch with the Amaru, an open area attack. But besides like one or two rounds perhaps, it's in pretty stable siege. Things that we can expect, of course, explosive aggression, big surprises and big clutches, but both teams respecting the style of siege saying, we're not gonna go too crazy. I mean, spam some W's in the chat for this crowd though. They're on their feet. W crowd. Jumping up and down, arms waving around. The energy inside of this arena is the best we have ever seen in Rainbow Six. Yeah, and honestly, coming into this grand final, once it was confirmed that we had two Brazilian teams, there were some questions. How was the support going to be? Clearly, there's no hero slash villain storyline that is outlaid. But in that, there is still massive support for W7M. There is still a large contingency of support for FaZe Clan. The crowd is obviously divisive. They've got their favorites and they are giving us so much energy as we head into another map point round for W7M. Off the back of a tactical timeout into then a technical pause, we are finally back underway. You see the upper line of course, defense. The mirror, big talking point. Asami being brought pretty much every single round to kind of restructure the bomber side. And of course, more importantly, that security hold. Hurts always playing there. Face, they have the questions. What should we do? What's our way in? And the answer right now, Gus, they're hovering the bounty again. It worked last round, but it is risky. A volatile strategy in a very volatile round. The Brava as well in play, so counterplay is available. 
for those clutch drones onto the mute jammers, for instance. And in terms of individuals, I feel like Souls has maybe gone a little bit unnoticed. A couple of really good entry kills yeah. from him so far in this game on that Finker, not just providing those adrenal surges, but also able to get some really good headshot kills on the entries into safe positions like security, which are not always easy to enter into. He's been big. Arguably, all of these players have had a moment or two or three in this grand final. No one is lagging behind. That's the thing, when you have a player like Souls, who normally plays half reach, but he's having a good game, put him on something else. He's playing Finger, right? Getting those opening kills and doing it consistently so. Vidiking, Monty, it's been the main target focus, right? But look at this, Vidiking is mostly alone. Bit of a bait and switch here, expecting, okay, where Monty goes, that's the main focus point. That's not the case. They're gonna try and bait them by moving Monty in the wrong position, so to speak. Ace in play as well. So we'll see those additional lines of sight established in through break exposing these defenders from that mezzanine position just makes it a little bit more challenging also puts the focus back on herds we've highlighted him playing the azami those key barriers inside of security are pivotal in holding that corner of the map he holds that big weak condition for w7n slow and steady from behind that montague but kds on the flank down below through main lobby now makes his way over towards east stairs they've got themselves a good amount of pressure here that they can play behind bit king this is where, though, you need to be perfect. No mistakes, because they will get punished for both teams. So a big change here. They're going to go buck virtually in customs also security. But Vidi King Dad Joe said, guys, that's not going to work. Change it right now. Sprint through the map. They go office instead. Big off change. Still into office as they go, but Mirap is in their way. Vision there for W7M. Nitro cells are also there for W7M. Two, in fact, through for Lee Pops and JV92. Bouncing control still established, trying to deny this office push. Those mirror windows are going to be key in locking down this office position. Double from here! Crazy! Three kills! Response from Vida King. He has to pull the pistol out at that point, and maybe again, but the knife shuts down. We are going in distance. We have not played all. 2018. The viewing record was held before now in 2018. History is being made tonight. Legacies are being created. Dreams, though, may also then be shattered in a fifth and final map to come. One of these two will get over that final hurdle, Gus. I don't care who you support in Rainbow Six. If this does not excite you, nothing will. Nothing will. Okay, we are going all the way. And for now, to the desk. Thank you very much, gentlemen. What a map number four we have had. And this is going all the way. 10,000 fans have surrounded us here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we cannot wait for that fifth one to begin. Hello, welcome back to the Analyst Desk. I'm Medic with me, our, our fresh Fabian and and We're going to lock things in for our map. We've got a lot to cover before we get into map number five. Let us be very clear. Nade was a hell of a player in this game. Might have been that one clutch that we saw from him, what pushed W7M into map number five. We see the scoreline here, 7 4 0 3 for W7M. Would Nate have not had that clutch? It would have been so very close to a potential first overtime in the series. So we're seeing the clutch here. I called it winnable when we were watching this in the talent room, and eventually it was winnable for him. But that is the main thing that we were expecting coming into this map. We needed those individual players on the side of W7M to step up and to immediately carry these rounds. Away. Yeah, we needed that, and if we look at the overall map in itself, I think W7M's attack, they just kind of bulldozed straight over face. They, they, there was nothing stopping them. The individual performance, I mean, even if we go back to the defense super quickly, like that last clutch, who hits those shots? Absolutely. There's one player in the world that does, and well, he stepped up for it. But overall, it's just, yeah, they bulldozed them. And then I think that the reaction face had for well, we see the replay here, that was fast. Well, it's just three shots that he's gonna hit, and it's just incredible. Headshot after headshot, like, I mean, look at that. This is what I was talking about earlier on in 
W7M oh, wow. in the very first map were not stringing those multi kills together. This is what KZ is synonymous for. This is W7M's main win condition. And when you need that, that steps up in map four. That takes us all the way through uh, to map five. I mean, he doesn't even see the guys no. he kills. He no. just shoots. fires, bang, bang, bang. And that, especially with the first kill, there is nothing you can do against that. That must be super demotivating for a face, but if that momentum for W7M continues on the fifth map, it might look great for them. Yeah, and if I keep building on the point I was making before, W7M's attack, they bulldozed them. And then what we saw as a reaction from FaZe when they headed over into their attacks was individual decision-making that kind of felt rushed. They tried, Handy tried twice to go into Archives as a surprise because they can't rely on their gun skill against W7M. And that's not the way you play the game. When you're stressed, you need to calm down and keep playing in your style. And I didn't feel like FaZe did that on this map. And that is the time to calm down to get into member, map number five. But before that, Alphama is waiting with illustration. Milos, and I want you guys to take a look at how W7M is so strong in defense. We're on Skyscraper right now, tier one bomb site, and they have this really clear goal right now to burn time on these two door frames using utility. You take a look at Nade right now, he's on smoke on an Azami barrier with gas grenades to burn more time, and then you have Azami and Wamai to burn even more time on Dragon and Statue. Now we take a look at FaZe, they're struggling, they're down 0 3, so they bring the Monty to help them gain that control. And they will eventually gain that control, but they will lose the hard reach DAs in that process. And that's a really big blow because then KZ understands that and in defense he adapts. He reinforces the wall because they have no hard reach, making the site even stronger. Now we're just a few seconds away from the end of round. And let's take a look at just how strong the setup from W7M is. Philippox all the way from Karaoke has a line of sight on the hallway. JV can react to that with a line of sight on his own on Geisha. And Vita King, he doesn't know it, he's able to walk into a crossfire. Now he gets injured, but the job is not finished. You still have three attackers to remove. And JV is in such strong a position here in Geisha because he can deny absolutely everyone of this position with a line of sight here on the rotation onto karaoke window, with a line of sight on the hallway, with a line of sight on the solo wall on Geisha. What he needs to do right now is play that position perfectly. He throws a gadget here, the C4, to burn time, isolates the pick on the karaoke window, and then uses the reinforcement to isolate the pick on the buck, rushing him, and finally get the last pick on the last player. Incredible gun skill. But most importantly, from anyone at home right now that's playing in strong position, you want to isolate this 1v1s. And that's what he did right. W7M is up two maps. FaZe is up two maps. The final map that will decide who's the world champion is coming very soon. Let's talk about it on the desk. Thank you very much, Alpha Ma. And we are ready for map number five. Let's just drop it like it is. Nighthaven, W7M, they won the map. Are they prepped for it? Have they saved it for the right time? Can they do it today? That is a big question, but that is what makes me most excited about this final map as well, because it was the only map that W7M did not play up until this tournament, brought it out, out against G2. Now, the main question is, was that a fluke that they win it, or have they prepped it in such a way that it is championship winning material? I don't think it was a fluke, especially not against the G2. However, it could be a fluke long term, because if it is a map that they're used to banning a lot, they might not have the strategical depth to go even further now against FaZe. It could be that uh, W7M just don't have more theory on it, so what FaZe saw yesterday is what they will see today, and therefore they know every single counter, wow. every single strat. And that's where we have to see it. W7M is a good enough team to have that depth, question is, do they? But that's the main question. Was this all that we've seen from W7M, or have they prepped it to that depth? They have these different strategies that they haven't even shown before. Yeah. I think W7M have got big depth in strategy. It's, it's, it, it's the same across every single map. I expect Nighthaven to be no different at all. The one big thing for me, though, is it's the final map of a best of five. Oh, yeah. It, it's a best of one for the World Championship, right? The pressure's on the line here. And when that happens, a lot of things go out the window, right? It's just about the big moments in the game. Who's going to be the person to step up? Who's going to be the one that's going to make that play to drag their team to a world championship? Remember the handy and nade brother off that we're having here in this game. It's a big piece of story. It's never happened before, but also it has never happened before that Brazil has lifted a trophy on home soil. Never in esports has it ever happened. And we get to do it here in Rainbow Six. Final question before we go. Who takes it? Just give me the signs. <laughs> I think W7, I'd take the W. <laughs> I'm not the gang member, so I don't do the signs. However, I think FaZe will take it. W7M. There you go. You got it. Now I have to be impartial. I guess that that is how it goes. Fresh, Fabian, and Anne, thank you very much. Let us take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hype it up. We'll give you the entire arena here for you to enjoy and take it all in for our final map, number five.
Boa noite, Brazil! Welcome back to the Rainbow Six Siege Invitational 2024, a record-breaking event, and we are getting the grand final that you could only dream of, Leo. É isso. Estamos aqui. Nossa, desde muito cedo. Horas e horas de transmissão e eu tô cheio de energia porque a festa está maravilhosa. Estamos a um mapa dessa marreta ser levantada, ou por W7M ou por Phase Clan. Just one map separates potentially Phase Clan, potentially W7M from raising this hammer high in the air in front of their home fans. But before we get rowdy, before we get loud, can we just make a little bit of magic here in this amazing arena? Can we bring the lights down for a moment? É isso. I want these amazing Brazilian fans to light this arena up for us. Wow. And create a beautiful scene in the Ginásio do Ibirapuela here in Sao Paulo. 8 horas 33 minutos, hora de Brasília. Guarde esse momento, Ginásio do Ibirapuera. Guarde esse momento, Brasil. Vamos fazer uma festa bonita, porque esta festa vai ficar na história dos esportes. Vocês são lindos. Estão nos propiciando um momento maravilhoso. Daqui 5, 10 anos, essa imagem vai girar o mundo. Vamos curtir. Vocês são o motivo de nós estarmos aqui hoje. This is a moment. That nobody in this arena will ever forget. All 9,000 of you have made this event the most special R6 esports event of all time, and we love you for it. Te amo, Brasil. Can you listen? We're singing. We are Brazilian. Proud of it. Let's bring the lights back up. Let's switch gears and get noisy. Let's get noisy, shall we? What do you think? I think it's time for some noise. Eu acho que agora é hora de fazer barulho. A gente já encantou o mundo. Agora vamos chacoalhar o ginásio do Ibirapuera. Who will raise the hammer? Quem vai levantar o martelo? W7 Heavy! Again, let's go. Let's As go. we get into the final map, we got 30 seconds. Let's get them singing. Vamos lá. Antes de começar, vamos todo mundo junto. Afinal de contas, somos brasileiros. Então eu quero de novo. Eu sou brasileiro com muito orgulho, com muito amor. The time has come. Our final map awaits. Will it be Face Clan or W7M? Let's find out. is set with 10,000 Brazilians on their feet they rise as one as this epic finale comes to a grandstand conclusion FaZe Clan W7M both desire the hammer only one can grasp it and I don't know if there is historically a better map to do this on Nighthaven Lab has been WCM's permanent ban ever since introduced to Tier 1 play of Siege. They've been hiding it for a good old time. They brought it out against G2 on the main stage. They won 7-1 in that matchup. And now 
Not with backs against the wall, even 2-2 here, anyone's map, they have to play it and they have to win it if they want the hammer. Now we can talk about the band in just a moment. Of course, Rainbow Six, very much a team game, but an opportunity now to highlight one huge individual performance at this event. Herds has smashed Benja's record of most kills at a six invitational and there's still one map to go. He's on 327. We'll see how high he can climb. KZ as well, edging closer towards the record for a best of five, but we'll track that a little bit later. It's not often that we get to say these words. Map five of the SI Grand Final is now upon us. Nighthaven Labs will be our final battleground for this epic war that has concluded very shortly between these two teams, Baze and W7M. What a performance. What a final dance that we have had. Every single player dreams of qualifying for the six invitationals. Much fewer will make it to the grand finals. Almost nobody will get to play on a stage like this with the crowd that we have going all the way to map five with no one being the clear favor of who's gonna take it. Even fewer win it. And even fewer win it. And none of these guys have before. What a moment it will be, whoever the victor ends up being. Fingers crossed, it's a close fifth and final map. All right, let's get underway. Opening round, W7M on the attacks to begin. Phase on the defense. Nate looking to open up main bridge. In towards IT they can go. KZ on the IQ can get very handy information. So far though, so good. For W7M to get this main bridge opened up. It's good pace here. Of course, two bro ban for W7M means that they cannot stall out here on the defensive side of phase. If the wall wants to get opened up, it most likely will. Default camps actually not being shot there from the attack inside, but it won't matter. Bellapox jumps back outside, makes the road to happen, keeping phase guessing as to where it might be coming from. Cyber down below, lurking on the solace. Plant an arm potential if he's able to run round and can give a read to the other defenders on the side of phase as to where those drones are coming from. Elsewhere, Philippox getting to work. So a big focus down below from the attack and Hertz gets caught in a oh, oh. And also punished as well quickly by Souls. Perfect start for phase at the middle portion of this opening round. The response, no, Cyber catches Philippox. Caught Napping looking above into the heavens. Five versus three, and W7M not the start they would have been hoping for. Face gonna play tighter together, don't expose yourself, set up those crossfires, hold the angles together, and force the 2v1. They throw it out from KZ, does get the knock on to Souls, finished off as oh. well. A couple of kills, makes it a three versus two. KZ still very low, needs to make his way through that doorway, and he's lost JV92. He's down, out for the count, and a one versus three, now back ends by shot down quickly. KDS with the last two. Yeah, phenomenal counterplay there from the defense. W7M with a focus down below. We saw Herds try and sneak his way up to Garrod's rafters. Unfortunately, got caught off guard by that frost mat. Philippox <laughs> as well, trying to get to work on Buck. Was eventually countered by that Solace that we mentioned prior. So phenomenal work there from FaZe. W7M off to a slow start on attack. Usually for W7M, we see them excel maps that, of course, they know really well. We don't know how much they've played Night Heaven Lab in scrims, you know, in practice off the camera, but in tier one play only a single time. So there comes a point here where they are forced in this map in the decider. They are quote unquote comfortable playing it, but of course it's not their main priority. So I think it's beautiful for those of them to prove that they indeed are world champion worthy by winning this map if they can do it. And I know at this point in the grand final, statistics probably don't mean a whole lot, but when it does come to this map of Nighthaven Labs, 49% attacker win rate. Oh. And so it is essentially 50-50. It's the only map that's even remotely close to that. Damn. Okay, well, I guess no excuses, right, guys? If you suck uh, on attack, you suck on attack. I'm pretty sure you just said this game is gonna go to overtime, right? <laughs> Those might be the words that were uttered, but in a different phrase. one nothing to phase. W7M, now the onus is on you to respond. We go to basement. Reloading. Tank and assembly here for the second round. 
Yep, saw those mute jammers being out from handy to stop the wall advancement. So Felipox, of course, go on the Thatcher for those EMPs. But that's not the main goal. You can't just open up a wall and go straight towards the bomb side. You gotta go for that roam clear. It's why the IQ is there. Scan for cameras, scan for gadgets. Valkyrie's in play. They got two C4s below. They need to be careful on the attack when they get to that first primary floor. And the defensive phase will want to try and lock this down. It's KZ to play entry. Oh, oh he, he falls off. Maybe sends something he didn't like. Andy still holds that doorway. What? Oh, no! no. Oh, there. Another team kill! The tries First time in this map. And W7M are down to play it early. It's hurt. It's gone. Disaster struck. I mean, who said you can't get nade kills anymore? <laughs> Come on, guys. It's on the wrong player. Man. Can he make up for it though? Nade, he does. He wasn't the one that got that team K, but he's able to make up for KZ's mistake. Just over 90 seconds left, and at least it's now even again. But W7M's attack, it's slow, but slowly making their way through the map. And positions of which FaZe have got themselves still up above, that can be cleared. Uh, there's a player in long desk. Yeah, Cyber. He's holding by his angle. If he is there, maybe he's come back up the staircase. He might know something's up. I mean, surely he hasn't made drone, right? No logic box no, available no. from JV92 to ring out and maybe get a warning. Cyber goes for an aggressive play okay, here up key. above over towards Long Desk and now makes his move. Now makes his mark. Oh, oh yeah. timing from JV92! Immaculate! And now the cameras are also hacked. And Valkyrie's on the board, so a lot of information now available to the attack as W7M bring it to a 3v3. Souls with a massive kill at that very moment. At least keeps it even again with only now 40 seconds remaining w7m looking to now make their way towards site cyber's giving away his life and he's giving away information can w7m capitalize upon it 30 seconds all three players for phase certainly on site now no one up above no real vert play either really in this round it's all horizontal the cast barricade to get broken down by Felipox. With the kid in hand, and on the other side, he's still got barbed wire. 15 seconds, guys, time seconds is so urgent now for W7M. Handy, at this point, phase, they can start to swing if they left. want. We're into red time, and the barbed wire will stop. That's kicked down. Handy, though, is also down. They need the kills. Gas paper thrown out. It won't be enough. KZ needs to go massive here. One second at a time! It's a dream start for phase in this fifth map. I mean, forget the gas canisters, the gas <laughs> babes in the pocket. Just pull out your gun, win your ones. What a way to lock it out from FaZe. The small things, right? You drop that hatch down to the base and bomb side, the window and the door are both castle barricaded. You got 27 seconds, you got no breaching charges, you gotta punch the barricade nine times. It gives so much intel that there's a player in there. You know it's just one because you can count the punches, it's every single one, one, two, three, all the way to nine. It's so predictable, it's readable, you face to shut it down. Oh, I mean, oh through the drone hole. Oh, no. <laughs> I, as well, Cyber caught on that flank. Obviously, yeah, exactly. guys, then gives away the tablet, it gets hacked. And that information, I think, really did aid W7M temporarily. But unfortunately, with time bleeding, they couldn't capitalize upon it. So far, this series, this grand final, has been about swings and momentum. Yeah. So far, the great start for FaZe. But we know at some point W7M will make a comeback. We know that they will be able to have a bit of momentum themselves. So it's very important for FaZe, I guess, to extend this lead. They cannot allow W7M to get back into this early on. 2 nothing start. More importantly, no tactical timeout has been taken. We've seen that quite a lot in this grand final. Two rounds, three rounds in, where a lot of these tactical timeouts have been taken early by the team losing early. No, you're right. And the thing for me is that, and this is like easy to say, right? There's not much merit, but like we haven't seen the key players of to like fire up right now. KC 1 and 2, Hurt 0 2. These are your typical entry players on the attack inside. If they're not getting anything done, that usually is the reason why things are not going well for them. Well, the Ying has made it through the ban phase. So we'll see if W7M and KZ specifically is able to get value from that execute operator. Herds as well with Jackal, and he's found information down below. Herds is getting aggressive on oh. of his own idol scan of a KDS one at the most perfect time. Four and one, what a start for KDS. Philippe Pop, shoulder peak. Oh, the great headshot from Philippe Pop. Needed that on the right side as well, but Cyber wins that battle for the quick trade. Despite the fact that he got that kill onto KDS, Cyber was close. Now top blue for KZ. 
A little double stack through the draw uh, doorway, but a drone. At least information. Shot now by the wall from KZ. Which oh! KZ! Oh, they needed that one, W7M. A slow and stagnant nice start to Night Haven, but now an opportunity. And JV to compound on that said opportunity. Down to just Cyber and a one on three. Cyber can go for the revive. Oh. Alex to go for the Nitro. I don't oh. think he's going to pull this one. He doesn't. W7M respond. Speak of them. And they might just show up out of nowhere. Yes, the Ying is in play. It survived the operator band phase. But they can tell us that's not the key story. It's the gun in the right hands. Someone like Hertz, someone like KC, they can find the magic in any attack around. And in that one particular, that 2K really opened things up quickly for them. The stage has just well and truly continued to erupt. KZ has had some really important moments in this grand final yeah. on almost every single map. So no surprise to see him have yet another important moment here in this one. Brazil is making its presence known in this stage that is now heard worldwide. But how amazing this crowd has been, this grand final has matched it. Left before insertion. Yeah. Five seconds remaining. That's all I can say is yeah. <laughs> it's no, it's phenomenal. It's uh. Attackers are moving. Everyone in Rainbow Six Siege wow. right now is living the dream. Since this is what we want for the game. I can find. The game that we love. I mean, with many years we've been going. We are watching history be created before our very eyes. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. This is the kind of series that will be watched back time and time again. Well, into round four then. Let's see if W7M can double down. Or can phase play spoils. Top floor we go. Maverick in play for Hardbridge. The thing is, W7M, they ban out the Monty. And so far, just Vinicky is playing it, but it means neither side on attack can bring it out if they want that comfortability. But of course, still playing is not what you want right now. It's Hardbridge. Maverick, like I mentioned, being played in case of a bandit trick. It's gonna guarantee this one to be opened up, but it is not the quickest gadget. It'll take some time. Impact goes out, does a bit of damage with JV. I think he's missed a spot. Ooh. And that could be difficult to figure out here because the feet holes, they're there. For Leapox to play cover. JV92, can he open up the wall? He will. So some good work there from the man. IT opened up, breach available now, and into the map goes Herds. Jackal, Inox again, and the red ping to follow off of. Has struggled a little bit. Oh, and three. But you cannot keep a champion down for very long. KZ's come to the table. JV92, so has Nade. Now it's up to Herds to start to make his presence known inside of Nighthaven Labs. 90 seconds left. Cyber wants to get aggressive at main breach. Obviously has a lot of information here on the souls. By the way, there's not many drones remaining. Two, in no. fact, are still up, and that's all. Now one. Oh, that's a big fight. It's a four versus four now. Handy to lock down electrical. Frag grenade as well. Throne moved away. KDS doubles down. Gets rid of Nade. JV can't find the response. The flash goes out. Maybe expecting more pressure from FaZe. Kit momentarily down. There goes KDS. He falls. In a map that is proving to be quite 50-50. These rounds are being quite 50-50. Three versus three with, well, 50 seconds to go. They've been so close to rotate here from WCM. They think, okay, we got the flying kills inside of Garage. Now rotate around inside the connector. Get our Q, get the scanner up. But the issue is, Handy has a shotgun the right by the breach the that could stop here. the entire push. They don't have the intel. They don't have any drones. Attackers Can they play off of each other? W7M. The double swings, to use the numbers, to overload certain positions here inside a server. Handy up close, shotgun in hand. Doesn't go for the initial oh. swing, just wants to try and time this perfectly. Souls gets one, two now remain for W7M, and yes, up close. That shotgun is so, so deadly. KZ in a 1v3. With little time remaining, the shoulder peak is nice on the right-hand side. He cannot get these shots to land, because at that point, FaZe don't even need a peak. There's a third for FaZe. And that's the kind of defense where you can sometimes crumble under the pressure. Sometimes you can give away free picks. Yeah. Not the case that time around. Faze's play style so far in this round is the reason why they are so good in them. The discipline to know when to just stay alive. 
hand, he didn't swing unnecessarily. He was waiting for the right moment. His teammate covered his back. They knew the cover was there. They had to trust in one another. And now on the final map, W7M, the face cams, signs of frustration. Yeah, we can talk about how it's like 50-50 in these rounds and you can win attacks or defenses, but when you want that hammer, it's been your story for a whole year. And these rounds are so, so close. One gunfight could change the outcome. It's the most frustrating feeling in the world. I mean, you, you win two majors. The expectation is to then follow up with the hammer from Six Invitational. But right now, FaZe are far closer than W7M to being able to wield that hammer, standing right behind them on the main stage. 3-1 lead for FaZe. Two rounds to go in the first half of this fifth and final map. A it's a grandstand finish, but right now, FaZe are leading the race. You need to understand, as a player right now, one of the biggest things you have to deal with right now is suppressing your emotions. Because you're you're one second away from crying probably at this point. I was when I was in their seat because this is what you want so badly. The stress in their minds, every decision they make can alter the outcome of the round. Suppress emotions, play like a robot, and put on your best performance possible. And I like the fact that you bring up overthinking every moment because it's been small moments, small mistakes that have made this game what it is. Sniper's been a big name in this entire series. Always looking for a kill, always roaming around the map. He's had a quiet start so far, but it's on the balcony. He's getting active. It's him. They're playing very far back in the attacking lineup so far. Need to get hurt involved. It's so paramount, I think, yeah. for W7M. Owen 4 playing the Finca needs to be good on the entry. He's one of their best players when it comes to the player ratings. Sure is. A phenomenal oh! player. Please, oh, Surely not. It just feels like it's starting no! to go finds his way. Doubles down, triples down. Nitrocell as well. Got the shot. Like the Nitrocell, W7M are imploding. FaZe are exploding. You got to call it after the timeout. You have to pull the brakes here. The players, they have to just feel for a second here talk to each other like a brotherhood. Guys, we're not out of it yet. We're down one four. There it is, sure enough. W7M, they have just called their tactical timeout. But this is where magical moments are made. You're down four, one in the final map of arguably now one of the greatest grand finals we have ever seen in this game. But W7M talk about cementing a legacy to start a dynasty, it needs to now begin from this moment, from this timeout, this final round of the opening half, arguably, needs to go their way. There is only one issue here by being basically unbeatable for a full year. You have not dealt with loss. You have not been behind in the fifth map. You have not suffered the consequences of not being good enough in the grand finals because WCM have always been good enough this entire last year. Now they're down one four. Can they mentally be there for each other and take it one round at a time? And perhaps in the back of the mind, they're thinking, not again. Yeah. Oh, we don't want to miss out on the hammer like last time. Again, we said 49% attacker win rate here on Nighthaven Labs. So it's almost paramount if W7M are to find their way back this next round is a must win. Their journey started 365 days ago, essentially. Give or take a few days. But back at Six Invitational 2023, it was G2 that won 3-1 over W7M, shattering them. And how they responded was so paramount. They won back-to-back -back majors to make the statement that they should be regarded as the best team that we have in the game right now. But that dynasty does not begin unless they lift that hammer. Down 4-1, FaZe are looking to now create their own legacy, to now cement their own history. I feel like everyone's played so well in this series that we've never been like, oh, this this guy is just not showing up. You said it, Senox, last round hurts, it's 0-5 right now. First time in the best of five. We go all five minutes before someone is really not hitting their shots, and it happens to be one of the most important players for WCMM's attacking side. I think this goes back to Skyscraper. W7 can get the 4-2 half by a little bit of way, a little bit of leeway when the side comes around. I think they'll be okay.
So we'll kick off then, top floor, main bridge being worked by the ace Thatcher combo. Pretty easy to Thank deal with that. Vita King though, close by on Solar. So here's a pretty good read as to how many players are now outside the breach. Oh. And he can relay that information <laughs> to the rest of the team. Uh -oh. Does he look too aggressive? Oh, Does no. he look for the jump out? Oh yeah, but he preps it, ready for it. Something that could obviously come to fruition here for FaZe to maybe catch W7 off guard. And there's the opening kill for Handy on a KZ. And JV to fall through that Nitrocell. It really is down to Herds now to get involved. They need to push through, can't hit the headshot. It felt like he was hitting those times. And time again earlier in the grand final for Lee Pops though. Can he make this his moment to salvage the round for W7M? But it felt like maybe all hope would be lost in this sixth round. Handy from a distance. Hurts can just not get involved. Fully Box needs the ace. Minute and a half. Well, there's another three, two to go. This is where moments are born, created and forged in this battle of war of attrition. Two to go. Can he create two one versus ones with 60 seconds to do so? They're flanking and Fully Box does not have a read. Well, I think he might now, though. Keep he pushing. senses that it's clear. Keep pushing, and you might be able to win this one for W7. And it feels so pivotal, so vital. The battle of Dwarf Blue can't be won by Cyber. It's a five to one lead for FaZe Clan. Two rounds away from history. This moment right now is when time is standing still for W7M. This is when you take and look at the crowd, and you appreciate where you are, to be fortunate enough, to be good enough to play here today. You might be two rounds away from this being over and you being the loser. Win or lose, the biggest, most important thing to take away from this is to live in the moment and absorb this experience. Soak it in. Yeah. That's all I can say. We may never see anything like this again. 10,000 strong inside of this arena for Brazil, cheering on a Brazilian team. So rare. The Bays have looked so dominant on Nighthaven Labs. They've clearly been the better side thus far. Yeah, I gotta say, heartbreak. There's been some individual rounds here. The side of face where Handy single handedly wins around for his team. Souls does the same thing. The scores is 5 1. In reality, this could have easily been 3 3 and a half. Do we see another comeback on defense? Is know. it possible? I, I want to believe. I want it so bad. I think the question mark, very simple. If Hertz wakes up on defense, I think there's a chance. If he does not, I do not see a world where they make a comeback. It's not just down to Hertz. Of course. Because obviously, he is the focus here. He's so strong, so talented. But as a collective unit, as a team, they go to war together. The W7M right now, they need that togetherness at the very final moments. Their last dance, maybe not shaping up the way they would have liked. Phase, two more rounds, and arguably you win this round. Oh, it becomes so difficult for W7M. It does. It's like that basically the final on the coffin at that point. One mistake and it's over. Faze opens up the first wall. Nate is there with the counter. Bandit trick successful on this thermal charge. The thermal charge rather. Selma was down though. A small hole in the wall, but no real good entry point. No vertical play from Faze. I mean, typically you see a player down below pressure in that position, making it difficult for the bandit. Not that time around. So it is a win in the column for the defenses. W7M. I mean, trying to mount an insurmountable comeback. Certainly yeah. doable, certainly doable. And if they can just start to get a couple of rounds, we've already seen in this grand final those comebacks like you mentioned, Pengu. So 90 seconds left, five versus five. These early contact fights, though, in the dire stage is so important. W7M need to start finding these opening kills so they don't get overloaded on site. But how close the are playing? Once the happening starts, oh, oh. very fast. Rafters control. Yeah, Souls are still low, but still alive and can throw out those Candelas, allowing entry for Cyber. Believe Box can't win his battle. It just has that feeling that it's all falling apart for W7M once again. That this final hurdle for FaZe might just finally be overcome. Red Pings, KZ, it's not happening, is it? But it is happening for FaZe!
player camps. In one camp, big smiles in the face of Face Clan because they're doing the unthinkable. What many people wouldn't even consider possible just a few days ago. And WCM, they have their head, their head rather, in their hands, <laughs> frustrated, struggling like I am right now. They're down. Nick. Our first map of this grand final was 7-1 to phase. Yeah. There is every chance that despite a valiant effort from W7M, it may end up in a similar fashion. Up 6-1. Surely, now, at this moment, with five opportunities, FaZe will finally taste the ultimate glory that they've been so close to. Back-to-back -back major wins for W7M, but it was back-to-back semi-final losses for FaZe. Forever in that shadow, but now looking to step out of it. Uh, let's see, can W7M respond? Backs well and truly pinned to that wall. Can they break free? Basement, we go. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be an insane comeback if they get half close. It's got to start somewhere. This could very well be the round. The one big difference right now is that when FaZe are attacking, they are pushing together all five members. No one's being left out. On the flip side, WSM, they're playing very isolated, fragmented. They're not playing like a full-on team. We've seen documentaries about these characters, these players, that they say, guys, communication's not there. We need to talk to each other and go together. But now you got to fix it in the middle of the Grand Finals. It's an extension up above once more for W7M. And that means that Herds is going to be under so much pressure. One kill in seven rounds, and this one, the biggest of his career. I know how difficult this is for W7M, that they cannot go into their shells, no. despite the circumstances that they find themselves in. These kind of angles is what could get them back into this game. Aggressive, holding key position. You fall back to sight because you're fearful of what could happen, you will then lose. Yeah, they had to play to win, seek the opportunities, not be afraid, you don't get, you don't let them back down. JV, he gets the opening. That's a good start. More to come. Phase though, the pressure valve released, of course, with five map match grand final points. Cyber wanting to push in towards Rafters. He lost his life. Another key position still held firmly by W7. Evan Handy again onto her. Shuts him down. Three versus three. Handy's low, but a good position nevertheless. With 90 seconds left in this round, Phase feels like they're just moments away from glory. In fact, with JV down and now confirmed, they have the advantage. Phase are this close to capturing the hammer. Can they convert it from here? They've done all the hard work. Nade and KZ, the only two players standing Souls. in their way. Souls, he can't win it! KZ keeps hope alive for W7M. Drops back down, now they can play sight in a two-on-two. -two. Imagine your face, every single blink, you see the hammer behind your eyes, you see the moment that you'll lift that trophy. You had the 3v2, now it's slowly crumbling away, but it's a tie 2v2 with the health bars even. The crowd getting behind W7M, they want more action, they do not want this to end. Information for Handy, nine and three. 30 seconds left, is this where FaZe claim their crown? In a blaze of glory, Vidiking and Handy, side by side, brother in arms, and now the drop from Handy, expecting one to be behind the tank, but not to be, and now he questions where they very well may be on the site itself. Vidiking as well. Well, there he is, KZ, you wanted to find him, and he finds you! They're gonna have to keep throwing punches, though. But every moment, every kill that they get is important to them, right? Get that confidence going, start feeling it again in the server. It's been so many rounds in a row, won by FaZe. The confidence course will slip up. It's it gotta start couldn't. somewhere, and that round's to start. It, it's, look, 6-2. We're not at that point. It's really difficult to mention the C word. Just come back, of course. <laughs> but that is exactly what it required, and a great start case here towards command. Again, showing aggress aggression on those entries. They have to. Especially on base when you can't just five stack on site because you're so fearful. They didn't. Really good credit to W7M. This is why I'm so impressed by KC. Even when this is a scenario, when you're down one and six, he's opening up doors, he's seeking engagements. In that three versus three, he's actively walking around, looking for a player that he could take a fight against. 
He has no fear. He's fighting. He has had so many phenomenal individual games this tournament. He's just missing his duo in Hurts, who is still sitting on a single kill. So we go to command and server. One. One grand final point has now been averted by W7M. Four more votes. Four more rounds required without mistake. Without putting a foot wrong. Guys, they have to be perfect. They have to be. Rightly so. I think if you want to be the best team in Siege and lift that hammer, you need to play near perfect. So let's jump into it then. Round number nine, as you mentioned, top floor we go. And Herds is still struggling. One and eight. Again, in an important position to try and play for a bit of time over towards Long Desk, but he makes his way back now towards Electrical. He can lock that down and use Goo Mines to fortify his position. You know, I, love, I love the fact that Souls right now is being activated to its fullest. He's on the Ying, handy on support, he's gonna open the walls, and Souls the player who had his side of his career playing Hibana, playing Thurman, playing Is. Now it's an SI Grand Finals, he's playing the Ying. He might be the entry he's to finish the job right now. EMP goes out, Cell makes a Thurman charge to deny any sort of bandit tricking, but we know there is no bandit. Double EMP denies the Kai Claw, breach is successful. Yeah, Claw doesn't land, so some really good work there from FaZe. And that's now a position that the defense must watch. They must keep a keen eye on that entry and not allow anybody in a powerful position to cut that cross into the objective. Entry should be strong for FaZe. They've got four Candelas in the hands of Souls. Something to keep an eye on as we continue forward by the end of this round. There's no Warden in play. So that Yang is extremely powerful. If FaZe lose Souls, suddenly W7M look in a much better position. Felipox down below, and we have a lurk. A potential 1v1, but Felipox falls off of that position momentarily through storage, goes Cypher. And the timing could not be ever present. The swing comes through, oh, and the opening kill goes the way of Cyber. The way of FaZe, and those Candelas now to be thrown out. Looking to dislodge that mirror window position. It's Nade holding it currently. He's been the clutch master for this defensive unit, but JV92, he's the one to step up. Still a Nitro Cell available for Nade. We know how good he's been in the clutch in this grand final. Candela thrown, one more available in the back pocket for Souls. 40 seconds remaining in the round. Handy, close. Tries to bank off of that wall. The flash, Souls will fall. No more Candelas. Nicely done from Burns, starting to get involved. But it is phase. They bring it back to a three on three in Cyber as well. And he can get almost another one. Oh. It's cemented, no. Two versus two. Nate still has a nitro cell and they get that through Hurt. Here he comes. He makes it. Oh. He cannot be counted out. And neither can W7M. Cyber has been regarded as the best player in the world in the past, putting up stellar performances. Hurts and KC right now are fighting for that title, in my own eyes at least. And now, when the moment needs it the most, they both show up to shut down Cyber on the entry and garage. And that round going right down to the wire. You think about top four. There's not many safe places to sit, especially with that Azami ban. And that's why we saw such aggressive trading from both teams. Is that the spark now for W7M? Is that belief now coming back a little bit? I'll tell you what, one more round and suddenly FaZe might just start to feel like it could be slipping away to start to feel like can they actually control this momentum that W7M has developed as the game has gone on. Despite being 6-1 now, now to 6-3. You see there, the player camps with WCMM, like this, the sigh of relief, their bodies, their lungs filled with air going, oh, we're still in it. One more round to go, and then again, and again, and a third, and then you're in overtime. It's infinite, by the way, we could be here for a while. But the issue really comes down to the fact that, again, we have to be flawless every single time. One small mishap, misstep, face clutching up like they almost just did, and then it's done for. This grand final being epic. It's been extraordinary, but arguably we're three rounds away from the greatest grand final I think we've ever seen. And that is not an easy statement to make. Tell them out. It is not. Tertiary site. It's now being teased by W7. And this is the test around, the tertiary site. Yep. This is big. This is where most teams 
On defense, they go to die. And the issue is, you don't have a good attack at half. Stubbidim did not. You don't have that parish in terms of round count. You need to be, as we keep saying, flawless on its base. They've been playing the same style so far in attack. They play five versus five. They want to get the bombs that execute out clean. They want to get the vertical play. They have to ram in the bug. They don't want to just throw bodies at the problem. They want to problem solve every step of the way. Yeah. Classic from Cyber. Pretty early map control, can get to work with the skeleton key. You think about those and the boogie auto breaches from the ram. That's going to expose a lot of the site. And then it's up to W7M. What did they do in response? Did they fuck it down and try to hold the objective or did they re-aggress up above? Fully box on blue. Yeah, they slashed out and cams came off. And now again, FaZe, they're throwing that in, but nothing happens from that. They're stalling out a little bit here. I think Vidiking is trying to get the overview as the in-game leader, droning out saying, guys, what should our next step be? Hey, everybody, come together. Make this play proactively. Let's not lose anybody for free. Always have a pair and we will go together. Keep in mind, they'll be relying on drones for the flank watch. No dedicated hard flank watch for this attack. Two drones is all that remains, though, so it's not a lot. Not a lot of information and an OP kill from Nate. With one and only Nitro Cell that they had in the back pocket, it gets rid of Vidiking. Now the push from Cyber. Oh! Shut down, guys! It's about to happen! Before our very eyes, we may witness something very special! So also, the Boogie Auto Breacher opens up the floorboards, and now with Handy, they start to push together. That's enough. That's what you need. That small opening, that double kill, the C4 from below, diffuser on the ground with 45 yeah, seconds, and now FaZe, they gotta scramble together. And the worst thing is, they don't have any active drones, two alive, but nothing that they can utilize right now. They got two, two very important Candelas, but there's a warden on the board in Nade. He is very pivotal for W7M. All they need to do is hold angles on sites. Couple of shots over the ward, Garrett's handy, that's clean. Ooh. What a way to start, shuts down herds. At this point now, W7M, you do not need to peak. 20 seconds, time. Arguably on the side of W7M. Candela thrown. Entry has been made, but the Leaf Fox gets on the flank. Souls, though, now tries to respond. Can't find the headshot. Doesn't even get the down. The Leaf Fox stays alive. At least enough to deny in terms of time. Of which is running out for Souls. He has to stick the plan. We know he cannot. We know he can't. Have a As if history might go against them if they cannot turn this around. You have to start saying the term thought armor that we gotta go to overtime. The thing is, how much more can the hearts of W7 take? Their players, their fans, they're keeping us in so much tension right now. They've been facing Maps Point from behind for three rounds now, going flawless. And what they've been doing is that a single player different every single time. They've been finding these small windows of opportunity, taking full advantage and finding a multi-kill to stop FaZe from advancing on their plan. I kind of hope the game doesn't go to OT, Jake. You might, you might pass out. I might pass out at this point. Oh my word, I, but I want to see this go the distance. It deserves to go the distance. Yeah. 6-4. Six, 6-4. Four. Six, four. W7M are doing it. And that belief now oh, is certainly no. back, not just for the team, but the crowd as well, as they continue to support their favorite team. We gotta start talking about the mental switch now, right? We said, okay, W7M, they're down. They feel that trophy slipping away. FaZe on match point, they keep seeing that trophy every time they blink. But now FaZe, I think it's wake up time. The dream, you realize, not, you know, wake up to reality here. You haven't won just yet. You still gotta get this final round done. It's one thing. To win a six invitational grand final. Cyber? Another from this. Down. What is he? I thought he was dead to rights. One HP. One HP. But that might define the outcome of the round. Cyber, the injury is down. Vertical Blade Buck is down as well. Sure, they got the round on Souls, but again, FaZe, they have a plan. It needs five players. They do not have five players in this round. I tell you what, the script writer for this match is a very sick individual. Give him a, give him a raise. Oh. Give him the trophy. That's all I what. say. He deserves yeah. Well, the biggest thing is though, KZ is very low. Like you said, 1 HP. So very susceptible to any form of damage. So yes, it's 5 versus 4, but he is also very vulnerable. Still, it's a gun up. It's an extra player alive in the server for W7M. Now, phase the entry is a little bit more difficult. 
Mind you, the Rome is still active. Just because they got the kill, they've not fallen back just yet. They're still in the staircases, still with Solus of right, of course, looking for those drones, shutting down the intel game. It is. More drones alive. Katie no is way. No way. The shots are just not landing. The plot armor's too thick for W7M, oh. but Handy's been so strong and finicking out of nowhere. Maybe that plot armor's got a hole in it after all. Down to Hurt, he falls, Faze might just flip the script. Unfortunate there for Hurt, shut down. Now it's Nade and Philippox to hold on for W7M as Faze try to formulate one hell of a response in this round. I could not imagine the adrenaline coursing through the veins of these players. What a performance they've given us. Stand as one to congratulate what's been a tremendous grand final, but only Attack one winner. Bomb. 50 seconds left, Nade and Philippox. Shoulder to shoulder, they move on the defense to hold these key positions as FaZe look to open up the floorboard for one final time, potentially. There's a bit of a mix-up there for WCM. Half wanted to stick around for the roam, the other half wanted to run down. They split up in the middle and they paid, they suffered. Now they're down a man, but they still got it. 30 seconds and bombs out at their disposal, they can still win this round. Surely it doesn't come down to the brothers. Nade and Handy. 20 yeah, seconds. There's one for Philippe on the Vinicky. Yeah, it very well may bomb. come down to the twins themselves to settle this final. 15 seconds, seconds and the drop from Souls playing behind Handy, who still needs to get the kid onto the floor. Yeah, and Souls will fall to me. Handy the one versus two. Deep into red time. He can't do it. Seconds if you double some say guys one more round. We've made it so far already. Come on Keep doing what we have been doing. It is working They're scared you can tell Well, I mean let's look back at that round then Philippox and Nade Back to back insane shots Left handy on an island five seconds no time and who else but Nade to win that one out. The crowd, the loudest it has ever been. I didn't know they could get any <laughs> louder, but they have. Guys, it has been an absolute privilege. We are oh so fortunate for this bloody game. A grandstand finish for the grandest of all finals. Match and grand final point for FaZe. It's their last one remaining. That final hurdle, once again, is in front of them. Will they trip and fall? Or will they overcome that obstacle in W7M? They cannot take us this far and then not give us what everybody wants. Everyone who's watching, everyone in the arena, we all want the 6-6. Six -six. We want to go to our summer fifth map. We want to fight it out for long. It's me. not done yet. Oh, it's a wasted Nitro Cell. Little information, but boy, at this point, I couldn't even be surprised if he can't hear a darn thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. yeah, forget Salkus. I mean, that's just not a thing in this series. Bravo in play then. Souls. Will those clutch drones be able to turn the tide? There is a cap gain on the board. I, I don't want to curse it because it would be insane. But I mean, there's always that possibility. I think it's genius. You play the mental games as operators. You know, FaZe, they're on attack. They're gonna go swift. They're gonna try like cyber, be aggressive, right? If you don't see a Capcom trap, if you don't drone it out, you might just die to a gadget entering the hallway. So then, handy. 11 kills. He's been phenomenal. 
in this map. Exothermic for the main wall, followed up by an EMP. It won't be disrupted oh, by the KZ. defense. KZ lurking, Nitro Cell ready and waiting. It's the last one they've got. A couple of impacts as well. Drones, five remain. For phase again, slow is their approach. Typically been so good for them in the past, but right now, this comeback from W7M is so strong. That plot armor is so thick. The fairy tale, last dance. Will it get the conclusion? Probably one of the slowest rounds of phase so far. The pressure didn't get into them, but of course their coach might have said, guys, they will aggress into you. Hold those angles. Expect the swings to come around. They don't have the ying. They don't have any easier to break this apart. Well, Handy's pushed forward. Advanced position. Exothermic for the box. box. Can he play? I think he denies it. I think he. I don't know if that gets opened up. Hard to see from this I position. So. I think he's denied it. Headshot so close. Ah! From Garage, the headshot onto Handy, who's been so strong for phase. Over the blue we go. Souls can't win the initial shot. And Spear King Bob. You know, <laughs> you asked me if I would join you on this, and I said, how crazy can it get? It's just the Grand Finals, right? No, it's SI Grand Finals. This is where the craziest games happens between the best teams in the world, and we are witnessing an infinite over time that could last five minutes or 50. We truly do not know. And it's W7M completely in the driver's seat right now. From 6-1 down, W7M have been able to hold strong what fortitude, what resilience. Surely now they can go all of the way. Or can FaZe Clan give us one final twist of this tale? You know, you can prepare for almost every scenario. When you've played a couple of finals, you know what it's like mentally. But one thing you cannot practice for is infinite overtime. It pretty much only happens once a year at SI. Very few games even go there to begin with, and many who does, they end relatively quickly. This is such new territory for every single player. Final map of the Grand Final. I almost feel like I'm in a dream. This cannot be real. Absolutely incredible. The fortitude from W7M. Still on the search for the treble. Let's see how the hell this one's gonna play out. You know, W7 to get the, uh, the defensive round to keep things the same. I think that kind of favors them. Infinite OT, you gotta win two rounds, so to speak, in a row. So if W7 win here on defense, they still gotta win the next attack to follow up to actually get it. Nitro cells from JV and ball short, handy repels away. Gets out of that dangerous position. Ooh. Triple stack, entry denial devices. Attack but the entry now bomb. comes through for FaZe. They have struggled immensely on the attack. Both teams have. Swapping Max. How fitting that it comes down to this. Oh, infinite overtime. Looking for the trick. The bandit juggle lands. Herds has been quiet here on the fifth map of this series. But that's a key play with that utility. Has a Nitro as well. But Cyber has a read on that position. 1c4 again could open things up. Those small moments that we're looking for. When the attack wants to go, when defenders, they lash out. We have 2c4s remaining. Captain taps on the board as well. Solus was roaming out from Philly Pox. And FaZe are looking like they don't know exactly where to go. Vida King on the Agile trying to lead his teammates. But it looks like a take we've seen so many times before. And it usually does not work out. Barbed wire broken. Wanted to get in towards Garage. Top Rafters is there. Still available to be taken. Minute and 10 seconds left in this. W7M seeking that grand final point if they can close this round. Same for FaZe. And the opening kill for JV92. Frag grenade thrown, it's not that deadly. This is even more impactful. The Nitro Cell from KZ though, misses the mark. Still one available for Herds. The swing, it's a little bit whiffy, but it doesn't matter. Elsewhere still the advantage of W7M. KZ 
as he oh. loses the close contact Building back wing. Back. And suddenly a three versus three. With 40 seconds remaining, phase of struggle on the attack. But could they finally break through and break the heart to W7M to begin overtime? W7M needs to be careful. FaZe could isolate them in these positions. I mean, look at Nade. He's stuck prone. If he's hunted down by FaZe, it will flip the round in their favor. Keep in mind, Solace also in play. Footholds to deal with. F not mine shot out. Flashbang. Force them to be full white. Handy for the cross. It's successful. Feet showing behind the desk. And that's a nice kill. Handy up by himself. The one versus two. Shot from Handy. Through the soft wall. The leap stays alive. That's the one versus one. Behind the bomb chassis. Handy's got himself the diffuser. The pistol's down. Oh. He loses it. He loses it. Smiles and fans of W7M, they know they got this. There's no way. They go and attack. Now, mind you, if they win this upcoming round, they have played perfect siege down one to six all the way to eight six. Wow. But attacking, as we've seen so far, looks so difficult every step of the way. I've never seen anything like this. Watch it and soak it all in from six one. History, but beginning a dynasty. This is how legends are created. The majors were dominant. WCM looking like the team to beat for a full year. And then all of a sudden, VP humbles them a bit in the lower bracket. FaZe makes it look easy in some of these maps in the best of five. But it comes down to when it's the most clutch, the most pressure. It's a certain kind of WCMN that wakes up in the server and says, you know what? Not today. Whoa, okay. Okay, Skyber. You're trailing. You are six, seven down in the SI Grand Final. You're going for a run out. Won't find much, but just something to note. FaZe, they'll continue to aggress. They will not back down. I mean, I gotta respect the effort. I wouldn't have the balls do that myself. That's a damn shot. <laughs> Sitting at bombs and say, guys, when they come, I'm ready, but I'm not roaming. I'm not seeking those bomb peaks. The attackers, those even them, they got utility. Capital, the fire and the smoke. Heartbreak, Selma, Thatcher, Thurman, open up the basement walls right now, but they cannot brute the force, the bomb site most likely here. It's a big roaming presence. If they have good good intel, they could, of course, go for a side rush, but it's a big risk. It's a big stack, a breach. We may not see W7M contest up above. They're going direct. It could well be. Nade has that diffuser in hand. Capital close by. Nade has gotten a drone deep in towards site. Maybe they'll make the call to hit it early. Is this the moment? Nade with the entry. Now looking to open up the castle barricade. Still a lot of time. Mind you on the clock. You can see it on the top of your screen. Ooh. KZ will go down and will stay down. Cyber. A very important kill for FaZe and gives them a momentary advantage. It's a very important kill. It shuts down the primary floor presence above. Hatch above Hillbox is soft. Now defenders can close that net. This the kill should mean them to them. They cannot proceed with the current plan. Oh. Davey! What an acute angle! More. Oh. More to come, no! Handy! 14 and 9 and clearly the ever-present star for FaZe in this grand final. Nade on the other side. Wanting to be that annoying oh. brother, and Handy will fall through the hatch. Three versus three. And it's the smokes that are stalling out this push. So W7M have to wait for their moment. It's all direct. Oh. No! Three versus one. Is this the moment where we get crowned a new champion, a new dynasty to be created? And to be one. Oh, man.
moments ever in Sage. We've seen comebacks before in Map Cap, Zero Two 2018. so blessed this feels like a new dawn a new dawn that has arisen not just for this team but arguably arguably for this game that we love rainbow six siege sao paulo brazil thank you thank you thank you so much phenomenal finals it was a pleasure i mean <laughs> You couldn't have scripted it any better. Nobody could have created this script without being called crazy. That was just impossible to predict. We never saw this coming. No. The, the G2 Penta Era Pengu that you were a part of, forever labeled the greatest of all time. Well, now there's a competitor moving forward. Keep your eyes on what this team can do. And if what this part is, this is just the beginning yeah. for W7M and what's to come. Three in a row, back in Copenhagen. A promise was made and delivered in Atlanta. And brother in arm, and two sides to the tail, and commiserations to face. But oh, they were the best dancing partner any, anyone could have in this last dance. They play their part. There is no better honor as a player to have a final where you feel worthy of winning, not because you're the better team, but because you're up against the best of the best in the finals. It ends in hugs, it ends in tears, but it ends with a dynasty that now begins for W7M. The only thing forward ahead of them is being the best of all time. Guys, this is your moment. Where is he? There's one player missing. <laughs> Where's Nate? Cadê o Nate? Tá faltando um aqui, né? Where is he? He's with his brother. He's coming, he's coming. Beautiful moment with his brother showing the respect. And now it is your time. What you have accomplished here is unbelievable. The trophy is yours. Por favor, pode levantar a marreta, W7M. Your six invitational 2024 champions, W7M!
have pulled off the impossible here. It felt like it. Six, one down on the final map of this incredible grand final. Commiserations to FaZe Clan. That's got to be one of the best, the best night in Siege history. How? How did you do it? Uh, when we won 6-2 to them, I, I never stopped saying, like, believe in ourselves, guys. We can do it, we can do it, we can do it. And then we did. Like, round by round, we, we started believing more in ourselves. And uh, we did it. Now in Portuguese, how? They were taking 6-1. It was difficult. It was practically impossible. How did it roll this turn? And what a moment historic. The last dance. E vocês terminam com dois títulos internacionais de Major e o Six Invitational. Quando tava 6x2 pros caras, não parei de falar, não, não vão parar de acreditar, guys, não vão parar de acreditar. E round a round, a gente foi ganhando essa confiança de volta, ganhando confiança de volta. Os caras foram perdendo ela e a gente voltou pro jogo e conseguiu fazer esse... Que eu não tenho noção que a gente acabou de fazer. E é isso, obrigado a todo mundo aí que tava na torcida, velho. História foi feita aqui no ginásio do Ibirapuera. History. We've witnessed right here two back-to-back -back majors into the three-peat at what has been their last dance. No more W7M. This roster surely isn't going anywhere. No, no, our roster is going to keep together. But W7M is the organization that did all, all of this for us. Like, we, we won the three tournaments in the year with them, and that will be, they will be forever in our hearts. I'll tell you what else will be forever in your hearts. I know this for sure. This amazing crowd of 9,000 Brazilian supporters who were louder than ever in those final rounds to help you get it over the line. What do you want to say to them first in Portuguese? Cara, todo momento ali a gente perdendo, a gente não para, a gente toda hora tava escutando, a torcida continuava apoiando a gente. Igual eu falei ontem, isso dá muita energia pra gente. Eu olhava ali pra minha família, pra torcida, e eu sabia que eu tinha que tirar de algum lugar a força pra gente continuar. E a gente continuou e conseguiu virar. E porra, sem palavras aí. Muito obrigado a todo mundo, velho. And just briefly in English too, for all of our amazing record-breaking viewers watching at home in English. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone in the crowd. Like I said yesterday, they they won't, they wouldn't uh, like stop supporting us uh, round by round. Even when we didn't believe in ourselves that much, we could hear them. Uh, I saw my family, I saw the, the fans, and I knew that I, could, uh, I had to to get that energy from somewhere, and I got from them, and I think everyone got from them, and we made a comeback. Your Rainbow Six Siege 2024 Invitational World Champions, W. Santiami! Go and join your team and celebrate with the hammer. Leo, Yo. the greatest night for so many of us of our lives. Definitely. It's a historical moment. É o momento histórico o ginásio do Ibirapuera. Não só pelo título da W7M. Dois majors, um Six Invitational. Mas o que a gente presenciou aqui, o que vocês fizeram aqui, ficará para sempre na nossa memória. We called it, at the very beginning, the start of a new chapter in R6 Esports, and it has delivered amazing scenes here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I just need to thank, from the bottom of my heart, for all of us here, for all of us watching, for all of the teams. Obrigado, Brasil! Te amo! E eu queria agradecer a todos vocês. E se daqui de cima eu pudesse aplaudir, Além dos campeões, eu quero aplaudir vocês. Portanto, uma salva de palmas para vocês. Bem alto, Ibirapuera. Vocês fizeram esse show. Tudo isso aqui só aconteceu por causa de cada um de vocês. Portanto, obrigado e uma salva de palmas. And we will be back, right? E nós vamos voltar para o Brasil, amigos. <laughs> Thank you again for every single one of you that filled this arena and for all of you watching at home. You witnessed history, the greatest night in Rainbow Six. And we are just getting started. See you next time, Siege fam.